What's good? What's good? What's good? Sorry for the hour delay this morning. I slept in. I slept in a little bit. So I had to got a little start, a little late start on it. What's up at everybody? Ryan Garcia is getting snatched in for a mental health evaluation and get and jumps off of social media like he got some sense. This fight is in trouble, people. This fight is in trouble. <laughs> this fight is in trouble. Troubles, troubles, trouble. Come on, what's up, man? Where you been? Come on. Where you at, come on? Where you been, 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 come on? Man, I thought you'd jump on here. Bill Haney jumped on here, man. You weren't here, Kamal. I was like, man, where's Kamal? I know Kamal going to jump out here. But Jamal probably wanted to talk about Baturbiev or somebody. <laughs> What's up, all things? Good morning. Banks, the boxing fan. What's up, man? What's up, man? I'm putting links in there from the beginning. Because, man, look, I had this argument with this dude on Twitter yesterday from the ringside reporter. Can't say I read the articles, but I got to tell you, man, from the ringside reporter, you guys need to. I think a lot of the stuff that goes on where people claim corruption in boxing is just confusion that comes from your inability or lack of willingness to understand the rules. Because at a certain point in time, when you realize what the rules are, they're not that complicated. But if you don't understand what they are or you waste your time trying to talk about what you want the rules to be instead of what the rules actually are. You think corruption and eh, some of this stuff ain't corruption. Some of this stuff is just your inadequate understanding of what the rules are and a lack of an appreciation for the positions that the sanctioned and bodies find themselves in based off the demands of fans, fighters, and the media and their desire to placate people. Puts them in funny positions where they come across as being inconsistent. What's going on? Crush the legend. Hitman Broncos. Edwin Volatan. Ken LeGru. Ock Beasy. Ray Smith. Good morning. CJ, the family cartel. What's going on, Fire? Bing. What's up, man? CJ said, love your shirt, man. Thank you, man. We rocking with the Kansas City Kings today. We rocking with the Kansas City Kings. What's going on, Edward Valentine? What's going on? So, yo, to the noobs. Shout out to the fight. Shout out to the noobs. What's going on, Jordan? Let me slide all the way to the end, man. Marquee in the building. What's going on, man? How you feeling? Always in the gym. Salute. He said, hey, Missouri. So a three has said, uh, what's up, Fanon? I got three Neely Fuller Jr. books on Amazon ready to purchase. That's what's up. I thought he only had, oh, yeah, no, yeah, he's got the three. He's got the, he's got the, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. You got to listen to his speeches too. So to make him understand, you got to listen to, listen to him, explain it and use it as well. Because the books are kind of hard to, they're kind of hard, kind of hard to process. Yes, I did, Mr. Volatine, and I have so much appreciate that that reminder. What's going on, Jonathan Bullard? Um, so look, man, Ryan Garcia, this Devin Haney and Ryan Garcia fight should probably not take place. Ken LeGrew, man, happy birthday, man. Happy birthday, happy birthday, happy birthday. Happy birthday. Let me take a second to thank that the people that told me to get this oil for my beard. Uh, man, who was the dude that told me? Is it Richard Prado? It wasn't, it wasn't just Richard Prado. Told me to, um, who was my guy from the Caribbean, man? God, dog, there's so many names, man. And like they get mixed because it's not an actual name. Uh, hey, Bill Cad Cadman said, love the channel from Canada. Thank you, brother. Ryan turned off his social media. Yeah, so that they couldn't, so they can't access it. So the doctors can't access it. <laughs> Don't worry. The prints are out there, homie. Don't worry. Let me find out what that doctor is. I'm going to get all they, all that. You can't take that away. Told him to shut his ass up. What's the name of the oil? 
I don't know, man. I got it's something, some type of oil, beard, double two X W something or other. Ox Steel told me to do it, and somebody else told me to do it. And yeah, man. It's, hey, man, it's kind of it's getting it softer. It's making it softer. The longer I use it, the softer it's getting. And I think I'm gonna keep it. I think I'm gonna keep it. My mother said it looks nice. She likes it. Um, people keep telling me, you know, so everybody, so, you know, once in a while, somebody say, "Oh, you look so old." Then I'm like, "Shit, I am." Damn, I kind of am. I don't think if I shave this beard off, I'm going to make anybody think I'm 25. You know, I got a 23 year old, I got a 22 year old daughter or a 23 year old daughter. And I, and I don't think I look as young as she does. I'm just going to have to live. I guess I'm going to have to live it, live with it. I guess I'm going to have to live with the fact that I'm, you know, that I'm about to be 55 years old. I guess I'm just not going to be have to be ashamed of what the truth is. I'm going to have to live in the world as it is. And if that means I got to be bald and have a gray beard, hey, man, it is what it is. I guess I'm going to have to suffer the slings and arrow of outrageous, of outrageous cyber bullies. Ooh. Say, you ain't that old, noob. Nah, you know what it is. I'm 55, man. I'm 55. I'm 54 right now. I'm about to be 55. I'm halfway done, baby boy. I'm halfway done. You get the tremors not yet. I got tremors. I've got tremors, but I but I think I will buy what he's what he's listening. I'm waiting for Ox Steel to tell me the name again. Shady said he said you look great for 55. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. You know what I mean? Thank you. I appreciate that. Thank you, Shady 180. Shady 180. But see, these young boys be making a mistake, dog. Just said fine wine. Look, man, my mind is straight though. My mind is good. My mind is good. I got my body weight down. I'm, I've got the regiment down. I'm actually starting to see some like musculature that, that rests with underneath things. <laughs> Facts age with grace. Yes, sir. What's up? Don't mess with, mess with Texas. Um, That is a great thing about being a man. We don't care about getting old like, like that vanity wise. Yeah, not, not bad. Like, it's not bad. You know what I mean? It ain't that bad, man. Uh, but you know what it is. I've been having, you know, you have these other thoughts, man. You know, you're halfway done, man. You're halfway done. Yeah, black don't crack, but yellow wrinkles. <laughs> anyway, 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 anyway. I can look, if I can look like at 55, I'm doing something right. Hey, thank you, brother. I appreciate you, man. Thank you, man. Uh I went back and watched when you first started. And I was like, yeah, Fanon got it together. What are you talking about? Got what together? It was kind of fat. Yeah, A. Jones, no doubt. No doubt. Shout out a hey, White Shark. Shout out to Brazil, man. Shout out to Brazil. Brazil. Anyway, let's get back on Ryan Garcia. Um. And I see, and I see there, I don't think there's any videos out there when I first started talking. Clean face, Fanon. Yeah, I'm good, man. You look great now is what I mean, dig, homie. Okay. Oh, I mean, oh, okay. I mean, dig, big homie. Okay. A oh, big homie. Okay, cool. Thank you, brother. Yeah, definitely. I look way better than I did last year. Fat as shit. Ugh. I look at it. I'm like, man, my face is fat as shit. But it is what it is, man. We getting it together. I'm still maintaining my diet. I'm still on my business. You know, I'm still on my business. Uh, I took this week off from walking because my knees got hurt, bro. You said I seen one of your old suit and I, the suits was badass. For, ah, every once in a while, I, I used to put them on because I was working, so I had to wear them every once in a while. But I'm chilling now. We push for that oil bill spot. Ah, we push you for that that beard oil sponsorship. Yeah, man, let me get that beard. Honestly, man, I need more. I need more white fans. I've been trying to tell y'all. People keep telling me how I should grow my channel. I need more white people. I need more white people. I need more Mexicans, man. I need the Mexicans support the channel. That's why I be trying to ride with Canelo, but but Kamal Oz be trying to kill the whole vibe, man. The fact, the, the truth kills the vibes. You know, I'm thinking I'm gonna y'all call me y'all call me a sellout enough times, man. I'm gonna try to see how much I can get. <laughs> how much can I get for lying on you Negroes full time? How much can I get? 
You got the stuff. Uh, Richard Paris. Yeah, yeah. You, man, my guy, Richard. Yeah, yeah. Because I was like, is it Richard Prado? I knew it wasn't Richard Prado. It's Richard Paris. Yeah, man. I got the groom. I got the groom. Yeah, yeah. I got it groomed up. Yes, I did. Oh, so much better. So much better, dog. So much less itchy. I don't ever think it's going to grow out like you guys grow out, grow out, but I'm going to keep it around right here. Get some clippers, take it down a little bit, man. Um, it's not smooth like Leonard Ellerby, man. Sm Leonard Ellerby got the best beard, man. That beard is the shit, man. I ain't gonna lie. As far as gray beards go, his stuff is that's some that's the that's the hey, that's it right there. He said, I'm a white people, I watch every day. Hey, thank I didn't know you was a white boy, Tim. Tim, Tim what up, Tony? Thank you, man. I appreciate you, man. I need the white people, dog. I need the white people, bro. Go to the floor. No, I'm not okay. I need the white man. I need the white man to support me. I need some of that white man money in my life, dog. Hey, hey that shit. Hey, I ain't gonna lie. Hey, that white money, that white man money go deep. <laughs> you know? But anyway, man. Oh, that's me in the picture. Oh, okay, cool. I, I can't quite see it because it's too small. Oh, it said, always oh, in the gym. Said I'm white too. Okay, that's what's up. All right, that's what's up. Appreciate you, man. No, seriously, man. It's all good, man. We we all good, man. I I like I like whoever wants to listen to me, man. I ain't tripping. The Noop Nation and she, yeah, yeah, the Noop Nation. That's what's up. Dog, people thought I was gang banging because I was doing this and this. They, man, these clowns like, oh, Fanon out here trying to gang bang because he's doing this and he's doing this and he's doing this. <laughs> you like, come on, man. What y'all think this is, man? Uh, so you say corporate media out here hoping for the downfall of Canelo. Oh man, let me tell you. Let me tell you what they're doing to Canelo. All of a sudden, first of all, Tim Bradley is the absolute epitome. All right, let me tell you what corporate media is to me. To it, whenever I know, I want to know whatever corporate media is trying to push. I listen to Tim Bradley. I listen to little he 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 little dude. See, now that I know little dude ain't real, the little dude is a front. Once I figured out little dude was a front. And, and he's really just Ring Magazine. He's just like a front for Ring Magazine. He's not, dog, he's not real. That's a job to him. You know, Lil Hee Hee, Lil Hee Hee. <laughs> Once I realized Lil Hee Hee ain't real, Lil Hee Hee. <laughs> Lil Man, Lil Man. The Lil Man ain't real. Lil Man ain't shit real about Lil Man. Once I realized Lil Man wasn't real, he was a fake and he was a front for Ring Magazine. I don't know what you're talking about. I'm just talking about he, he, the comedian. Once I realized he's a front for Ring Magazine, I realized, okay, you want to listen to what corporate media wants? Listen to him. He'll give it to you. He's literally reading it off of a list. He, I mean, I listened to him long enough to be, he literally has a piece of paper or a printout in front of him where he starts reading it off. He's reading. Who the fuck reads? Like, I mean, who reads during their live stream? Reads. Reads. He's reading off of a fucking prompter. He's got prompts that are given to him, and he reads. I was like, oh, man. Come on, little man. <laughs> Come on, little guy. Kyle is a corporate media plant. Man, I don't know, man. I don't know. I don't think so. <laughs> I don't think so, Doug. I don't think so. Yeah, little man's fictitious, man. He ain't real. That dude ain't real, man. That, come on, man. Hey, man, Zapata Brand Boxing uh, Podcast. So you got you got Puerto Ricans right here. A Puerto Rico. Shout out to Puerto Rico, dog. Shout out to Puerto Rico. Shout out to Puerto Rico. Let me put this up here, man. Let me beg for that. Let me beg for the support. Give me a second. Shameless begging for support. There you go. <laughs> Man, it's crazy how people be out here, out here doing what they're doing, saying the things that they be saying. But anyway, let's get to Ryan Garcia, man. Or anybody want to chop it up and jump it on, jump on, go, want to say something, be, please feel free. Gordon, uh, Jordan Gordon said, uh, top of the AM, OG, top of the morning to you, brother. I have not seen any episodes of Gloves Off. I have not because I never watch those things. I never watch the shoulder programming. I have to, to be honest with you. I'd never, there's a link. Anybody want to chop it up? Uh, debates are welcome, but you have to like know what you're going to be, what you want to argue about. But let me tell you about this Ryan Garcia, man. Ryan Garcia and Devin Haney fight needs to be canceled. What up though, Dub Zero? 
I hope y'all are real noobs, dog. Don't ever run around saying noobs around noobs if you ain't no noob. Because as soon as you you say like three or four things, people will know what's up with you. People will know what you, we've got that little confused look. He looked confused for no good reason. Hmm. <laughs> smash that like button. Please smash that like button. No, I have not checked it out. I, all I know is that they're there. I'm already, you don't, I don't need to watch it because I'm buying the pay-per-view. They getting my money. They getting my money. Matter of fact, J Devin and Ryan are getting my money. Buy the fight. If they have the fight, buy Devin and Ryan's fight. What is a new? It's kind of hard. Oh, man, what's up, Starborn 007? What's up, Starborn 007, man? It's always good to see you, brother. Man, top of the morning, top of the morning to you, brother. How you how, how you doing, man? You still looking man, good, you know? Thank you, brother. Likewise, brother. I see that. I, mean, I like that hoodie. I mean, I like that cap you got on. In the picture, at least. Can't see your face. What's yeah, up, Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm kind of, you know, I'm out smoking a little bit, trying to enjoy the weather a little bit. But, um... Oh, enjoy, enjoy. Take one for me. Well, Hit well, not well, well, but I mean enjoy. I'm on my porch. It's not, I'm like, I'm not out. Out. You know, I'm just... I know like, what you're talking about. Yeah. You know, you're just chilling on your porch. A little, you know, morning burner. I got you. Yeah, yeah, morning, man. Man. They ain't nothing... Hey, back in the day, that wasn't nothing better than a morning burner. That shit was nice. Man, I deserve it. I did so much walking yesterday. I do door to door cable. I did so much walking in North Colorado yesterday. Oh my goodness. Oh man. man hey. I, I did good though. I did three though, man. I get 300 a deal. So it was a good day, but it was a long walking day. A long walking day. But I'm on here. You know, I don't know what's up with Ryan Gar. I got a couple of things to say. I don't know what's up with Ryan Garcia. I don't know what got into him. I don't know what's going on with him. I don't know why he's trying to act like he's keeping it real all of a sudden. I don't know what's up with him. But if he steps in that ring on 420, Devin will tear him apart. And I don't want to hear no excuses. They say he's this, he's that. We don't care. He should have never gotten a ring. Yeah. Shit. There's plenty of excuses. Which he is no kind of excuses. Listen. We could say one thing, Ryan is free right now. Ryan is doing what he wants. Ryan might be at his happiest. He's he's Jeez. choosing to come out and be the man that he wanted to be. Gee, there's all kind of excuses. That man ain't right in the head, man. I'm sorry, bro. You don't get to be, I don't give a shit. Crazy people, I've been crazy. Crazy people don't know they're crazy. You know, that's why that's what it is to be crazy. You don't know you're crazy. Everybody else knows it though, and you taking advantage of that kid, man. You ain't got no business beating a dude that ain't in his right mind. There's plenty of excuses, man. Yeah, crazy is different, man. Crazy in some things is not good, but crazy in boxing might not be the, a bad thing. Nah, it's a bad thing. Okay, it's a bad thing, bro. It's a bad thing for you to be out there fucking in La La Land, <laughs> up there in La La Land throughout your whole damn training camp, not focus on what you're doing and jumping up in there with somebody that is sharp, razor sharp. Nah, man, if you jump in there with somebody you know ain't right in the dome, bro, that ain't no ain't no pride in that, man. Ain't nobody ain't, nah, man. That's a bad look. Just what it is, bro. Now nah, I'm using rank. crazy. I, hey, I've been in the psych ward, bro. I can say, I can say crazy. I okay. mean crazy. And now somebody said, please use mentally ill. No, nah, I'm using crazy. Shit. Call it what it is. Crazy. What? <laughs> like, go ahead, man. And then also, we waiting for that winner of we waiting for that winner of Keith one Keith one Tom Thurman who only has one loss again and Tim Zoo. We all who waiting we? for that. Who is you know, we? You know the best pal for pal boxer said Floyd Mayweather. You Javante 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 up there. He's up there. But, he? but he's up there. Give him a couple more years. Give him you a couple more Usyk? years. He's up there. He's Javante is up there. You mean Usyk? You mean Usyk? No. <laughs> Terrence Bud profit well before i get to that i will say one thing i love devin haney i love devin but i'm not gonna lie every time i see javante it's just a look he just got he has something you know what i mean even though i love my boy um devin haney but but we waiting for that fight between keith one time and tim zoo that's that's what we they they said that e banks for well, he that, don't um, want, man he don't want that man come on man they not giving him that fight they're not giving him that fight. So he, so you saying he can't get the fight? I don't know. If he want the fight, 
You ain't saying he don't want the fight. You're just saying he might not yeah, be able to get the fight. the fight. I'm saying I don't think he's going to get the fight. Okay, okay. See, I don't know. I, I, so, I'm telling you, man, I, I suspect I suspect for the first time ever some of these criticisms of the PBC might actually take place where you can make them instead of lying on them, going out to – see, they're my, this is my thing about the PBC. First of all, I think they put on great fights. I think it's a tremendous organization. I got a ton of respect for the people in it. No organization is perfect. None. No, no business venture is perfect. It's just what it is. You know, your favorite company that you love in the world that you, you know, sometimes, man, they put out a product that ain't the best product. There's things that can be approved, right? All of that. The problem with the PBC, the problem with the people. Like your favorite, like your favorite YouTuber talking about two of your favorite fighters all the time. Okay, I got you. What are you talking about? No, 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 no. There's nothing wrong with me is what you're talking about. <laughs> you're talking about me? <laughs> I'm perfect. That shit don't apply. But anyway, yeah, yeah, you know, every once in a while, but you know, yeah, you know, I ain't perfect. Um, anyway, if uh, it matter what you complaining about, I'm literally talking about your favorite fighters all the time. I'm not complaining, bro. You I just want, try to throw, go, I just, I just try to throw one bash you, man. I'm trying to see if you're still sharp. That's all. Oh, shit, sharp as a tag. You saw I whooped you. you said, hey, you saw I'm, I'm trying to bait Bill to come back on the channel for another debate. Hey, get oh, back to that. Listen, get back to that chest, brother. Oh man, look, Doug. Listen, I got just you. get on there. Listen, listen just get on there and just it's, do the puzzles. Just no, do the it's puzzles. Not, it's not. I got to tell you, bro. I don't think it's worth my time, dog. I don't think that I have the years to get off that ass whooping that you've been handing me. So I think I got to stick to what I'm already uh, very, very good at, which is whooping your ass in a debate, but uh, and staying on the winning side. But anyway, let me get back to the original point because I appreciate the conversation. This is a fun conversation. Um. The PBC is going to have to make they're going to have to make fights that keep the PBC profitable. I think that's just the natural. That's just a, that's just the nature of the game. Right. So if you have if Terrence Crawford is not willing to jump out there and fight somebody where it is really where the PBC thinks a guy reasonably with them has a chance to beat him. It's going to be tough. It's going to be tough for him to get that fight if he's not willing to sign and become one of the team. You know, and that was the case with Top Rank. He got all his fights with Top Rank because he was willing to stay there and be available to them for multiple fights. If Ger if, Te if Terrence Crawford is not willing to do that, then I don't. I see him getting fights with David Benavides, David Morrell, David Benavides, David Morrell. That <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like they may do that. Cause they're looking at him like, yeah, that's gonna be the that's about to be the end of Terrence. And we can use his, we can use, we can use his hide, you know, who to wrap around the shoulders of Dave of David Morrell as you know, we can put that we can put an ass whooping of him, him whooping Terrence Carver's ass on, on film. On what 168? Yeah, with David Morrell, somebody he cannot beat, right? Yeah, you want to go, oh, you want to fight in 160 against who? How about you fight David Morrell? We'll give you $20 million to fight David Morrell. We'll give you $25 million. We'll give you $20 million to fight David Morrell. I think we can get some dollars fighting Danny. You're not going to get no dollars fighting Danny because you're just feeding Danny to him. If I am telling you, man, because that's a rivalry. You, you know, that's if a rivalry. I, if that's I'm matchmaking rivalry. for him and my okay. job is I got to keep, I got this deal with Amazon Prime. I got 14 pay-per-view shows to show and prove you are fighting king fucking kong and if you, you give us 20 money you give us 20 30 we'll fight david we'll, yeah. we'll beat david we'll 20 beat david david morell okay yeah, like, yeah we'll would, beat david if, if i got the money hell yeah but you're not beating david you're gonna get your ass whooped by david you're gonna get let your me, ass let me ask you this hurt um, let me ask you this okay. You don't think he can beat David, right? You know he's not beating David Morrell, right? I want 68, but we get somebody 160 first, and then we'll go to 168. It doesn't That's matter. He can go to 160, to then go to 168. He's not beating David Morrell. He's going to get beat up by David Morrell. He's never going to beat David Morrell. No chance. That is an absolute bloody beatdown. He's way too small. He's way too small for that guy. That's what I'm saying. No, he would be. Have you watched Terrence Crawford fight? Because I know you. You. you yes, saying, I have. I know Mr. you said that yes, Smith was going to run him over. You. I never say said that. Win. Yeah, I he never said run that. him over. I, I never mean, said that. Stop you, saying. You did that. say that, and when you no, said I run him over, 
Right, so let, I did me, not let, me, let me clarify when you said run them over. It's two run them overs. Run them over is meaning it wasn't going to be a good fight. You didn't Sir, say no, that. No, I did not say that. No, I know you didn't, but you were saying he was going to run them over. Basically, no, I did not say that. Put that pressure on him. No, I did not say that. I said it was a 50-50 fight. I think the style that, that Errol Spence Jr. will win by a decision because of the because of his punch output and the style. Yeah, yeah, That's yeah, 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 yeah. So let's get yeah. this right before you try to put words in my mouth and predictions that I didn't make because I didn't do that. Let's get back to the fact that Errol Spence Jr. will get killed by David Morrell. And All so right, we can, I guess one, I guess one forty-seven to one sixty-eight. David Morrell is a fucking monster. He's a six foot two. He's yeah, six yeah, foot yeah, two. Yeah, 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 yeah. He's, he's six foot two. We want Nello, man. We want somebody. Yeah, you five better call. Nine. You we better call Nello. for Canelo. You better call for Canelo and stay away from David Morrell. We want so Canelo five times. You might as well be asking Terrence Crawford to fight Baturbiev. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's five eight six two. I, you know, yeah. I got. Man, I, I got. David consider. Morrell is bigger than me. I've stood right next to Terrence. Crawford. I gotta Terrence consider. Crawford's I gotta. Good. I gotta consider all of that when it comes to that. But Nello, a one night situation, we might be able to get Nello. You're not gonna get him. That's yeah, my point. Know. I'm not, they're not going to, first of all, they've got to keep Canelo. If they're going to put anybody Canelo in there with somebody, it's going to be somebody signed to them where they think that that guy may be able to win the fight or they can make a lot of money off the fight. Canelo is not, is not, is not unique, is not really exclusive to the PBC and neither is Bud. So why would the PBC spend their money on trying to get Bud a fight with somebody that's not with them, a fight with somebody yeah, else yeah, that right. not be with them? Yeah, that make that that yeah, you're right. That yeah, definitely you know what I'm it's that like, definitely no, makes man, sense. They want that's why they were like, hey man, we'll take the Mungia fight a one off because you're about to whoop up on Mungia. They not they not doing that stuff. I think I mean Mungia may be a good fight, and plus Mungia is not really exclusive to the zone either. But anyway, you know, hey, I got Kamal right behind you, brother. All right, I'm done. Don't sleep on McGill, though. Don't sleep on that fight. No, that I'm might not, be a better fight than you think with McGill. I know I think it could be a good fight with McGill, but look, man. Thank you for having me to, on, man. Keep doing your thing, don't be, brother, to slide, man. don't be trying to slide that those accusations on me, dog. Listen, no, I, I said, said run him over, but I didn't mean to run over. You mean mean he was going to put that pressure on him. It's going to be hard, but it was going to be a good fight. But you think things go away yeah. because of that pressure. But and that I was basically was physical. Very, very clear. And not skilled. And I said it was very, very clear that Terrence Crawford could win that fight. And I said it a thousand times. A thousand you, times. Thank you, man, for having All me right, on, man. brother. Yes, sir. You bet. See, now I see GM said, if you ever watch David Morrell fight, look, man, that man know damn well. <laughs> That man know damn well any talk of Canelo Alvarez, any type of any talk of Terrence Crawford and David Morrell, you might as well be talking about Terrence Crawford and you might as well be talking about Terrence Crawford and Anthony Joshua. That shit ain't gonna go well for Terrence Crawford fighting Anthony Joshua. He's way too big. It's not a it's not an indictment. Is that that's not an indictment on the skill set of a of of Terrence Crawford at all. That's just an that's just a, a an acknowledgement to the reality. That the dude is too big. What's up, Kamal? But non, before I begin, I just want to uh, send my condolences out. Not my condolences, our heartfelt prayers out. News broke overnight that Roberto Duran is being treated for heart problems. Oh, so let's keep the legend. Let's keep him in our thoughts and prayers. His family released that statement that he's being treated for heart problems. Oh, okay, yo, for sure, for sure, for sure. Okay, man. I gotta, I gotta say, that that uh, thing you did with with uh, Bill Haney, that was excellent, bro. You walked him into some <laughs> some great arguments, and then you dissected him, just like a lawyer could. It was great, and I unfortunately I was working my normal job, so I couldn't hop in because you know I would have called in. You know That's I would have. Like, oh, I would have known for sure. Go, go ahead, man. <laughs> you know it. So that was great, man. And it just goes to show you your reach. These guys can talk about you, these corporate media plants, corporate media itself. They could steal uh, and not give you credit for things you, you, you say like they did with uh, one of those boxing sites, created an article based on your and I conversation about um, Jerron Ennis' opponents, and they didn't give you credit for that. So they're listening. They're calling in, 
and they're the shadows. And they, they, oh. just, they just got to respect your greatness, bro. Let me, let me tell you for a sec second, come on, about this conversation I had with this. I This is how bad these journalists are. I was on Twitter and I don't really, when people respond to me, I don't know. I don't go to their profiles and like really look and see who they are. But this dude just kept talking. And I was like, man, who the fuck is this dude? So I just looked at, I was like, this dude is a actually a boxing writer. And this guy was sitting there trying to claim that Gervonta Davis was elevated from the W. He was elevated. What Devin Haney left the weight class and Gervonta Davis was elevated. And I'm like, what the fuck are you talking about? He's not elevated. He got the same belt. Lomachenko was elevated after he beat Jorge, after he beat Jorge Linares from the WBA world title to the WBA super world title. And then this dude literally puts out there and I said, man, we're, he's like, these are the rules. And he put the, and he literally put a synopsis of the rules up a synopsis. I'm like, man, that's not the fucking rules. That's a, that's an explanation of the rules. And the explanation of the rules was an actual and was not even a rule. It was an explanation of the consequences of what happened. It wasn't even a it wasn't even an explicit statement of the rules. So I was like, man, and then it supported what I said, which was look, Jermonte Davis, the WBA, anyway, I won't go into it, but but dude, not only do these guys. These these guys just try to push certain things that they believe, but they really don't even take the time to truly understand the rules of the sanctioning bodies. And then they get out there and talk to you like they did. That shit is embarrassing. It's embarrassing. But go go ahead. It, I mean, it's embarrassing for boxing because you guys are sitting up there claiming corruption, but you don't know how do you know if something's corrupt if you don't even understand how it works. You can't tell me if something's not operating properly if you don't know how it's supposed to work. It's like saying, "Oh, this, this, oh, this is this, this hose is corrupt because there's water coming out of it." A uh, dude, that's called a hose. It's a you turn it, the water comes out so that you can so you can water your lawn. The water is supposed to come out of there when you turn it. Oh, I'm sorry. I, you know, I just thought the house was leaking. Dumbasses. Anyway, go ahead, bro. No, go ahead because you're right. Uh, boxing media corporate media which is what i've i claim that moniker on the show and i got your users and even yourself using that term is, is the worst um they'll make excuses for their preferred fighter they won't investigate legitimate things like the wbo being controlled by aram and frank warren i mean that organization basically they'll list nothing but aram or warren uh fighters and if they hey, i can hear you i can hear you i'm gonna i'm gonna get coffee going in the back because i know you about to fry somebody I'll be right back, but I can hear you, okay? Okay, perfect. Okay. So I was going to say corporate media, they don't investigate the WBO's allegiance to Top Rank and Bob Arum or Frank Warren. Um, if you look at, through their rankings, all, almost all their fighters and important positions in their rankings are with Arum or Frank Warren. And if they're not, there are these obscure fighters that no one's really heard of or fighters with no promotional contracts that easily get eaten up or no – uh, big name promoters, excuse me, that easily would get eaten up in a negotiation with top ranker Frank Warren. And corporate media won't investigate the WBO's allegiance and overly deferential relationship to, to Bob Arum and Frank Warren. They didn't do anything about, investigate anything about uh, Mauricio Solomon and Bob Arum both blocking Baturbiev and Bevel, which was the fight that we've been wanting for a long time. Uh, so you, relying on corporate media, which will I've even seen um, who I forgot who it was. I think it was Lance Pugmire. Uh, he was asking somebody a question. He said, "Do you think Clanelho is ducking Benavidez?" And he's he inserted his opinion and he said, "Just for the record, I don't think Clanelho's ducking Benavidez." So it's like you're prejudicing your own question to get the answer that you respond you want. And that's what corporate media functions in this boxing game for. And then of course we know they scapegoat. Uh, they put a uh, scarlet uh, letter around the PBC and try to condemn everything they've done since its inception, 2014, 2015. Uh, but anyway, Fanon, thank you for uh, that segment with uh, Bill Haney. Uh, you were great, and it was salute to Bill for coming on, taking questions, and uh, salute to those people who did interact with him. That was great airtime. And I just want to say with this Terrence Crawford thing, reports were that Terrence Crawford and the PBC did part ways, 
supposedly they had offered the Terrence Crawford fight to Canelo and he turned it down, they being the PBC. And so I don't necessarily agree with your hypothesis, Fanon, on Terrence Crawford. I think if indeed the facts are that they have parted ways after the one fight, the Errol Spence uh, re uh, rematch clause has uh, expired, I think that what's going to happen is Terrence Crawford's going to be fighting kind of exclusively in the Middle East for the kind of purses that he wants if the if Saudi Arabia uh, offers him those pur pur purses, uh, Prince Turkey or whatever his name, Turkey al Sheikh. The other thing is, if he's going to fight like a Tim Zhu, um, what's going to happen with that fight is the PBC is going to make him a cut rate deal. And if he doesn't accept it, then what's going to happen is they're going to let it go to purse bid. And of course, I don't think many people will be interested in bidding for that outside of the PBC. And so what's going to happen is he's going to have take it or leave it kind of money to fight Tim Zhu for that WBO title. And he'll go to Australia. Tim Zhu will be the A side and he won't get the kind of purses that he's wanting because the WBO, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, Fanon, uh, Crawford was named the super champion with the WBO. Uh, yes, he is. Okay. So he can immediately go up and get the uh, Tim Zhu because I think Tim Zhu is going to be the champion even if he loses to Keith Thurman um, because it's a non-title fight. So when that happens, the PBC, if they have no allegiance to him, they're just going to be like, this is a take it or leave it offer. It's not going to be what he wants. Um, or they're, they're going to say, hey, we can go to purse bid and we'll be one of the only people bidding. We, we will bid a, like a low bid. We'll give Tim what we know we can give him. That doesn't necessarily reflect what Tim's going to get paid. And then Crawford's going to get whatever the market dictates uh, for him. So I, I, that's where I, you and I disagree. I think Crawford can force the WBO um, super champion, go up there and fight Tim Zhu, but he's not going to get the kind of money. That that what do we do? You disagree with what? Make sure I understand clearly. Yeah. But I was going to say, I don't think the PBC is got, can prevent him from fighting Tim Zhu. Like, I don't think they're going to restrict him from fighting Tim Zhu. What they're going to have, what's going to happen is they're going to let the market value affect what he is paid, his purse. In other words, he goes up there and he, see, he requests to, his rights as mandatory challenger as a WBO super champion against Tim Zhu. What they're going to do is if he has no affiliation with the organization, they're going to offer him a purse that's what they think is reflective of his market value, which is what you and I think would be. He's probably going to be insulted. He's going to be like, let's go to purse bid. They go to purse bid. PBC will probably win it. Or if another entity like DAZN bids, they'll win it. And they'll, uh, it, but it won't be what he thinks he deserves for a fight of that magnitude. So if PBC wins the purse bid, they'll probably stage the fight in Australia. Tim Zhu will get the a lion's share and Terrence Crawford will not get much money for a fight of that magnitude because reports were that the two parted ways after the Errol Spence, Terrence Crawford uh, rematch clause expired. So PBC, if those reports are true, they have no allegiance to paying him what he thinks he needs to, needs to make. They're going to pay a market value. If he exercises his mandatory rights with a WBO, they're not going to prevent him from fighting Tim Zhu. is what my point, they're not going to set block that fight. They have no reason to block it. But he's not going to get paid what he thinks he gets paid because they they have no fiduciary or other obligations to him. In other words, that's where we disagree. Yeah, well, no, I, I don't. Well, let me let me be clear. They didn't. Uh, the WBO didn't allow. Wasn't going to allow. Try not to allow Tim Zhu to fight uh, Keith Thurman, and they just moved it to 154 pounds. The WB the WBO is somebody that the that the PBC already said at one point in time, if you guys keep playing, we're not going to recognize you at all. Remember where that was the thing where people were saying that they didn't that the PBC didn't listen or that or shot maybe even been Showtime didn't even listen. I think it was on Fox at the time it was on Fox. Fox, that they didn't even list. They didn't even list w, the WBO as a, as a major sanctioning body because the WBO was playing. So if Al Heyman and those guys don't want to give Tim Zhu to Keith Thurman to, to Tim Zhu to Terrence Crawford, they'll drop the belt. Uh, yeah, I don't see Tim Zhu. Tim Zhu's got <laughs> he's a warrior, man. I don't think I don't think Tim Zhu will drop it. I mean, I'm belt. just telling you, man, because if you like look, if they say, okay, Tim, if I will make the fight, what are you gonna do for me, Terrence? You're gonna have to sign a multi-fight deal for us to do this.
They're not about to feed Tim Zoo to him. And Tim Zoo in Australia is not to, about to feed himself to them. Because I Tim see, Zoo, I, somebody, I mean, look, this is just, it's subjective, right? It's a subjective thing. We won't know what really takes place, what really will take place. But if they if they have matchmakers with Tim Zoo that think, look, man, Tim Zoo is somebody that can become a unified champion at 154 pounds, and we can start selling out stadiums in, in, in Australia with this kid. And we can have him fight Jermel Charlo when Jermel Charlo comes back. He, we can have him fight, um, have a unification fight with Mad Marov or somebody like the whoever that guy is that was on the zone that won that won that title. Israel uh, Madrimov. Israel yeah, Madrimov. Israel Madrimov. I mean, look to me. Yeah, I'll put it this way: if it was Bob Arum, this wouldn't be a fucking question that that fight's not taking place. Just like when Bob Arum, when Bob Arum's had Jose Ramirez. And um, had Jose Ramirez and Regis Progre, they fought that tournament and the WBC made all those rulings and all of that stuff. And what did he do? He was like, look, man, well, guess what? Jose Ramirez got his, hand, got his hands on the belt. Too bad, so sad, Regis. And they buckled. So I, I like just depends on, I think it depends on what I, now I agree with what you're saying that they're going to, that it depends on what situation they're going to give Terrence Crawford for that fight. But I'm telling you, if it was me, Terrence Crawford is going to find at least a fight with a two-fight option, at the least, to get that fight. Because you can beat him. And you're not taking that belt and waddling off to Eddie Hearn. Or I'm going to have to have a five-year conversation with you about whether or not you're going to defend it or not now that you stuck a loss on, on. And I'm sorry if this sounds, you know, may sound, you know, insensitive to racial issues. Dog, you're not about to beat my golden white boy <laughs> and run out of town. Fuck out of here, man. We about to sell this cat. We we marketing Tim Zoo. Man, if anything, Tim Zoo, anything, she, we got a Tim Zoo, we got a Tim Zoo, um, Jerron Ennis fight coming up in a couple years. I'm not selling that shit out for your fly by night ass fly, fly by night ass leaving. Like, I mean, if they want to do it, cool. But I'm not doing that shit. I be and I'm just telling you to somebody that's thinking, look, man, I got a contract with Amazon Prime. And we got to have 12 to 14 pay-per-views. Terrence, if you want to fight Tim Zoo, I need three fights out you. Or good luck having anybody pay for to see you fight for that vacant belt. Because again, that goes back to the negotiations, come on. If they move Tim Zoo away and they tell the WBO, hey man, you can keep it. Tim Zoo's gonna move over here and fight for unification for the WBA and the IBF with Jermel. Or what, whatever that scenario is that they got, whatever other scenario they have, we're gonna do that. Now you can order a fight with from between Bud and whoever you want for that WBO. You know what Bud's gonna do? Bud's not gonna fight for the WBO. He's gonna retract his demand to fight for that vacant belt. They don't even. That's that's a that's kind of like how you know what's my man's name? Starborn said, "Let's learn how to play chess. Let's play chess with that move." What happens if I move here? If I move Tim Zhu out of the WBO, what is Terrence Crawford going to do? He's not going to exercise his WBA super championship because who's he going to fight for it? Who's going to pay for it? What network is going to air it? None of them. So that's all I have to do is call the WBO and say, look, man, I'm going to tell you I'm not doing it. Well, I see what you're saying, Fernand, but the problem is um... – Charlo Jermel is completely stripped of his belt. Sebastian Fundora is fighting another PBC fighter for the WBC title. So that'll be He's PBC in line. He's in recess, which means as soon as he comes back, he can fight Madmarov. He's in recess. You're talking about for the WBA or the WBC? Madmarov, what's Madmarov? Isn't Mad He's Madmarov? WBA. The... He He's in WBA. He's in recess. He's okay, in recess. So he can come back and fight Madrimov. Mm -hmm. I don't think he's going to do that. For those last two belts, he can immediately come back and fight for either one of those two belts. He's in recess. I think in WBC, he's in recess, too. He's just in recess. Okay, well, he's in recess. He can come fight for those belts. But, yeah, then he can he can come from, and, but, but even then, even if, he's, even if he's not, doesn't come straight back for those belts. Tim Zhu, he can still fight Tim Zhu. He can still fight Tim Zhu. I mean, that's a big fight. That'll, that'll be a big fight. And that's part of the reason why, you know, I was so critical of Clanelho because he blocked two fights that we wanted to see that were the natural order of things. 
that PBC and Showtime had been building Tim Zhu versus Jermel Charlo. You have Jermel Charlo doing commentary on his fights in Australia from the PBC, from the Showtime studio. And then you had Clonello Benavides, which was the next the fight to make that the whole world wanted to see. Of course, we didn't get that. And I told you exactly how that fight was going to happen. It was a gimmick. Um, so people who say I'm beholden to the PBC, I've called out the PBC's BS for, for a long time uh, when they do have BS. Um, but yeah, I just, I think with you, with, with this point, maybe he's, Tim Zhu would drop the WBO. I don't see it happening, but I think they'll let market forces dictate how, what their interaction with Terrence Crawford would be if he exercises that mandatory obligation with the WBO. I think that what they'll do is they'll say, hey, this is what we can pay you. This is what our market forces determine is your rate in this free market. He'll probably be insulted by that and say, let's go to purse bid. And the PBC will be one of one of the only organizations to bid for that fight if they do go to purse bid with Tim Zhu. And if they and if somebody overbids or overpays them, it's not on their network. But I don't well, I'm tell you as soon as they as soon as they go to purse bid, Terrence Crawford's going to pull out. As soon as they go to purse bid, he's going to pull out. No, you think so? immediately because he's going because he's stuck with 50 50. He's going to pull out before they go to purse bid. You can I'm telling you, man. Terrence Crawford gave up the game. He gave up the goose for me as a negotiator. He gave up the goose when he negotiated with Terrence Crawford, with Errol, with Errol Spence. I know how he operates. He's making the same. He made the same revelations about what his interests are that Errol Spence Jr. did that led Terrence Crawford to be able to take to be able to maximize and get as much money as he got out of Errol because Errol said that's all he wanted. Terrence Crawford has now said the same thing. He wants legacy. He wants money. As soon as you go to purse bid, he's going to pull out. Because right there, the purse bid is at the most for him 50-50 with Tim Zhu. It's out. He's out. He's gone immediately. As soon as you say purse bid, he's gone. No way is he sitting up there for a purse bid. No way. As soon as I say, okay, no worries, purse bid, he's going to get out of his chair and leave right away because he won't get the majority of the money against Tim Zhu. He will get 60-40 against the champion. Maybe 55, maybe 60, maybe 55, uh, what is it? 55-45. But as soon as I do that, he's leaving. And that's what I would do. I would say, okay, Tim, hey, here's a good offer for Tim Zhu. I need Tim Zhu, and Tim Zhu has a, a mandatory rematch clause. And if you win the rematch, I need two other option fights out of you you're gonna fight for me for the next two years on this network for those belts and i'm gonna name the fighter we can agree on who they're gonna be but they're gonna be pbc fighters you're gonna fight because i need my money now if you say no you did a good move you forced a move you said fuck it i'm gonna go to the wbo i'm gonna be the wbo super champion you're never gonna i don't care because as soon as I go to purse bid, I say, no, thank you. I pull him out the fight. Nobody's going to want it. Nobody's going to pay you for it. And then if I if I say, fuck it, and we go to purse bid, then you're only going to get 55% or 40. I'm sorry, you're only going to get 45%, maybe 40%. You're going to say, fuck it. You're, you're wishy-washy. I already know you're wishy-washy. And why do I know he's wishy-washy? Because you sued Bob Arum, and as soon as he fucking flicked the lawyer at you, you ran. I'm okay. trying to tell you. I'm 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 just saying. Like, look, you may be 100 right, Kamal, but let's let's analyze this as intelligent businessmen, which you definitely are. I know his tendency that if I throw some money at him and make him spend some money, he's going to leave because that's what Bob Arum did with him. All Bob Arum did to get him to drop that lawsuit was take it to federal court and make him spend a little bit of extra money to have to get it pushed back into state court. And then he never refiled it. So he got cute. Bob Arum dug in his pocket and said, I'm going to make you spend money. And he went and he left. So I know that if I push it with you, you're and you already said you want to make a bunch of money. Well, you're not going to get that in a purse bid. You don't want to you, you want to be your own boss. You don't want to sign. I want you as a fighter, but I want you predictable as a fighter. I want well, you predictable. If the reports are true, Fanon, and I don't mean it, you're, you're, I mean you're a better businessman than I am. You're obviously more experienced in, in these kinds of things. If the reports are true that they parted ways, PBC and Crawford early, I agree with everything that you just said. But they 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 are of the opinion 
hey, look, you're a bad faith negotiator. Your market value is not what you stubbornly insist that it is. So therefore, we parted ways after the Errol, Errol Spence uh, rematch clause expired. Um, I feel like it's not going to be necessarily oh. acrimonious or personal. I feel like they, they feel like we don't want to do any more business with you. So we're just going to take give you a take it or leave it offer or go to purse bid. And if he pulls out of the purse bid, again, if he's not aligned with like DAZN or Top Rank's going to work with him on a fight by fight basis, uh, I just... I, I don't. I think PBC is, is going to give him a dose of reality that has to correspond to his past behavior. Sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Go finish. ahead. I'm sorry. I guess I was just so anxious to say something, and I'm sorry. So finish. I'm sorry. I, that no, was. Go I ahead. Go, go ahead. Okay. All right. So this is my thought on it because I heard something from Floyd Mayweather that really made me change. I, I'm, I'm analyzing what Floyd said. Floyd said, "Look, man, it seems like you're having a hard time making this fight with Errol Spence." That's what Floyd said. If you're having a hard time getting the rematch done with Errol Spence, you should do this or that. So let's just assume that Floyd knows what he's talking about, that Terrence was having a hard time getting that done. If I am Al Heyman, I'm telling you, this is, don't anybody listening to this, do not think I know Al Heyman. I don't know. I've never met the man. I'm just telling you, in a nego if I was doing this myself based off what I knew, my advice was Arrow would be let the rematch clause expire. Let it expire. Why, Martin? Why would you let it expire? Because if you let it expire, all the terms have to get renegotiated. But Arrow, if you want your money back and you don't like the deal, let it expire. Let it expire. Let the deal go. Because he's got nowhere else to go. He's got to come back to you. Where else is he going to make $20 million? And if he doesn't get this done, it's going to cost him $10 million. Easy. Because where is he going to go? Who's he going to fight that's going to get you that get that money? Who's going to get you that money? Errol. I would tell Errol this shit my damn self. Errol, let the fuck, let it go. What you need a rematch clause for? He ain't got nowhere to go. Who's he going to fight? Canelo's not going to fight him. Because Canelo knows he can lose. Canelo won't fight. Canelo is cashing these checks. Canelo don't need him. That's just not happening. He's not going to get big money for Tim Zoo. He doesn't want to fight Jerron. What's he going to do? Bob, he sued Bob Arum. Bob Arum doesn't want him. You look at what do you think Oscar's going to pay for it? Oscar wouldn't even pay for the Munguia fight. Oscar wouldn't pay for the Gervonta Davis versus Ryan Garcia fight. Who's Oscar going to pay him? Who's going to pay him? Eddie Hearn? Who the fuck does Eddie Hearn have? So let the contract expire. Let's get ready to go on Amazon Prime. You just made $30 million. You're not in a rush. Okay? He's going to be in a situation where he is going to want to earn more money. He has nowhere else to go. Let that shit go. Let it go. Because now what? If the rematch clause doesn't apply, guess what? He's got to renegotiate with that. He's got to renegotiate from Gervon with Arrow from ground one, ah. which, means, which means the weight, the money, the location, all of that gets renegotiated. Yeah. If I was if I was Terrence, I would ask to extend it because if you extend it, you extend all of the terms are extended. If you let it go, you got to start over again, which means guess what I'm getting. All the fucking money, bud. Brilliant, Fanon. I didn't even think of that. And I, I think you're 100% right, man. That makes sense. Because Errol Spence, we talked about him losing his leverage and being such a, a bad negotiator just because he was so desperate to make that fight. Then you were locked into the terms for the rematch clause, which are not favorable and are not reflective of the market value of Terrence Crawford. But if it expires, like you said... Everything else is negotiable, and he's got nowhere else to go except maybe if he can arrange something with uh, what is exactly. his name, Turkey Ala Sheikh in Saudi Arabia or something like that. There if they want to, and ain't nobody believe in that Turkey Ala Sheikh shit. Ain't nobody but YouTube channels and idiots ain't paying attention. They all Turkey Ala. I'm telling you what Turkey Ala Sheikh is doing. Turkey Ala Sheikh is taking military budget, a military budget, and doing sports washing in Saudi Arabia with UK and big name UK fighters. He there's no 
objective reason to believe that they are making a push into the American market. What they are doing is taking advantage of the fact. And, and did you realize that the CEO of DAZN, the guy had just got fired? Look, the guy that was ahead of DAZN for the last 13 years, the guy that brought DAZN into American boxing just got terminated. Oh, I didn't even know that. Yeah, and whatever the white boy is with the blonde, the blonde curly head, he just got fired. You're talking Markowski? about Markowski? Markowski? Yeah, he just got fired. They just fired his ass. I had no idea. Corporate media yeah. didn't cover that because it didn't benefit them. Yeah. Corporate media, there you go with Ooh. corporate media. They not covering the story. <laughs> the guy that owned his own stopped spending the money. So now they're butt naked out there in the street because they said they had $2 billion. And what do we say? Come on, several years ago when they said that. I did an analysis on it. And once again, not once again, but at the time, you know, you YouTube pundits who don't know sh shit from Shinola about a budget. When Eddie Hearn started saying, oh, we got $200 million. I was like, you ain't got no $200 million. What the fuck are you talking about? You got $20 million a year is what you have. You got 20. It was a, or what was it? Five, wait, say, just say, because I don't remember the original numbers. Say it was for five years and $200 million over five years. Well, what is that? How many times, how much is five going to two, 24, right? Four. So, so you have a, you have four, you have five $40 million budgets, but really you only have 40 million because you got year one and the rest are optional, which means they can adjust those budgets at any time. You got, they were acting like they had the bill. They had the money. No, they didn't have the fucking money. They well, had they, the, the money promised to them. But once their numbers didn't fucking pan out, they slashed that shit. <laughs> they, they, well, they, they used $2 billion. They wasted $2 billion. And, it, you know, and that's when Lynn Blavnik, who owns the zone, uh, he's a Russian oligarch. That's when he tried, he was openly trying to sell the company. And nobody was biting it because of the toxic contracts. So I agree with you on that. But like they did at one point, they were new to the market and they were splurging. Remember, they were Eddie Hearn had his own USA. He signed Michael Hunter. He signed Tevin Farmer. He was signing all these boxers and Tevin Farmer was active fighting four or five times a year. He was telling Gervonta Tank Davis at the time, hey, come over to the zone and we'll fight and you'll get paid a lot of money. And then once Blavnik started to cut off the toxic resources, you saw Eddie Hearn release almost all of his American roster. He released Michael Hunter. Uh, he released uh, Tevin Farmer was uh, was off. Tevin Farmer, I feel real bad for because he never got the JoJo Diaz rematch that he was promised. It's part of that contract mm -hmm. for that optional defense. But um, yeah, you and I basically agree then, uh, Fanon. I just think that the, the, the decision making is going to be different in terms of the terminology. I don't know that Tim Zhu drops the WBO, but I think that the PBC has had enough of Terrence Crawford being a bad faith negotiator. And they're just going to realize they're going to check him because they're going to use market forces, the mark, his market value to, to determine the next moves. And they're going to be like, Ooh. OK, you want to fight Tim Zhu? This is what. This is what you're going to be offered. This is what your market value is. It's going to be in Australia um, and take it or leave it. If you don't like it, we'll go to purse bid. And then, like I said, he's not going to get what he wants in purse bid. And uh, like I said, he's he's got no major promoter behind him as of now. So the market forces are going to dictate what he gets paid. And it's going to be reality check. Dude, this dude, like for me, it's I'm looking at just I'm going to tell you how, how I analyze these these type of situations. And I'm telling you, I think. I keep trying to tell people that this is how you should think of it. Not, and I'm not necessarily talking to you. And, and Matt, if I won't hold your time anymore, but please come back on. I'll explain to people um, what I'm talking about. I'll read these well, couple. Before, before I go, Fanon, let me just say this. I don't agree with you on the sports washing thing. I think that's corporate media trying to impose its cultural imperialism on Saudi Arabia. Um, so I don't use that term sports washing with Saudi Arabia. Huh? What do you mean? Why, what do you mean? What do you think sports washing means? What is sports washing? Sports washing is governments or individuals utilizing a lot of money to increase or better the reputation of an entity or a state or a government. And you okay. don't think that the, the and, and I'm not arguing, I'm, I mean, I think this is more of your area than mine, but, but Turkey al Sheik reports into the military. So the budget that he's using is a military budget for boxing. That he is where he is publicizing Ra, the Rah Rahid season. I'm not if I'm 
sorry, I don't want to mess up the name because I don't really understand what that is, the Rahad or Rahid, whatever it is. And he's and he's and he's putting that out and showing and pu publicizing that both in Europe and the United States and encouraging people to tour there. So why wouldn't that fit under the category uh, under the category of sports washing? Because Your sports, washing, sports washing is something is a term that uh, Western cultural imperialists have used to describe states that don't subscribe to their uh, sociological and political norms um, to basically tar and feather them. In the case oh, of- so you think it's a pejorative term? It is a pejorative term. It is okay, a, it's, it's selectively, it's you, selectively no applied. And so what, I say with, okay. what I say with this, I have experience in Egypt. I went to Egypt. Egypt's military controls like 70% of their economy. You know, we think we have a Pentagon budget that's asinine and insane. And I say this as a veteran, and I it is very high. But we, the military itself does not control 70% of the economy. Some of these countries, the military budget is astronomically higher percentage-wise of GDP than than us. And so in, the, in yeah. that region, the fact that he reports to the Mi Ministry of Defense, to me, doesn't take away from what he's doing or, or, or necessarily yeah, I, I get you. I get because, you. Because, Look, man, I won't I won't use the term. I don't want to overcomplicate the conversation yeah. for other people. But I understand now that you don't like the you don't like the term sports washing because it's a pejorative term. Yes. And you're saying it's like there's they're not you're saying they're not washing anything. No, they're just they're not. doing what they're, they're doing. I, they're I get you. They're increasing. They're increasing interest in coming to tour their to to come to right. their country. They're just, just making an way. honest. They're making see, an honest I'm, effort. I get yeah. you, brother. I get you. I get you. And, so, I get you. and let me just end with this phenomenon because I don't want to run anybody off. It's it's just the same thing you see with these commercials saying come to Ireland, come to uh, Costa Rica. It's just their way of doing it. And so Turkey Al Sheikh is great for boxing in that he's forcing Baturbiyev and Bebo. It's not just UK fighters and getting mm -hmm. these fights that we want. With that said, there are some fighters that don't have to go over to the Middle East. Your Canelo mm -hmm. and Gervonta don't need that market. So you're not going to treat them the same way. You're going to treat somebody like Baturbiyev and Bebo, who, thanks to Turkey Al Sheikh, that's what we're getting because he was able to step up and say, hey, Mauricio Su Suleiman, stop bullshitting. Bob Arum, stop bullshitting. This is the fight we want. Let's get everybody paid. So that's Again. the difference. Mm -hmm. And when I'll say this to end here, Fanon, I feel like a soothsayer. What did I tell you a week ago? I called on Bill Haney to pull Devin from that fight with Ryan Garcia and say that Ryan is not mentally ready to fight. I won't get any credit. I don't think it's right to subject my son to a fight that's going to be a mismatch, hey, not only on paper. Hey, hey, hold on a second, man. I need it. Let's let's make sure we finish this point because you okay. jumped 30 points. And there are people that are literally trying to understand the last point we made. Okay. And if we go through five points, we'll never get that understanding. Okay. I am going to explain to people what I'm receiving from Kamal. Kamal, what the way that you define the term sports washing is a basic definition. But what he's saying is the phrase sports Washington has a negative connotation where one company, one country can do one thing and it's just considered encouraging tourism. Yes. And someone else is using the term where it is sports washing, which has means it's like you are money laundering or yes. you are or you are doing something bad. It is the it is a pejorative term. It is a negative term where we use that to criticize someone where other people do the same thing. But we don't use that term similar to calling one organization, one group of people, a nation, but other people a tribe. Yes, there's no functional difference between a tribe and a nation. But you want to use tribe because it puts the it's the connotation behind tribe that as you envision people with bones in their noses and yes. and spears where a nation you think of people in suits and giving, you know, all of that, you know, giving the speeches. So I understand that he doesn't like my phrasing of it and calling it that. I think that's sports washing. OK, I get it. So please understand that. We he's acknowledging the phenomenon. It's the connotation, the negative connotation that is that is washed in that he doesn't like because to sports wash means that you are using sports to cover up atrocities. And he's saying, no, they're using sports to bro to put out a positive image of their country and encourage people to come there. Exactly. They're not admitting. Yeah, they're not admitting the atrocities in Yemen and this and that that they're blamed for any more than we in the United States are encouraging people to come to the world, the, the World Cup in the in New York City, whenever it's going to happen. Right. 
to to over to to shadow the atrocities of police violence in the United States. So when I'm telling you that Kamal Oz is having we're having a political conversation, it's it really is at a level where I don't believe that I can have a debate truly with Kamal because Kamal is much more educated in that area than I am. The best that I can do with Kamal when we're talking about intellectual po intellectual po uh, politics is that I can just understand where he's coming from because I have an education in political science, but I can't say tell you that I'm up to date with what or I fully understand what the what the what the politics are of social of of um, Saudi Arabia is via via Yemen, where Kamal Oz has a much better idea what that is. Number one, being in the military, and number two, being somebody that is in that is has a very solid education in international relations. And I don't have that ex expertise in, in, in international relations that Kamal has. So I have to kind of take a back seat to Kamal and just try to understand what he's saying. Right. See, and that's a mistake I think a lot of people make when you talk to when you talk to people that are experts. People are experts in particular areas. You need to listen and learn from them. And I acknowledge that I have a basic understanding of political science, but I do not have the advanced understanding or expertise that Kamal has in specifically within international relations. Similarly, in the other conversation that we had, Kamal, Kamal has a very good understanding of business and negotiations, but it's not as specified as mine is because that's what I spent my time learning and international relations is what Kamal spent his time learning. So we have to all appreciate the knowledge of other people and the fact that we've all spent 24 hours a day learning something. If I was talking to a truck driver, I'm and I do not mean to belittle truck drivers at all, I'm sitting in the fucking passenger seat and riding down the road. I'm not jumping in there and be like, move over here. I saw I can drive, I can drive behind the civic, get your ass out of the seat of this of this 18 wheeler. We'll be we'll both be dead. Does that make sense? Is would you agree with that assessment? Come on. Yeah, yeah, I, I agree. And, you know, sorry for the higher level and uh, conversation here. I just wanted to. It's, I, it's a learning. It's learning. I appreciate that, man. But see, this is this is again, this is how sneaky when I kept talking about corporate media, when we first started talking, mm -hmm. this is how sneaky and deceitful they are. They're the ones who introduced the term sports washing because they don't like Saudi Arabia. Deontay Wilder went over to Saudi Arabia. If you caught any of his interviews, he said what what corporate media tells you about there is is nothing like what reality is. He said he was thinking about buying a house there. So that's a that's a that's a term that they don't like for for individuals and entities or countries in this case that they don't like. The Saudis are just engaging in public relations and uh, they're using sport to encourage tourism to. They decided to open up the country um, for non-religious visitors. In other words, uh, people who are not visiting for religious purposes in Saudi Arabia. And so that's all they're doing. And they're utilizing sports to do it, not just boxing, but they doing soccer. They just bought the PGA. They just bought the golfing. Um, they're inserting more money. And so it's 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 be careful with because corporate media is so sneaky. They're so deceitful. And they, they even had you, Fanon, uh, saying uh, sports washing because they don't like Saudi Arabia's uh, country. They don't like it. And so they'll use that term. In a, it's in a discriminatory, ter discriminatory term that they use for entities that they don't like. And I'm going to hang up. But before I do, I'm just going to say, you recall over a week ago, I said that uh, Rod, Bill Haney should say, we're not fighting Ryan Garcia. He's clearly not right. We're going to do the right thing and pull out of this fight. He's mentally not right. Okay. The fight should be canceled and they should fight Barboza, who's the backup. And that's actually a better plan. Uh, I don't see how this fight, uh, how Ryan passes a, a mental health assessment with the New York State Athletic Commission. I really hope that this fight is canceled and Barbosa is the better fight anyway. Maybe they haven't announced the pay-per-view card because they anticipate Barbosa filling in for uh, for Ryan Garcia. Um, because this is just a real, it's been a real shit show. Ryan shouldn't even be in this fight. He's one fight removed uh, between the Gervonta Tank Davis knockout. Uh, and Devin said he's all about legacies, this and that. He should be fighting the best fighters in that division. You don't sidestep a mandatory that's a tough challenge to fight a kid who is a mental basket case. I'm going to get your thoughts on that, Fanon. Thank you for the time. I'm out. Yes, sir. Yeah, I appreciate you, man. Thank you, Kamal. Um, Timothy Dorsey said, hey, if Zoo loses to Thurman, the title becomes vacant. There's no way Zoo is the A side over Bud. No, he does it. The title's not on the line. He does. The title does not become vacant because... He did the title's not on the line. It's a non-title fight. He's still a champion. 
because he's still the champion. It'll kill a fight because it's going to be like Thurman just beat him. So why we want to see that? T. Wells said, for the unk of this boxing talk, salute to the chat. Thank you, T. Wells. And watch for that hook. Said, can we speak? Can we make Spence? Can we make Spence want the rematch again? I need that. I think he's still, he, I've never heard him say that he didn't want the rematch. I've never heard him say that he didn't watch the rematch. Somebody said, I, I spend 24 hours a day watching boxing. Can you respect mine? You do not spend 24 hours a day watching boxing. So, no, it's hard for me to respect your opinion when you tell me something that's blatantly not true. You do not spend 24 hours a day on boxing. You're exaggerating. You sleep. You sleep. Okay? You sleep. So you do not spend 24 hours on it. Maybe eight or nine. Maybe eight or nine. Sure, here's the link. So anyway, back to the proposition about that, what I wanted to explain about how you look at those scenarios. You don't have to, dude, you can put yourself, you can empathize with a business, with somebody that is in a position of making a business decision and analyze what exactly is their best option. And that's what you should be doing in any type of deal that you have. D free in the building. What's going on, sir? What's going on, D free? Hey, what's going on for now? Man, I'm good, brother. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. Hey, I, I was just coming up here because um I saw the guy in the chat that said the uh, WBO will vacate the uh the belt if uh Tim Zoo loses. He's actually hold on one second, hold on one second, hold on one second. Mm -hmm. Fair enough, always in the gym. Fair, <laughs> fair enough. Fair enough. If I did say he spends twenty I said no, I think I said we spend twenty four hours a day learning something, is what I thought I said. Yeah, you did. Yeah, I said we we spend twenty four hours a day doing learning something. And we do. You dream, you sleep, you eat, you walk around. You have 24 hours in a day like everybody else and it's filled with something. Whatever somebody does, they do. And with the, and if you're doing something different, you're learning. It's anyway, that that's there's an African proverb that says that. If you're not learning one thing, you're learning another. That's why you got to respect people and what they do and the expertise they have in certain areas. And try not to cross over and act as if you know, like, I'm not going to tell, I'm not, I'm not going to sit up here and tell a professional fighter how to throw a punch. Shit's just never going to fucking happen. You know what I mean? But anyway, go ahead, D-Free. No, I was, uh, yeah, I was, I was just saying, um, the WBO did come out and say that, uh, because they didn't want to sanction a fight. And so they fighting at a catchweight or they didn't want to put the belt on the line. So they fighting at a catchweight because, um, uh, Tim, uh, uh, Keith Thurman wasn't ranked in the WBO. So they didn't want to put the belt on the line, but they came back out and said, if Tim Zhu loses, the belt, the belt will be vacated. Oh, okay, and, uh, thank you. I didn't know and, that. And, and Keith Thurman will not be awarded the belt, but uh, Tim Zhu will lose the belt. So the, he, he was actually correct about that. Oh, okay, thanks. I didn't know that. Thank you for the yeah. correction. No problem. That's all I came up here to say. All right, brother. Thank you, D-Free. Yeah, my apologies if I because I didn't get that piece of news. Thank you very much. All right, all right brother. All right. All right, get back. Yeah, I didn't get that piece of news. How can I help you, G? Hey, King? good morning. Hey, good morning, man. Uh, since we're on the Terrence Crawford topic. Uh, Sir, you were on here before we were on that. What is, okay, I don't want to lecture well, you, brother. Please abide by the rules. I was going to just tell you the WBO uh, said that they'll strip him, but the uh, guy before okay. me already did. But All right, so that was it? On, moving on from that, I wanted to ask you. No, that was it. That's what you jumped up here for? Initially, but I did have something else. <laughs> That's okay with you. Yeah, what do you, what depends? I don't know if this would be considered breaking news or not, but I don't. It I don't, is. If you think it to, is, don't say it. Can I put it in the chat? No, I'll block you. What do you want to talk about, man? I wanted to talk about what do you think is next for Terrence Crawford? Do you see him fighting Canelo Alvarez? No, I do not. And those are two questions. But no, I do not find him. No, I do not see him fighting Canelo Alvarez and definitely not next. See, this is where I want to say what I want to say, but you'll say. Dude, I just, you keep going like three, four things, man. Just say what you want to say, man. Because you'll say I disrespected your channel by breaking. Just say what you're going to say, man, for real. So, Come on, just get it over with. Terrence Crawford got a call from Turkey, a personal call to make that Canelo. Fight. I'm sorry. Stop this. So, Who told you that? I can put it in the chat. I got the receipt. Who told you that? Crawford's coach. Said he got a personal call from Turkey Alashik for what? 
to make that Canelo Alvarez fight. Uh, this, this how fight. can he call Terrence? How can Turkey Alashik call Terrence Crawford to make the Canelo fight? He got a call that we want to make that fight. That how fight. can he call Terrence Crawford? That's all I know. But what we, difference does it make if he calls Terrence Crawford I'm for that fight? Out there in the Saudi. They this is my fight. question for you. What difference does it make if Turkey Alashik called out called Terrence Crawford? Because he wants Terrence Crawford in Saudi Arabia. Yeah, but what difference does it make to him making a fight with Canelo? To Turkey? That's a yes. big fight. That's Turkey, a big fight to bring. Let me, no, let me be clear. I'm you said Turkey Alashik called Terrence Crawford personally and he doesn't call him. I don't give him obviously it's personally if he called him what do you need to put personally in there for he called him that's implied that it was personally it's him like he's some fucking superman or some shit it's him he called him he got that type of money but go ahead man well you don't know what the fuck he has he's worth less money than Terrence Crawford is he called Terrence. He called Terrence Crawford. Yes, to make a Canelo Alvarez fight. Well, this is what happened. They Dude, said, "I heard it. I heard what you said. I don't need any more details than he called him." Okay. That doesn't do anything because it is Canelo he needs to call. Mm -hmm. Because Terrence has already said he wants to fight Canelo. Yep. It's Canelo that said he don't care about fighting Terrence. Yes, but you were saying that who's going to put the money up. I'm telling no, you. No, I didn't say uh, who's going to put the I money heard, up. I heard you say that. Who's going to put the oh, money up, oh, okay. up earlier mean, in I'm, this life? You know what? Hold on a second. Yeah, I'm going to let you talk. Okay. Then I'm going to fucking fry you like baloney. Uh, okay. So go ahead and get it done and don't run when I get done beating you up. Make your argument. Earlier, so I can absolutely fucking fry you for the silly shit you try every day. Earlier... In the stream, you said, who is going to put up money for Crawford? Nobody's going to do it. For Eubank, for Zoo, for for Canelo. I came up here to tell you that Crawford got a call from Prince Turkey to try to make that Canelo Alvarez fight. And it's not going to happen in May. Maybe it'll happen in September. Turkey will put up a lot of money for Canelo Alvarez to fight Terrence Crawford over in Saudi Arabia. Because we've seen him do it before. He's made big, big, big offers to to Eddie Hearn for Gervonta. He's made big offers to Tyson Fury. You're lying about you're lying about that Gervonta. You, you can correct me afterwards. You're lying. Bill Haney confirmed. Go, that. don't lie. You're lying with that one. Don't lie. I'm letting you talk. Don't lie. So I see no reason that uh, this. Crawford and Canelo fight is not backed by people with a lot of money and they want to see this fight. Okay, so let's stop this stupid shit. Yep. I'll let you speak. Canelo Alvarez says he does not want to fight Terrence Crawford. That's who said he doesn't want to fight Terrence Crawford. Canelo said it. Canelo said no. So how is Turkey Alashi going to make Canelo Alvarez want to fight Terrence Crawford. Canelo also said he'll fight him at 168. And then no, he, he didn't. He said him. he doesn't want to fight him. At first. Dog, shut the fuck up. He said he didn't want to fight him. That's why I don't like talking to you. You lie too much. He said, I don't want to fight him. I'm not interested in that fight. He said, there's nothing in it for me. Canelo turned the fight down. He said he doesn't want it. So how is Turkey Alashik making an offer to Gerva to a call to Canelo to to Terrence Crawford have anything to do with Canelo Alvarez? They told him that they want to make a fight with Canelo. Okay, I could call. I, it doesn't matter if they want to make the fight. If Turkey Alashik wants that fight, it doesn't matter. If Canelo doesn't want it, it's not a path if because Canelo doesn't want it. If Canelo gets a guaranteed fifty million dollars, why wouldn't he Canelo want? Canelo Alvarez turned down a guaranteed sixty million for David Benavidez. He ain't trying to lose, dude. He turned down a sixty million dollar guarantee on a network that actually sells pay per views. Come on, he's not fighting dude, Benavidez. Man, dude, let me tell you something, man. Why are you always you angry? I'm making a reasonable argument. Fucking liar. 
God, dog, man. Stop lying so fucking much. What is the lie in what I said? The lie is, number one, that Turkey Alashik and Eddie Hearn made an offer to Javante Davis. That's a lie. Bill Haney said this. Bill Haney. Oh, oh. Oh, I'm sorry. What? Well, what do you Now gonna- look what I'm going to do. I'm going to ban you for life. I'm going to ban you for the life if you don't for life if you don't stop. I'm tired of you, man. You're a piece of shit and I'm tired of you. Every time I give you even a little bit of fucking grace, you show what a piece of shit you are. You are absolutely positively not being serious about anything you've just said. All of it is just to talk dumb shit like it's a fucking joke to you. Now, you're banned, okay? And the next time I see you, I'm going to ban you. And anybody hears you speak, you're going to get banned. I want to have serious conversations, man. I don't want to play your college, your stupid lying ass games, man. Okay? No, I'm going to ban him because you said that to Orlando. I'm not going to, I'm not going to, I'm not letting them on anymore for at least a month. If I see them, I'm going to cuss them out and throw them out and block them and make them make another one. How about that? Watch this though. Watch this though. Go away. Bro, why are you always so angry? You know what, man? I don't know. I don't know, Jason B. I don't know why I'm so angry all the time. You know what? You're right. I need to not be so angry all the damn time. You're right. You're right. I, I need to make sure I take steps not to get angry all the time. You're right, Jason B. You're right. I need to make sure that I'm not angry all the time. So if I hear you say something that is going to create any type of anger in me, because I'm having a trying to have a serious conversation with boxing and you're just a troll out here lying and misleading people. And so now I got to have 15 other conversations like that's that stupid Claymore rain shit. Dog, I, I mean, I'm sitting there having a serious conversation. You just start lying to me. <laughs> and it is what it is. Anyway, here's a link, man. Um, anyway, there's the link, man. Thank you very much. Anyway, so on a real subject. Oh man, what's going Kings to the game boxing channel, man? I don't, I didn't have your thing today. Salute to the entire chat. Big salute to Fanon for dealing with the buffoonery. Fanon International, Fanon International boxing channel. Hashtag made. Yes. Thank you, brother. Man, look, dude, I, I get tired a lot. Man, look, it is what it is, man. Because I'm having these conversations all day, man. And you just come up saying the same stupid shit. I am hands down said, I don't even know King and I don't like him. Man, just get up here lying on people, man. Oh, man, Turkey Alice, she personally called. He personally called him. Fuck Turkey Alice, Sheik. Okay, personally. I don't even know him. What do I care? Like, for real. <laughs> and I don't mean him personally like the actual man, but the fuck I care. <laughs> for now, did you hear anything about Haney Camp beating up? Yeah, I saw that, man. He looked like he got punched in the grill. And then people said he didn't get jumped. He didn't get jumped. He damn sure got punched. He damn sure got punched. <laughs> thank you at the end it's entertainment i wouldn't take it personally for non isaiah boys yes i dog i'm not taking it personally please go on time out i don't need you preaching to me i don't take it personally but you are talking to me personally i don't get that 
Do you mean I shouldn't take it as an insult? You get up here and lie to me, personally lie to me, continually lie to me and take up my time and I'm not supposed to take it. How am I supposed to take it? <laughs> I never really understood that don't take it personally thing. You're talking to me. You're wasting my time. It's my time. Don't mess with a group of praying Muslims during, during, get the beard faded. No, I'm not paying $20 to people to cut my beard, bro. Mm -mm. Not doing it. I'll fade my, I'll fade it myself when I get some clippers. He said, I mean, I don't understand that when people say don't take it personally. You're talking to me. Hey, I slapped you in the face. Don't take it personally. <laughs> oh, it's, you know, I shot you. It's not personal. It's just business. What? You shot me <laughs> personally. Anyway. Um, hey, thank you. I am hands down. Um. Man, I'm straight. I'm not paying anybody $20 to fade my beard. I'm not doing that. Where's that barber at? That's a deal. $20? That's the last time I had to go to a barber. If it costs more, $20 is the last time I need to go to barber. That's how much it costs. I'm bald. I don't have to go to barbers. I, I, I shave my hair. And plus, I, can, I know how to cut hair. I'll cut my hair myself. But I'm not about to fade a beard, bro. I don't care about that. What the fade it? <laughs> fade a bit. You know what I mean? Noob, what boxing fight you looking forward to this year? I'm looking forward to the Javante Davis. I'm looking forward to the fight coming up on the 30th. I'm looking forward to Keith Thurman and Tim Zoo. That's what I'm looking forward to. How you get clipped? I think I clipped you. So, because you said that I wasn't ever going to throw out King. Dog, King is the biggest pest ever, bro. God, dog, what a fucking pest. What a pest. Um, Yeah, Fanon, they charging 50s for a lineup now. Oh, you guys are high as a kite. $50 for a man, please. I wish I would. Oh, but you want reparations? <laughs> Y'all are charging $50 for a lineup and you want reparations? Oh my God! Give every black man, and black person in America, five hundred thousand dollars, and see how much your lineup start costing you. You'll be paying a thousand dollars for a lineup. You'll be paying a thousand dollars for a lineup. Man, y'all don't understand how capitalism works. That's the problem. Asking for that, <laughs> I'm trying to devalue shit. You know what I'm saying? I'm trying to devalue things. I'm not trying to blow up the prices of everything. Hey, Fanon, you keep boxing world going. Thank you, brother. Look, man, I would like an honest discussion with somebody. Do you see how good the... All right, here, let me explain something to y'all, man. Did you hear the... This is maybe will help you understand my frustration, okay? Did you hear how good of a conversation I had with Kamal Oz? Did you hear how great that conversation was? I thoroughly enjoyed that conversation with Kamal Oz. He stated his opinion in a very intelligent fashion, very well educated on the subject matter, and we both got something out of it. King gets up here lying. So I have to spend... A bunch of times dissecting the lie he told, correcting his facts. The whole time he then ends it with, well, you know, Bill said, which means he wasn't having an honest conversation with me. He's just trolling because he's a racist and he thinks black people are dumb. So he's going to try to find to get a try to get a win any way he can, which means if he has to throw shit on your window. And I mean this intellectually, this is what King does. King comes in with a handful of shit and throws it on your window and thinks that he wins because you have to clean it off. That's King. Please follow my logic here. Please, 
That's the analogy for what King does. And you want to know why I get upset about it? Because I know what he's doing. I'm saying, hey, man, let's have good debates, honest debates with each other where we both can learn. Because I did a little, you know, I did a little studying, man. I did a little studying. And there's a world champion, uh, the, the debate world champion. I listened to a to a conversation that the, that the that I think he's like the 2023 world champion in debate, right? Gave an explanation of what you should be trying to do, what a good argument is and what a bad argument is. And he said, you know, the problem with bad arguments are when the two people are not really working together to solve a particular problem or to offer a solution where we both can learn something and the audience can come away having learned something. And some of the things that people do is they have bad faith arguments where they try to distract, where they, where they lie. And when you're lying or you're distracting people, what you're doing is you're not really, it's not a rewarding situation and you wind up getting in a situation where there's personal attacks, lies being told, deflections being told. And he really broke down the anatomy of the, or, or, or why you want to have debates in the first place and why disagreement is, is, a, is valuable in your life. Because when you have a disagreement, it allows two honest-minded people to learn from one another kind of hash it out, fight it out, and for everybody else to witness and come away in a better position than they were before the conversation began. See, that's what took place with me and Kamal Oz. Kamal Oz brought in, a, brought in the discussion of the term sports washing as a, per, as a pejorative term. And I acknowledged what he said. And I, learned, and I was like, you know what, you're right. I won't use the word sports washing anymore because I really don't know enough about whether or not, whether or not, or I won't use that phrase at all because I understand what labels are and how that works. Kind of like gang versus club. You know what I mean? So then comes King where I have to, where he tells a lie. I probably told a lie straight up about Kate, Turk Ali Sheik personally personally calling Terrence Crawford to say, we want to make the Canelo Alvarez fight. As if that even matters because he's not in the position to make the fight. Number two, he lied about them making offers for Gervonta Davis. That's just a flat lie. And then he comes in and says, well, you know, Bill Haney said, knowing full well that nobody respects Bill Haney's honesty on this channel, and he knows what the reaction is that I was going to give him. So what did he do? He didn't come out to enrich anybody. He didn't come on the channel to put people in a better position than they were before he called in. He put he called to put people in a worse position than they were. Because now they have to sort through things that he knows is not true. So what he did was he just threw, he and he knew that I was going to do it. Well, so what did he do? He took some shit and he threw it on my window and was like, now clean up the shit I just threw on your window. I'm so smart. No, you're a vandal is what you are. You're just a vandal. You're a vandal. You're a persistent vandal. You're an intellectual vandal. And really, a joke. You're an ongoing joke. But I bet I can make him mad. He <laughs> he, watch him. Telling his boyfriend, his boyfriend sitting right there, watch me make Fanon mad by lying to everybody. Hey, 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 hey. I'm going to egg his house. It's midnight. <laughs> I don't like that guy. Hey, let's get the eggs. Let's throw the eggs in his window. I bet I can make him clean the eggs off his house. I bet he doesn't clean. Let's egg, let's egg his car. Let's toilet, let's toilet paper his trees. I bet I bet he has to get out there and clean and do all that work. Oh, ha ha. See, I made him mad. Ha ha ha. Anybody would be mad about you throwing shit on their windows. You're not winning anything. You're just a piece of shit yourself. You're just somebody that likes to grab shit and play with it. That's what you are. Okay, you're just somebody that likes to handle shit. 
okay? Now you think you're doing something to me? You're not. You're just throwing shit on the window. That's it. That's all you're doing. Nothing more. And I have to clean it up because I'm going to keep my house clean. If you think you get a window, you get a win, you get a win because you make me clean shit off the house that I own. Well, I guess you're just a winner. Because I know full well if I took a pile of shit and threw it on your face, you clean it off, wouldn't you? Or would you? Oh, well, he didn't get the best of me. Look, I'm going to smile with this shit in my face. You're just a worm, is what you are, King. You're just a worm. <laughs> you think you're accomplishing something? You're just a piece of shit. You're just a dude that carries shit around. And tosses it places that it doesn't belong. I do. When you throw shit on my screen, I have to clean it up. I live here. Oh, but you take it so personally. Yo, come on in here. Hey, everybody, come on here and lie about fighters. Come on out here and lie. Tell some lies and make me un have to unravel your bold faced lies. Yeah, like Bill Haney. Y'all getting mad. Why you hate on Devin so much? I'm not hating on Devin. Y'all lie too much. Oh, you're always tearing down the black man. Tell the black man to tell that black man to stop lying. Salute to the entire chat and big salute to Fanah for dealing with that buffoonery. Thank you, brother. And my guy, James Wade, it's been a long time. I'm totally out of the loop on everything. Hey, man, you back, James Wade. Don't worry about it. We'll get it right. And Kyle Porter said, good morning. Do you think the Saudis are doing business? Do you like what the Saudis are doing for boxing and boxers? Do you think it helps grow boxing game? To, no, I don't think it's growing anything. And do I like it? It's fine. It is, they, they're giving me fights. They're no different than anybody else. I think that they're doing the same thing ESPN is doing. I think they're doing the same thing Amazon Prime's doing. I think they're doing the same thing that they're all doing. They're making fights with fighters, and I get to see them. I don't, do I think they're revolutionizing boxing? No, I do not. No. Do I believe that they're paying the money that they're saying they're paying? No. I don't believe it. No, I don't. Hey, Jameson Children said, Fanon, nah, the irony is king will fling shit like a primate, but will call you a monkey under his breath. Exactly. Just slinging shit like just a dummy. Why would you want to be known as a moron? Clown, man. I remember I told my son, man. One thing, man, my son used to, me and my son used to, Man, son, please don't be the class clown. Anything, please do not be the class clown. If, the, if there's nothing worse, don't be the class clown. Don't be the joking buffoon failing the class. Please. Please. Please don't be it. The class clown. Kyle, man, can you stop acting like we need to do that shit? You just talking. <laughs> man, look, I don't care if boxing's in every household or not. I want to see good boxing matches. I just want to see. I, I want to. I don't just want to see boxing matches. Good. But I want to see it. Hey, D1 said, I was a class clown. You could probably tell by my comments. Man, at a point in time, I was a class clown. But, man, really? No, man. You shouldn't do that. Look, man, I don't believe we should be doing that, man. I think we say save the jokes for the, for the stage, man. Nah, D1, I haven't watched it yet. I may watch it later, but I doubt it. Here's his link, man. 
Um, I nah, I haven't checked it out yet. I'm gonna buy the fight, so I don't need to see it. And I already know enough about them. I watch all their interviews. I think that 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 stuff is really for people that don't watch that aren't on YouTube all the time. You know, my breath stinks. Does it? Okay. Okay. Got that. I'll tell your mama to wash her titties next time. All right. <laughs> yeah. Uh, for now, how come the Saudis get paid for pay get paid for overpaying praised for overpaying fighters for fight for fights, but no one asked uh for the PBC going broke for all the uh all the the biggest fights? <laughs> Cause they're because Saudi Arabia, first of all, I don't even believe Saudi Arabia is over is paying that much much money for them fights. I don't I just have a hard time even believing that, man. I really do. I have a hard time believing it. You know? But whatever. I don't care about all that oil money, all that this, that, and the other. I just don't believe it. Because they're overpaying. Nobody else is paying that. So why are you paying it? I'm not a believer in that. And plus, you know these guys are bold-faced liars. They're bold-faced liars. If if they say, if they say they got paid five mil, 10 million, cut it in half. If they say they got paid $10 million, cut that shit in half. I don't believe a word coming out their mouths. If they say they got to pay $100 million, I'll believe 50. If they say they got 60, I'll believe 30. Because if they got, see, there's a YouTube channel that said this. And people criticized him. Because, the, because he told the truth. Because he told the truth. They are in public relations. That's what they're doing. They're doing public relations. They're not in the media. It's like, really? Okay, they're not really in the media. It's not new media. It's new public relations. It's new public relations. So what will the public relations do? If it's really good, you say it's great. If you say it's great, you say it's an all-time great. They're always going to, if it's, if they made 10, why not say 20? That's what they do. And they do it consistently. So if Tyson Fury said he got $60 million, I'll believe 30. If you tell me this hamburger is the best hamburger in all of Chicago, I'll believe it's good. I'm not going to believe it's the best. It's a fucking hamburger, bro. It's not going to be that much. How can you have, oh man, this hamburger is way better than all these other. How? How can it be that much better? It's meat, isn't it? It's meat, it's cheese, it's bread. How much better could it be? Slightly better? Three times as better? A thousand times better? Dude, they're marketing it, man. They're marketing it. So you got to take it with a grain of salt, okay? You got to take it with a grain of salt. And over time, you'll learn that the, everything, most people, most of the things that people sell you as being, oh, so amazing. It's like, oh, okay, it's good. But you have it a couple times. You're like, okay. What? What is this? Give me a second. Okay. Uh, more marketing may capture a larger audience. Yeah, I mean, because you're trying to make it look spectacular, man. That's what you're doing. 
So, but at the end of the day, look, man, I don't believe that. The, I don't believe it. I don't believe it. And to, just to be fair, whenever I hear uh, Floyd Mayweather Jr. talking about money, I always cut it in half. I cut it in half. Cut it in half. Because I don't believe. I don't believe it. <laughs> I don't believe it. You don't have to remain silent now. You call somebody creepy. Somebody gets called creepy. I read what he wrote. I had never seen him before I threw him out. I wasn't going to throw you out. No. Oh, you're talking about you will remain? No, just keep talking. I'll throw him out. If you, if a, I don't know if you're a female or not, but if a female calls a male creepy, I'm throwing them out right away. Dog, I, you're timed out. You're timed out. Stop it, Kyle. Stop it. You've asked me that question like 10 times. You've asked me that question multiple times. Hey, blessings all, a little something for the intellectual. Wow. Thank you, brother. Thank you, Jay Mills. Thank you, brother. Thank you for your support. You didn't cause any problems, Angela. Kyle, stop trying to change the subject, bro. Kyle said, bro, bro, stop trying to change the subject, man. Yo, for now, what's up with you, bro? What's up with you? Why would you ask me why I like boxing, bro? What I got into boxing for? Yeah, yo, I don't even understand how that aggravates you. Seriously. You asked that same. It's first of all, that's not what we're talking about. And number two, you've asked me about that about four or five times. I I really don't think I've asked you that because I don't know the answer. I okay. Have, like, and how does that frustrate you, bro? Like, I support. Kyle, I I'm keep not... I ask Kyle. All right. Well, you and I have had at least five conversations this week where I asked you to stay on the topic. bro. That is not on the topic. You're just asking me willy nilly out of the blue to change what I'm talking about and start talking about why, what my foundational interest was for the sport of boxing. Yeah. Does that have anything to do with Ryan Garcia and Devin Haney getting canceled or Gervonta and Tia Fimo lies must stop? Nah, it doesn't. But neither does the stuff that Kamal Oz was addressing. It just people. Sir, don't... but I don't. But Kamal Oz doesn't ask me a bunch of questions all the time. Do you do it consistently? You know you, where it is. you pull you pull out of the blue questions to me and ask me, and I'm looking at him like, "What? Well, what would make you think that I wanted to ask that question? That is such a dramatic left turn. Well, it's we not were, related at all to what we're in, talking. About. I was in the comments trying to an audience, so. I was trying to see, like, I know what intrigued me to the sport, so I wanted to know, like, perhaps what intrigued you. Are you trolling me? All right, man. I, I, I don't understand why, are you, why you think there's an angle. I'm literally just communicating. Okay, I, let me, Kyle, I read your comments a lot, and I see your comments, because you do leave a lot of comments. When you ask me a question, whether I answered or not, as soon as I read it, I think about the question. I have to because you wrote it down. So when you ask it, I immediately have to process. What is the answer? And should I ask it or should I ignore it? So I do that for you maybe four or five times. Where you say, here's a question. And I think Kyle asked me a question. What's the answer? And do I want to answer it? That stops me from talking about what I want to talk about. And I have to do that four or five times. It gets irritating. Because I don't respond every time you ask a question, but I see every single one of them. It's like you tapping me on the shoulder. And then I have to say, do I stop what I'm talking about and look at Kyle and answer Kyle's question? Or do I act like I, don't, I didn't feel the tap on my shoulder and keep it pushing? If you tap me five or six times, the first time I might not say nothing. The second time I might not say nothing. The third time I might not say nothing. The fourth time I might not say something. But if we get to the sixth time, then I may just, the reaction that you may get may seem severe to you because you didn't see me go through that thought process the other five times. 
Now, expand that for about a month and do it 10 times a day for a month. That's 10 times, that's 10 times 30, that's 300. So I might, minus 10 is 290 times that I may not actually talk about the question. And the 10 times that you may see me react. All right. I can't. There's nothing to say. I mean, if that's how you it it Dude, you, look, man. I'm come on, man. No, I, if you ask me a question it has something to do with what we're talking about, I will always answer it for you, Kyle. I, I talk to you every day. I appreciate your support. I read your comment out of the comment section as much or more than anybody else. I gave you a wrench, but dude, you can't tell me that we have not had the same conversation this entire week. When I, uh, when I, what I, uh, super chatted you something basically saying that, how do you feel about what they're doing for boxing? That in my mind, that's kind of what I was thinking about. I answered that question. Yeah, you did. And then I was speaking. Well, then on you asked me what you went from. What do I think that the zone offers in boxing? And I answered it. No, you hit me Saudi right back with another question and said, this, what got, sir, I wrote, the last time I read a comment from you, you asked a question in a super chat and I answered it. Then you asked me what got you into boxing to begin with. And now I've had another five minute conversation with you about the two questions. Yeah. Kyle, man, you are distracting from the comment. You are distracting from the, the, the show. You are. Uh, I just, and you know you are. I don't understand why you're not, you're acting confused. But when you say distracting, I'm bringing a talking point that, like I'm bringing, I'm just asking. Hey man, what's your favorite, what's your favorite flavor of bubble gum? Uh, winter fresh. And and have you ever hit a home run in baseball? Uh, in little league, yeah. Yeah, but and what did that feel like when your mother clapped for you? These are different, like different sports. Oh no, my point is that I'm asking you a bunch of questions that you don't see coming, and you're like, "What are you getting at?" I I just. But the only the difference between me and you is I'm talking to a thousand other people while I'm doing it. I'm literally, there's 725 people in here right now, Kyle. There's going to be 8,000 people, 9,000 people that are going to watch this live stream. And I'm trying to have a, a line of conversation. And you asked me what got me into boxing, bro. And you're disrespecting the fact that I continually talk to you, man. All right, we're wasting time. I was more interested in, like, your answer. but My thanks. answer is what got me into boxing yeah. was the fact that I like seeing people punch each other in the face. And it's pretty spectacular. I agree with that. I think the moment that pulled me into boxing was the Floyd and Mayweather, uh, Floyd Mayweather and Pacquiao fight. That's when I really started enjoying the sport. Okay, thank you, brother. Appreciate you, man. You're trolling me. You're trolling me. I don't like looking like a jerk in front of all you people. <laughs> I really don't like you guys. You force me into being a jerk. You won't even let me be polite and nice. I want to show my nice side. Yes. Fahim, I want to be nice. I want to be nice. I want to have, I want everybody to think I'm a good guy. I don't want to be constantly talking like that to people. Oh, if I take away his wrench, he will never be able to leave a comment. <laughs> Bye. All right, that's it. I can't do it with you no more, bro. Hey, Kyle, it was nice knowing you, brother.
What's next for Bud? What's next for Arrow? Can we establish reestablish negotiations? Negotiations. Let's get it in 154. Um, I think that they're probably going to wind up doing that fight, Rick Timms. I think that I think you're probably going to. Um, I think they're going to wind up. I think they're going to wind up making that fight, bro. That's what I think. Now we now do that with King, please. Now nah, King will not go away. King will make a new. If I get rid of King, I've gotten rid of King thirty times. He's just going to come back under another name. As my grandma said, that boy elevator don't go to the top. Man, I can't, hey man, seriously, man, you you're ruining the pleasure of my day by making me be do things and say things that I don't want to say, man. No, nah, King's going to come back no matter what. He just doesn't care. I say he's like a kid. Haney, Duck, Sandor, Martin don't like the style matchup. He didn't duck him. Dangerous Desires, Bullies, he didn't duck him. He got a step. He did a step aside and went to go fight um your boy, um Ryan Garcia. I don't think Devin Haney's ever ducked anybody, really. The closest that it would come is Shakur Stevenson him ducking Shakur. That's about the only reasonable argument that somebody can make that he ducked somebody is Shakur Stevenson. Other than that, I don't think there's a real persuasive argument that he ducked anybody. The problem is that there's not a lot of persuasive arguments for me, in my opinion, that anybody ducked Devin. And, and at this point in time, nobody ducked him. At this point, well, no, I mean, I guess, no, Ryan Garcia, Ryan Garcia. Ryan Garcia. I'm done with your show. So is Kyle. Disrespectful. <laughs> Thank God. You're done with my show, King? Thank God. Go away. I'm done with your show. You're not done with my show. Nobody else is going to give you the time of day. This is a funny thing, bro. You guys, nobody will ever give you this much time. Go do that shit. Try to go do that with somebody else. That you're not putting super chats consistently in there. Anyway, for nine, have you heard anything about the undercard of Haney? Um, and has and has there been a time in the past where they've taken this long to announce an undercard? I can't tell you that. And I don't know anything about the undercard. So they have not announced the undercard, no. No limit gain. No, he shouldn't have taken the 25%. He shouldn't have. He should have done exactly what he did and went to purse bid. That's what he should have done. He didn't owe. He didn't owe Devin Haney to. He don't got to pimp himself out to Devin Haney. You show a lot of patience, bro. It's not as bad as you think. You're a hell of a lot more patient than I could ever be with these people. Hey, man, it is what it is. I appreciate that, man. But no, I mean, I kind of like Kyle, but it's kind of got to stop. Sammy Sosa said you're bugging. Here's the link. Show prove it to me. Oh, you're talking about no limit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, nah, that's ridiculous. No, he shouldn't have done that. I'm very proud of him for not doing that. Thank you for the standing on this video. Boxing is plagued by fighters holding belts hostage and not letting divisions pro progress. Bud and Clonello are obvious. Thank you, sir. Yes, sir. Facts team Haney had no ducks card, no duck cards. It's in our blood, not in the mud. I mean, all I'm saying, I don't, I can't tell you about that. I'm just telling you, I don't know anybody that he ducked other than Shakur, and that's the only argument for Shakur. But if you can't make the weight class, I don't think it's a duck. Thank you, Kamal Oz. I don't think it's a duck if you can't make the weight class. I am just can't tell you how all you guys blaming all these other people for ducking everybody. I don't, I'm don't. i not on that bandwagon with y'all. I'm not on the – oh, my God. I, feel, I think I'm going to feel free because I don't miss frequent flyer. I don't miss – I don't miss frequent flyer. I don't come up frequent flyers not been on in a while and I don't miss them quite honestly. Uh, this is the first Devin Haney fight. We'll be fighting a top boxer his age. Devin fights older men past their prime after Ryan. Let's see who he fights next. Um, it is what it is. Kenny man, dude, can you be quiet, bro? He doesn't hate on Kenny man. Will you stop? 
talking out your con constantly talking outside your neck, Kenny man. How can um how come he ain't tell Shakur to come to 140? Quack quack. I don't know why he wouldn't say that. Why he didn't tell him that? I don't know why he didn't tell him that. Most of these Devin Haney fans are full of shit. But that's because they get fed shit and you can't help but swallow it. You know what I mean? Like the reason they're full of shit is they keep getting fed it so much. You know? That's because that's how they that's how these dudes do that. There's so much dishonesty. There's so many things that are not true that they keep saying. That it's very hard for you not to swallow some of it. Uh, but if he wins that fight, he becomes the A side. Now, after his last fight, is going to be hard to get a top. What? What are you talking about? What? You just man, click the link, dude. What? What are you talking about? Let me randomly start asking, man, that's bullshit. That's, man, whatever, bro. I'm sorry, Kamal. I'm so, I mean, I'm sorry. Uh, I'm really, really sorry, uh, Kyle. You got to stop, man. That shit got to stop, bro. You remember, Kyle, I actually unblocked you? Do you remember that, Kyle? How the reason that you got unblocked, you communicated with me, and you were like, look, man, and I explained to you, look, bro, you got to stop doing this. And eventually you got to the point where, man, I got such a big headache with you that I have to block you. And I and people have been asking me to block you for weeks. Rick Tim's asked me a bunch of questions now. Yeah, I've watched a little bit of it. I watched a little bit of it. I watched a little bit, but I can't tell you that I spent a lot of time watching that. Tank and Shakur, I think Tank and Shakur will happen. Devin Haney and Tank will never happen. Devin doesn't want that fight. You guys believe Devin wants that fight. I don't believe it. Off topic, but shout out to Steven Big Shot Shaw. For getting the big, the getting the first round stoppage in his return last night. Proud of you, proud of you, champ. Fold the dude in 10 seconds. Hey man, congratulations to big Steven Big Shot Shaw. No, I don't really I'm not watching it, man. I don't hate the UFC. I don't hate it. I don't like when UFC people fans talk about boxing. I could I don't have a problem with the UFC. I might actually be more into the UFC. If it wasn't a problem with the how way people talk about boxing, I mean, if there's like, like I said, there's a big fighter, but the problem is that the big fighters always get beat in UFC. And like, and then I watch the fight, and when I watch it, the fight is boring as hell. I watched that last John Jones fight. I watched John Jones when I watched him, that fight was boring. He fought, he was moving around, moving around. He put somebody in a chokehold, and the fight was over. It's like, ugh. Like, I'm not, I mean, I don't think it's nearly as exciting as people say that it is. But, you know, it is what it is. My son likes it. I don't think my wife did what I asked her to do. Yeah, I just think it was, I, some, I just think UFC is kind of boring. Like, the actual fights itself are kind of boring. But, I mean, it's not like to everybody. No trouble getting the ring. He ran like a bat out of hell when Shakur stepped in that ring. Yeah, Dev, Dev, I'm trying to tell you, man, Devin looked bad with that Shakur stuff. Devin looks very bad with that Shakur stuff. No joke. And there ain't no, ain't no really no way to get out of that. You guys want to try to get him out of that. He ain't getting him out of that. Uh, Joshua, right? hey, thanks, Kenny, man. Kenny, man said just getting here. Hey, thank you, Kenny, man. I appreciate you, brother. Thank you for that support. It's more tech. It's not more technical. What do you mean it's more? It's less technical. Shit is MMA looks less technical than 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 boxing does. Less technical.
from what I can see. Now, they're all technical. Boxing is really, really technical. But my son likes UFC, so I'm not, I mean, you know, he likes it. So, you know, he enjoys it. And it's something that, you know, that, hey, I support it. I pay. I buy the pay-per-view. Whenever he asks for a pay-per-view fight, he wants to watch a UFC fight on pay-per-view, I'll always buy the fight. He, I'll never watch it. I'd never watch him with him, but, you know, that's because, you know, he just kind of never wants to watch TV with me. Um, I like that slapping shit better than I like UFC. Learn something new every time I watch. Hey, thank you. Hey, hey, Mr. Barber, thank you so much for that $10 dollar in the cash app. Thank you so much. It's more technical when it comes to, yeah, but see, that's my point. It's more technical in the things that, that they're doing, but it's still, well, let me put it this way. I don't think it's any more or less technical. I, I don't think so. I, I think, I don't think it's, I mean, there's, there's a, an extreme, you're using feet, feet, hands, all of that stuff. They're head fainting. There's all kind of stuff to it, man. Because you, because there's so many limited things that you, because it's a lot lower limited in what you do. It's much more technical in boxing because you have to take advantage of fewer, being able to do fewer things, but whatever. Like I said, I can't really say that I'm an, I understand because, you know, I don't believe I'm a technical expert in either one of them. Yeah, thank you so much for being done done with me, Kyle. Thank you. Please don't come back. I'm done with your show. So is Kyle. Kyle is done with my show because I blocked him. Because Kyle will not, re, Kyle will not, will not at, take my request which is to please stop asking me random questions. <sighs> Martin, do you believe Roley came into the ring 180 against Tank? No. Who said that? Do I think Roley Romero gained 45 pounds in a night? No, I do not believe that. No, I do. No, I do not. No, I do not believe that. <laughs> Who said that? Who said that Roley came in at 100, 180 pounds? No chance that I believe that. No chance do I believe that. Bare knuckle boxing, man. Look, dude, I'm not. I, I can't say I understand enough about bare knuckle boxing. People think that argument isn't technical. So everything that you do has a technical aspect to it because it has fundamentals. So what do you mean is when you're talking about technical, you're talking about the fundamentals. And they and pretty much everything has the same fundamentals because fundamentals are almost universal. My guy, um, Kamal Oz said, have Mauricio Suleum on the WBC designated David Benavides the WBC mandatory to 168 yet? Not that I know of. They've got another couple weeks to get it done. It's the middle of the week. What is he waiting for? Hashtag Clanelho. Hey, I don't know, man. I don't know when they're going to do it. Hopefully they do it quick. Did you see what Haney Security did to that guy? I saw him get punched in the mouth. Yeah, I did. I didn't see him get punched in the mouth. I saw that he got punched in the mouth. What you walking around with security for in a boxing gym? Thank you, Kamal Oz. Thank you for that support, brother. Thank you. Oh, God. Beyond the point, if somebody can unblock Kyle Porter, I'd appreciate it. I just got to do the day timeouts. Man, I'm on here, man. I work, man. God, dog. Man. I try to give honest answers to people's questions, man. I really do. I really do. They saying Tank came in the ring at once. Who is they, Michael Gardner? Give me the name. I don't care if you tell me a YouTube channel's name. I don't care. Give me the YouTube channel name. If it's a YouTube channel, give me the name. If it's a commentator, give me the commentator. I don't care anymore. I really do not care anymore. I'm not going to talk bad about him. I don't care. Just 
I want to be able to know who said it. So I need to know whether I needed to respond to it or not. Because if you tell me who said it, I, 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 in my own mind, can know why it was said. BFTB said he came in at 180. Okay. That, Ger that Roley Romero came in at 180. That Roley Romero gained. That he came in at 180. From, okay. Yeah, that, I have a hard time believing that, bro. Let me see. Where can I find this? I have a hard time with Roley Romero. Box wreck. What did he weigh in at? What did he weigh in at? So now nah, I, I think he may be playing with y'all or something. I doubt that. I doubt that seriously. Um, Roly Romero weighed in at 134 and a half pounds against Gervonta Davis. He weighed in under the limit against Gervonta. I don't see where that I don't see where that is publicized at. But we can look at a picture. Let me see. You tell me. Does this guy look like he weighs a hundred and... Does this look like this guy is outweighing Gervonta Davis by 50 pounds? By how much you think Gervonta weighs in at? Walks in. Say he weighs in at 146. Because that's what he rehydrates to, about 146. Let's see. I'll bring up the I'll bring up the picture. I don't know how much he weighs, but I'll let you guys this I'll tell you how to how to analyze it though. And you tell me how much you think he weighs. Does that look like there? So you, so if this guy's weighing one forty six in the morning and that guy's weighing one eighty, does that look uh, to me? That does not look like a thirty five pound weight difference between the two of those guys. And here's another thing we can look at.
No, I don't think he did. Here, because here's the first picture. I'm sorry, hold on. No, I don't think he did. I don't know. I don't think he put on, he doesn't look like he put on 45 pounds from there. He doesn't even look that drawn. That's Rolly Romero during the weigh-in. You tell me, does it look like he put on 40 pounds between here? 45, I'm sorry, is that 45 pounds? 40, does he look like he put on 45 pounds? That's him at the weigh-in, because this is a real weigh-in. That's not ceremonial. That's that's the real weigh-in. This is not ceremonial. That's him during the weigh-in. It's not a ceremonial weigh-in. He doesn't look drawn. He doesn't look particularly drawn. Does he? He doesn't look particularly drawn. So, yeah, it's like you'd have to say he gained 45 pounds between this picture In this picture, does that look like he gained 45 pounds? It doesn't look like he gained 45 pounds. No, I don't believe it. So no, he didn't gain the likelihood of him having gained 45 point 45 pounds in this picture here. And let me bring this, let me bring this picture a little closer. Look at his abs. You can see his abs. You can see his abs right there. They're defined. And this fight, this right here. Damn, what is this? And this, that, that does not look like 45 pounds to me, man. 45 pounds, is this a third of his body weight and his abs are still showing? He doesn't even look drained here. He doesn't look drained. Now let's look at Devin Haney. Where we know, where's the, where we know he gained 25 pounds. All right, so the last public weigh-in that we had with Devin was this. See, this is when you, you gain 25 pounds right there. Look at that. See how drawn he is? Look at his face. Rolly didn't look like this. Rolly's face didn't look like that. Right? 
versus let's see in the ring. Let's let's look in the ring. Yeah, I don't even I don't think I needed to continue to just belabor this point. But no. No, nah, man. And 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 he's only gaining 25. And he's gaining 24 to 25. Roley's not Roley's not blowing up that much. Where's the picture of the scale? I'll look, where's the scale? Where's the scale? He showed a picture of him weighing 180. You talking about in between fights? Look, man, I, I let me let me tell you. I just you're asking me a question, I'll give you an honest answer. No, I have a very hard time believing that Roly Romero weight walked into the ring against Javante Davis at 180 pounds. No, I do not believe that. I do not believe Roly Romero fought at 135 pounds. And he weighed more. He weighed, he weighed in the next day 23 pounds bigger than Jerron Ennis does. So no, it's very hard for me to put that no. So no, I don't, I don't think so. I don't think so. Could he have weighed 180 pounds in between fights? I've seen I've seen Roly Romero in between fights. No, I don't think he's 180 pounds. I doubt he's 180 pounds. I doubt very much he's at 180 pounds. Roley posted a pic of 180 way before the fight saying, I'm in a fat camp. They representing the picture on, give me the link to the picture. Just, I mean, it's just give me the link to the picture. I mean, no, he's not. Did I... 40, did he put, he weighed in at 140 in the fight? No. No, I don't believe that. No. Honest answer to the question. No, I don't. I don't know because I didn't hear him saying it. I didn't hear him say it. And sometimes people are very careful with the words that they use. So I don't know what words he used. So I can't speak on it because I didn't hear him say it. But I will tell you that if you're asking me do I do I believe that Gervonta, that when Roly Romero was in the ring with Gervonta with Davis in the ring, did he weigh 180 pounds? That is next to impossible. But it may be very well that the person didn't say that. I would have to hear what they said. Boxing hacker, use your brain, bro. How can an athlete even think to compete after that? He would have to eat all night, all day. No, you can't. It's, dude, it's silly. You can look at the pictures and know that's not 45 pounds. 45 pounds for a 135 pound fighter? That's a 30, that's over a 30 your body weight. 45 pounds? That shit will, no way will allow that to happen. Do you? 45, you're going to put 45 pounds up. You'd have to regrow muscle. <laughs> no, man, you have to complete 45 pounds. You believe that? Come on, man. You have to get rid of fat to get rid of 45 pounds. Man, look, bro. I, come on, man. He's just beating up on y'all in a debate. That's all that is. No, that's that's not real. I don't. I mean, and, or he didn't say it, and whatever. Yeah, you just can't do it, bro. You're not. It's not going to be one thirty four point five. You go to one eighty within. No, within twenty four hours. No way. No way. No way. It doesn't depend on what you eat. No way. 45 pounds? 
You can look at the picture and see he didn't put on 45 pounds. You can look at the picture and see he didn't put on 45 pounds. He wasn't drawing it. He weighed 134 and his face wasn't drawn. Look at the picture. See, his face is drawn. His face, look at his face. His face is drawn. Clearly drawn. You can see the muscles all the way. You can see the, dude, you can see his rib cage. You can literally see his rib cage in the middle of his chest. And he didn't put on 45 pounds. This is the way in. Rolly's not even drawn. He's not even drawn. He doesn't even look drawn. He doesn't even look dehydrated. Look at his face. Rolly doesn't look drawn. You know how much, how drawn he would have to look to put on 40 pounds? For not even 40, 45 pounds? His sternum is visible. Dude, yeah, okay, he's drawn just like, just not like Haney. Well, that's the problem, Kyle. This guy right here is not drawn like Haney, but Haney only put on 20 pounds. They're saying this guy put on 45. This dude right here, bro. This dude will put it in his, no matter what, bro. You'll find a way to compliment God, dog, any shit. Anyway, it's called, it's amazing how he can, oh man, my God, man. Yeah, okay. There's no way that man put on 45 pounds, okay? There's no way. So anyway, next question. Y'all asked me my opinion on that. I gave you my opinion. I didn't hear what BFTB had to say. I didn't hear it. So I don't know what he said. Okay. I don't know what he said. You could be misrepresenting what he said for all I know. I didn't. And I actually have to hear people say what they say. But if you're asking me, did do I believe that that Roly Romero put on 45 pounds in between the time that he weighed in and the time that he went into that he went into the fight with Gervonta Davis and he fought him weighing 180 pounds? No, I do not believe that. No, I do not believe that. That wrench is gone, though, Kyle. Oh, that wrench is gone, Kyle. That wrench is definitely gone. So, nah, man, I don't buy that. And I don't think you guys buy that shit either. You guys don't buy that shit. Come on, man. And it's probably not even what he said, bro. Matty Yole in the building. Thank you for that support, Matty o. Need a wrench in the trenches. Yeah, you do. That am a lying a lie, dog. You out here naked. <laughs> Kyle, Kenny, man, no way. You come up here and win a debate with me and I'll give you a wrench. Somebody out here naked and alone. Hey, man, y'all don't, you don't appreciate it, dog. You don't appreciate that wrench. Hey, nothing, hope, not, nope, nothing at all. The only thing amazing about it is, like, it ain't amazing that you drain your body down that much and fight guys that much smaller than you. No, there's a lot of people that don't get it. Ange, you, did your mother didn't take that car? Oh, okay. But you didn't, oh, she, yeah, she was, okay, yeah, whatever. She didn't listen to me. All right, sorry about that. 
Um, you will not. Un I will not unhide you again, Kyle. Try, uh, try, uh, fitting, uh, try telling me to stay off topic because Fanon flagged you. Hey, man, it's a hey, dude. Seriously, it is what it is, though. It is what it is, man. All right, we're gonna give a couple more chances for some callers. If not, you know what it is. We had some good conversations this week, and you know, I'm enjoying my day, bro. Uh, exactly. It was amazing that Tank has been the same size disadvantage for 99% of his fights and still finds a way to win. They want an advantage to be, they want an advantage to be amazing. That's just because he just got, you know, boxing hackers, you know, you know, he got something going on with him. He got something going on with him. That was an accident. Can somebody unblock Kyle? All right, hold on one second, man. I got to do something, got to do something, got to do something. Uh, sometimes you just got to lay back, respect family. Sometimes just want you to sit back and listen, Kyle. Why don't you just sit back and listen? What's little what's 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 boxing hacker lying about now? <laughs> and you know he lying about son and Nah, Martin, he got questions to ask like 50 Cent. Who is that? Boxing Agger, man, stop talking, bro. Why don't you listen for a little while? Try that. Listen. Or click the link. You're not getting any more conversations off of people in the chat, man. Okay? Not having a wrench is not a big deal. Uh, uh, I didn't have one for a while and never asked anybody one for Martin was kind enough to bestow the privilege on me, but it's not hard to enjoy without one. Yeah, Keith, no, I needed to make sure you somebody that nobody threw your at nobody threw you out, but you never had to because you never do anything to get thrown out. I didn't I honestly I meant to time out. I meant to time him out, though. It's nothing amazing about running from guys your size. I'm not saying he's running from guys his size from his guy from guys his own size. I gonna help you, boxing hacker. Yeah, how you doing? Um, so I'll just. Uh, uh, how about you wait till I answer the question? Okay. I'm doing well. How are you? I'm fine. So yeah, just uh, the whole notion on weight cutting. The reason why I said that I respect Devin for it is because he's never missed weight, and I've I've it is my own personal opinion because I've competed in like combat sports, both in boxing and martial arts, and martial arts don't really have to weigh in that much, and wrestling. And I could say, like, when it comes to combat sports, that's one of the most hardest uh, aspects of it, in, from my experience. Because, like, you're training to prepare for a fight, and then you're constantly, like, having to eat less and less and watch what you eat, and you're burnt. And then it comes when, as soon as it gets close to weigh-ins, then you have to, like, do, if you're not close to that weight, you have to do drastic things, like, I remember in boxing, like they'll make you wear like Avalon, like this, like nail polish remover, so you can start sweating a lot, or like you can't drink water, you know. 
like people like pass out and weigh and weigh ins a lot and stuff. So that's why I was saying, like for me, I, I always respected, you know, because I know there's a notion of like people say, oh, that people are weight bullying and stuff, but it's really complicated to actually get down to those weights. So that's why I respect people like Devin who who's who for, who make these drastic weight cuts and still are able to compete, you know. So that was my that was where I was coming from with it. Yeah, man, but yeah, okay, that that's fine. Fuck, I just messed up. God dang it. Yeah. God dang. Let me see something. I'm sorry. Oh, give me one second. I gotta see. Hopefully, 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 this shit went in here. Please let this shit have gone in here. Fuck. Oh, it did. It did. It did. It did. What's today? Today is, oh, yay. I'm sorry. I made a big mistake, but I think that I. Damn it. Damn it. Damn it. Damn it. Damn it. Fuck. All right. Okay, thank you very much, man. I made a mistake. I just deleted a lot of work. God, dog. God, dog. I just deleted a lot of work. I think I deleted a lot of work. Anyway, okay, yeah, man. I just don't get why it's if everybody does it, what's so amazing about it? So to the level of like what Devin's doing, right? Because Devin was significantly higher than 135 and he was still able to make the weight, you know. So and a lot of people do do that, you know. But that's what I'm saying. Like, you have to give to me. I'm just seeing my perspective. Yeah, man, but here's the thing, yeah. man. Like people do nobody's supposed to do that. You're, you're saying something's amazing. Something that shouldn't be taking place is amazing. But so it's from amateurs, right? Because the amateurs, you do that too. Like no, most people, okay, I, I won't, let me not be fallacious and say most, but from my experience, a lot of fighters don't fight at their walk around weight. You know, they would normally fight less than a walk around weight. So as there's certain, there's normally like weight cutting. At a certain Look, I level. understand that it's hard. Yeah. I understand that it's hard. But it also shouldn't happen because you're not fighting somebody else that's doing the same thing. At the end of the day, you're having well, somebody that should be fighting at weight classes above, draining down into weight classes you shouldn't be fighting at. But most, but I think a lot of fighters do do that. Like, how many fighters do? You, how many fighters would you say fired their walk around weight? Well, I didn't say anything about their walk around weight. So they're draining for a certain degree. None of, them are be, none of them are walking around in their yeah. walk around weight because you're going to go below your walk around weight just to get in shape. Exactly. No, not so, exactly. Everybody's going to do that. There's nothing exceptional about that. If you're in a comp competition, NBA basketball players don't play the season in their walk around weight. Those guys in between the seasons will gain weight because they're exercising. The point of the matter is mm. you're doing something where you're positioning yourself to fight guys you know you're bigger than. That you know you're going to be bigger than? I, I hear the last part. Sorry. Yeah, what because you're doing – I look, man, I don't disagree that it's difficult to do that. Mm -hmm. But I don't think it's admirable to do it. So when you use the phrase, it's amazing, it's like, really? Mm. It's amazing? Or is it shocking? Like, it's shocking. Like – if everybody should do that, people should in order to, and plus, what is he doing to do it? To gain well, 25 pounds? Well, so also like, so I know there's also this notion of like weight bullying and people feeling like there's like this like great advantage when somebody drains so much weight then blows back up. And to me, I feel like there's a, there's a sort of like a balancing there because if you're drained, you actually come, you can actually come in the ring way weaker. You know, and that's why you see some fighters they actually move up and they get gain stronger. You know, like for instance, I'll give you an example, right? Like the Terrence Crawford, Errol Spence, right? Errol Spence was called a weight bully by you know various like fans and stuff like that. You know, they called him a weight bully when he was defeated. Then people, then a lot of people were saying he should move up in weight. But it was weird, I, you know. I was like, but the, 
a lot of people, some people are saying he's a weight bully, and then some people are saying he should move up, you know? But my perspective is always that if you do a drastic weight cut, there's a fine line, and if you surpass that line, you're actually going to perform worse than better, you know? So that's why I say the notion of weight bully, bullying for me never really made that much sense because I feel like you're at a disadvantage after a certain Okay, how about, if, how about if the dra drastic weight division, what about the, the situation where a drastic weight cut does not affect you? Then, then it's good then, right? No, then, then it's weight bullying. So, but then no, but the scenario. problem there... I'm just argumenting the sake. You said there's a point, it's a fine line. There's a point at which if you have a drastic weight cut that you can actually affect your performance because you lost too much weight. Right? Right. Well, so there's therefore the idea of weight bullying doesn't make sense. But what if you are on the other side of the line? What if you have a dramatic amount of weight class weight cut and it doesn't affect you? Oh, you still it, perform well. Yeah, what if it doesn't affect you? Yeah, that's a good that's a fair assertion. But then you look uh, for me, you still look at both fighters, right? At least one fighter had to suffer more to make the weight than the other fighter, right? At that point, like, do if, they honestly? You, yeah, go ahead. If you, there's, there's a weight, their weight classes for a reason. If you're supposed to fight somebody at 135, that's the weight you're supposed to weight. You're supposed to fight at. They changed it to day before weigh-ins, so that now somebody can weigh 135 pounds and they can rehydrate up to a, a, a significantly higher than that. So what people are doing is they're dehydrating their bodies taking all of the water out of their bodies and so that they lose all their water weight. And then they are putting the water back in their body right? so that they can then fight at a much higher weight than what they weighed in. Or they came in at. Yeah, I get Some that. Some fighters do that. Some fighters don't do that. Some fighters don't have the option to do that. There is fighters that they, they can't or wouldn't even be allowed to do that. Because they would what? never get a fight at the weight class. But we'll say something, right? Well, like, listen, listen to me. Do you really think that that somebody like somebody like let's say, maybe? let's say somebody like a man of mm -hmm. who's fighting at 147, mm -hmm. who's probably the same size as Devin Haney, would even be given the opportunity to fight somebody at 135 if he could get that far down? No. Because they would say, uh, do we not stupid? We're right. not, yeah, you can get there, but nobody's going to fight you. No. That's why other fighters have to fight at higher weight classes. Say, for example, a guy like Regis Progre. Regis Progre probably could have made 135 during his career, but he would have never got the fight. Because they'd be like, we're not fooled. We know that you could fight at 135 if you absolutely take every ounce of water out of your body, but we're not going to give you the fight. Go away. But Devin, because he's in a different economic situation, because he's a featured fighter, they allow him to do it. So it's not just the willingness of somebody to do it or their ability to do it. It's also the ability to, of them to get a fight at the weight class they're draining to. Um, Gary Russell Jr. might have been able to go, get down to 122. Wasn't nobody going to fight him at 122. Yeah. But Devin so started his career at 135, though. Say Remember say that? 26. There are fighters like Chris. There's fighters like um, a heavyweight in the 19, a 1990s heavyweight, Chris Bird, who could have made, definitely could have made middleweight. But he wasn't ever given a fight. He had to go to heavyweight. They're like, look, man, we're not looking for, we're not looking for middleweights. We're looking for heavyweights. Do you know what Chris Bird walks around with as an as a as an adult man right now? Do you know? Guess how much Chris Bird walks around at? I'm not sure. 160 pounds. Chris Bird fought Vladimir Klitschko. Fought who was who, who's Vladimir Klitschko, Vitaly Klitschko. He fought those guys at heavyweight, and right now he's walking around at 160 something pounds. Because he was not allowed to fight at that weight class. If he would have been allowed to fight Roy Jones Jr., but Roy Jones Jr.'s promoter was not about, yeah, let me fight. Yeah, let him fight Chris Bird at 160. They wouldn't allow Chris Bird to fight James Tony and these guys at 160. They're like, nah. So there, it's not some just exceptional thing that, that Devin is doing because he's so special. No, 
He's in a financial position where he can get the fights. And But if nobody would fight him, then guess what? He's got to go fight at the weight class he needs to go get fights at. He would have to fight at weight classes like 147. If guys right now are like, nah, bro, you're gaining. Say there was no money in a fight with, Ter with, with Devin Haney right now. Yeah. Right? Would anybody be fighting him at knowing he's walking in the ring at 165? No. They would be like, man, you better take your ass up to 147 or 154, Devin, and see if you can get that fight with Jerron or see if you can get a fight with uh, Tim Zhu. I'm not yeah. fighting you if you weigh 165. No, he wouldn't get the fight. So it's not some, so my thing is not some just exceptional thing that he's doing that really shows. There's a lot of fighters, if they could get away with it, could do it. You don't think if, say, Javante did, that's why the, the issue is, okay, Ryan, I mean, Javante, De, De, Devin, you want to fight with, with, with Javante? Javante's not moving up in weight to fight you. So he doesn't have, not so he has to wait, fight you at 165. There's a bunch of guys at 140 that wouldn't fight Devin at 140 if there was, if they didn't have a financial incentive to do so. So you're trying to get Gervonta Davis to do something he doesn't have a financial incentive to do. No, come your ass down to, come back down to 135. You can make 135, I'll fight you, but you're going to be weighing one, you're going to be weighing 147. You're going to be weighing no more than 147 that next morning. Because no, man, ain't nobody doing that with you. Because everybody knows the trick. The only question is, can you get away with it? It's like going to, it's like people having a good, like certain people can get away with some things that other people can't get away with because, because they got the money for a lawyer. You know, but I, I sort of look at it similar to Earl Spence, right? I, Devin didn't go down in weight. Devin started his weight at 135. Sorry, my son's in the background. Devin started his weight at 135, just like Earl Spence. Wait, I think Earl Spence started at 154 and went down to 147. But but they both just outgrew the weight class and they were trying to get like the big fights from, from what I saw. No, what there's, a difference. there's a difference, huge difference. Why is that? Because one is the big fight. The other one's trying to get the big fight. Yeah, but it took him a while to so Earl, it took a while, Earl, a while to get that Terrence Car problem fight. Remember, there was all no, Errol is the big fight. Errol you it didn't take Errol a long time to get a big fight. Errol is the big fight. Errol had a big fight with Mikey. Errol had a big fight with Danny Garcia. Errol had a big fight with, with, with Sean Porter. Errol had a big fight with, with Kel Brook. Errol is the big fight. Devin, there, Devin Haney is not, is not the draw that, that Errol Spence is. I agree. But, but what I'm saying is just that notion. I think Devin wanted to accomplish things at 135. That's why he stood. He stayed there. It's not like he was at 135, then went to 130, and then you know try like you know I guess like what you call like bullying or something. He he stayed he started he started it was, was his pro career at 135. How old was he? I think 16 how or 17. Old was he? 16 and or you know 17. how old he was? 16 or 17. He was 17 years old because that's how yeah. old you can turn pro. 17. Yeah. Okay. I don't know what Errol Spence Jr. weighed at 17. Yeah, but I'm saying I, I mean Devin, Errol is Errol is 17 years old, might have been fighting at 135. I don't know. Yeah, so that's what I'm saying. I think they, they just both outgrew the weight class versus like you know jumping down the weight class, if that makes sense. What they stayed too, they stay the weight class way too I don't long. Get why that's, I don't get why that point is relevant. Well, you the, the examples you gave were people about people going down in weight. You said, like, well, what was the first time 147 went about went down to 135? And I was like, Well, it's not like he's going down in weight, he just stayed where he was. And now grew it. No, think, no, he absolutely positively is fighting at a weight class where people know he's too big because he's gaining 25 pounds. They did Devin, it's been known that Devin Haney is, is rehydrating 20, 20 plus pounds at 135. It's been happening for years. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I see he outgrew it. I, 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 I want no, my, it's not a matter about I'm telling you that Mauricio Suleiman, he has not been, he has been. Do you know the first, when he started fighting at 139 was like in his was like back in two he started matter of fact he went up to 140 pounds before he didn't come back down to 135 pounds until the fight before he got a championship shot he did come back down in weight who Devin yes he came back down in weight to fight I believe he came back down to weight to fight Yuriokas Gamboa but I'll look at it here I'll tell yeah, you right. when he came back down in weight no worries. 
man, I hate that I, I hate that I did what I did. Um, Devin Haney was fighting before he fought Abdulev. I think that's his name. He fought at Zor Abdulev. The fight before that, he fought, or I'm sorry, he came back down with Mason Menard in 2017. He fought he fought like three times or four times at 140. All through 2017, he was at 140. And he actually, he had fought at 139 in 2000. He fought in 2017, he fought one, two, three, four, five times, six times above that weight limit. And then he, fought then, he, and then he fought for the IBF when he came to fight for this first secondary title, which was the IBF USBA light, lightweight title. That's when he came in at 134. But he came, the weight before, right before he fought Mace Minardi, weighed in at 137 and a half. The fight before that, 137 and three quarters. The fight before that, 139 and three quarters. The fight before that, in April of 2017, he fought at 139. But the reason that he could do that is because he fought back to back to back to back. I see what he's saying. So he was never officially out of shape, basically. Doesn't matter. No, he. but he's a, he, dude, Devin's a big guy. He's been a big guy. Yeah, no doubt. He's, he's, a, he's, a, he's, a, big, he's a big kid. But like, yeah, like I said, for me, it's just, for instance, he's never dropped a, a belt on a scale, you know. Like I think, I don't know, just made from base that I I've just seen, from what I've seen, like you know, the experiences of like going through weight cuts and see other people go to weight cut. It's like just for him to do that and still compete. Like I was surprised he, he, how well he did the Cambosis fight. Looking at the 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 weigh in, the weigh in almost made me feel like I actually like put no money on this fight, you know, because I bet on that fight, you know, but um. Yeah, he looked, like, same, he looked the same way in the he, he would he looked the same way in the Lomachenko fight. Yeah. yeah, you just didn't sit to see him because yeah. after that they stopped showing it. Um, but anyway, man, uh, weight taking advantage of people's weight classes is a very real thing, and it's just it's a real thing, man. Okay, yeah, no, I don't get that, but you know, but it's also like but you, know, you learned that from from amateurs, right? Amateurs is always like that, it's like and the amateurs they they. A lot of times you're told that you should, the person should fight at the weight class, the least amount of weight they can make, you know? So there's this like notion, like, you know, like, um, you know, like it's people, big people should, everybody, man, it's huh? possible for something to be bullshit for everybody. Yeah, no doubt. I'm just saying that's like, so sort of like a, like a ideology, like a concept that happens in like boxing in general. You know, like, you remember, like, Paul Williams, like, like some of the people that call anomalies, like Paul Williams, who was, like, 6'2", but way that way, like, he was, like, a 147, like, people will find that amazing because, like, the height, you know. No, I don't, I, let me tell you, I don't find, I don't, dude, he's using IVs to rehydrate his body, okay? That's what he's doing. You say Paul Williams? No, I'm telling you, Devin Haney, that's more than likely what he's doing. The reason he's able to rehydrate is because they are putting some type of IV solution in his body and allowing him to put the water back in his body. I don't think that that's a good thing. It's not something that I have. And I think we should go back to same day weight because you're is, there, is there proof? Of, is there any proof of that? Is there any proof of that? Yeah, I, I didn't hear that. Story. Proof? Do you need like the, has it been like shown that like that's how he rehydrates? Is it been shown on tape that that's how he does it? No, but obviously, okay. I don't. Let me ask you a question. Do I have to see how you eat? Do I have to need do I need to see proof that you ate food yesterday? Then you I, know I, don't know food not, sure. I don't know for sure if you've eaten in the last month. Yeah. So I don't how do I know that you've eaten any food in the last month? You don't. Yes, so, I do. Yes, I do know. Well, that you've eaten food because you're alive. Just taking leak, liquids. You're alive. You can, but you can also live off like liquid, like sir, um, supplements, sir, right? So, let me rephrase it. How okay. do I know that you've drinking water this month? Well, you can assume because your body needs water. Yeah, I know it because you're alive. If you didn't drink any water this month, you'd be dead. You're not dead, so I know you drank water. There you go. You put 25 pounds on inside of 24 hours. You put a IV in your body and rehydrated, because that's the I, only way you're gonna do it. For me, I like I said, if there's no evidence for that, I can't say that. To be true. Dude, that's the only way you're going to do it. It's the only so, way. 
when you when you wake up and then and gain weight, like you, you know your body like goes into Sir, like it's mode already of like significant sufficiently. Where other boxers said that's how you have to do it. Experts have testified for that. Expert for, testimony. Right, but that doesn't make it true, right? That's that creates a fallacy, Sir, right? You you want you have to you take something beyond what is reasonable. Okay. I don't have to prove something beyond a reasonable doubt. There's a standard of proof. Stan there's standards of proof. What do you need to know in order to have it su sufficiently proven? You have, you, to, have you have to know the way you rehydrate. Sir, I've already explained to you how I can tell you that there's a standard of proof and not anytime there's no proof unless you actually see it yourself. That's yeah. not true. It's not true. Yeah. I can prove there's standards of proof. There's a term called the standard of proof. Okay. What do you need to prove this? In the criminal court, excuse me, sir. Or, yeah. Talking. You need beyond a reasonable doubt. If I present evidence to you that is beyond a reasonable doubt, that's enough. Okay? Right. The standard called a preponderance of the evidence. Sure. If I, I'm not done. Okay. If I give you facts and get you to the point where it's more likely than not that this took place, that's enough. You have but, satisfied your burden of proof. But you haven't supplied me that evidence, though. You sir, said I am sorry, sir. Okay. If I say to you, I know you drank water within the last month. That water may have come in the form of apple juice. It may have come in the, in the form of Gatorade. It may have come in the form of beer. Right. But I guarantee you, I can prove that you have, it, you have ingested water within the last month. Okay. All I have to do is prove it beyond any reasonable doubt. Now, if you tell me you didn't see me drink water, I don't need to because that is all I have to do is get it beyond a, any reasonable doubt. You, sir, are alive right now, are you not? Yes, yes, I understand. Yes. So, therefore, if I can prove that you're alive, then I can prove you drank some water. Sure. Because I if you were not, reasonable I'm doubt. not That's done, correct. I'm not done. Okay. Because I've got the whole thing to go through. So, if I can prove that you are alive, then I can prove you drank water beyond any reasonable doubt. I don't have to show you drinking water because that's not reasonable. There's no doubt. How? Because we know you'd be dead if you didn't. Just like, let's take it further. I know you breathed air because you definitely be dead if you didn't have any oxygen. Inside of a inside of an hour, I know that you brought oxygen. I've not seen your face, I've not seen you breathe, but I know you've breathed because you're alive. So you don't you cannot do not tell me that I cannot prove something without actually having seen it. Yeah, okay? I'm not I'm not saying yes, that, but I'm, I'm not done. Okay. So if I if if a boxer says, I know these things to be true, at ten o'clock in the morning on March sixteenth, a boxer weighed one hundred and thirty five pounds on a scale. Twenty four hours later, he weighed. Let me make it. Let me put it in a, a round number so I don't mess my numbers up. At eight o'clock in the morning today, yesterday. A person got on a scale and he weighed 100 pounds. The next day, at 8 o'clock in the morning, he got, scale, he got on the same scale and he weighed 125 pounds. In both weigh-ins, he was completely naked. So there was no clothes. He didn't have anything in his hands. Either time. He, we know that he put on 25 pounds of something in 24 hours. 
We know that is water. Because he couldn't put on 25 pounds of food in his stomach. He couldn't put a 25 pounds of muscle because you can't gain 25 pounds of muscle in 24 hours. The only way that you can do it is by putting water in your system. Is it possible to drink 25 pounds of water? Let's see. How much is how much is 25 pounds of water to gallons? He would have had to drank three, almost four gallons of water and not passed any through his bowels. Okay? He would have had to have drank it and not had it passed through his bladder. Because you know if you drink a cup of water, more than a couple of ounces of water, you're going to pass it through your bladder. So he couldn't have, in order to get three gallons of water in his body, he might have had to drink 20 gallons of water, which is not reasonable. So how do they do it? They put a, how do they do it? They put a little IV in your arm and a drip and they drip it into your blood system. So your bladder does, does not pass through your bladder. That's why if they pull somebody in for dehydration, they don't make them keep drinking water, water, water. They put them on an IV with a solution, which not only replaces the water you have to replace the salt. You have to replace the electrolytes. Because it's not just the water, it's the electrolytes that you have to replace. So if a boxer like, say, Keith Thurman says, I weigh, I weigh in at 147. How much do you rehydrate? I rehydrate 10, 10 pounds. And, and can he says, hold on, man, how much did he rehydrated to 25 pounds? How in the world did he do that? They, he had... They say, oh, no, we know how he did it. He had to have an IV. And a doctor says, in order to get 25 pounds in you in a day, you need an IV. Because you can't just replace the water. You got to replace the electrolytes. You got to replace the salt. And right. you got to prevent it from passing through your bladder. Right, but you're also eating, too. So it's not just water that you're, that, so that you're just taking in, right? It's You're not going to ingest 25 pounds of food. So, so How much are, does, excuse me, sir, if yeah. you eat... If you eat food, don't you? Yeah. 25 pounds of food? Right. So here's, so here's my, my counter. So what Sorry, I'm let's, stop. This, Let, right? let's, let's stop with this. Yeah. More than likely, it's an IV. Because, again, we're going to get back to the standard. I do mm -hmm. not have to eliminate every other possibility. I don't. Right. You. I just have to get it to the point where it is more likely than not that that's the case. I can't. So for me, and, and it's, it's not, not, and, and, and it's not dude, beyond it, a reasonable doubt. At that it point is beyond though. a reasonable doubt that to, to any other boxer. Yeah, but I mean, then you're just generalizing, right? No, I'm not generalizing. I'm being very specific. Every other boxer that was that was presented to was like, "What the fuck is that? How does that happen?" Yeah, Ryan but, Garcia said. Ryan Garcia said it. Shakur Stevenson said it. Uh, Keith Thurman said it. There are multiple medical med multiple medical doctors that talked about it and said the only way you're going to do that is with an IV. Yeah, but that's that's what you call a bandwagon fallacy, right? It's not when a you, bandwagon fallacy. It dude. is because your 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 conclusion is true because multiple people are saying. I did that. not. I I did not conclude that it's true. I said that it is more than likely true. I it is a I, likely proof. It's a, beyond, it's a fallacy though, so it's not more than likely true. Beyond the standard is. Beyond a reasonable doubt, right? But it's a fallacy, so it's not beyond it's a reasonable. Not a doubt. fallacy; it's a standard. Beyond it's a bandwagon fallacy. Doubt. Where you're, where you're, what is the reason? What is beyond a reasonable doubt? Beyond a reasonable doubt is that is basically like more. How can I say this? More than likely, basically, if I could put this. In no, it's not. It's stronger than that. Right. Like there's no, there's no noticeable like exception to the rule, basically, sir. If you have the at the most likely scenario, and it is not reasonable to think it's something else, 
It's not reasonable to believe that a person that Devin Haney put on 25 pounds by drinking water and going to McDonald's. It is reason. It is not reasonable to believe that he did not have an IV in his body that allowed him to rehydrate. But do you have? Is there like physical? Is there like actual proof versus just Ooh, like actual? Again, standard. Uh, the proof is that he gained 25 pounds. Yeah, that's but the for evidence. Instance, Dane Jacobs gained 22 pounds actual, against Triple G. So we're talking about a standard of proof and evidence. Is there evidence? Yes. What's the evidence? The evidence is that he gained 25 pounds in 24 hours. That's not evidence. That's just what it happened. is evidence. It absolutely is evidence. So wait, then what's the evidence of what? It's that evidence he, that it's evidence that he got that he put an IV in his body and yeah. that he rehydrated through the use of an IV. It's evidence. Yes. No, it's not, it's not evidence. It is Actually. evidence. It's not. It is evidence. He gained 25 pounds doesn't mean that. It's not a definite that he put IV in his body. It there, is there evidence. Is a, so my, so my, my, sir, my problem with your argument gun, is that excuse me, sir. you don't have no... If I, no find a gun, I find a gun in your house. Sure. And the gun has your fingerprints on it. Sure. It is evidence that you fired that gun. No. If you found a gun in my house, it's you, never said that, you never said that gun was being fired. Not, excuse me, sir. You... Do not know what the fuck you're talking about. We phrased your argument because you never said the gun was it's fired. Not an argument. I'm telling you a fact. It's called evidence. Evidence is something that you examine. Right. You examine the evidence. It you is said, evidence. Okay. Here, evidence. Here, here, let me reiterate your argument. You say if you find a gun in my house with my freaking press on, it's right to assume that I touched the gun and that's how my freaking press got gone. I'm trying but to you get never you said that the, the gun got fired. You understand the so how do we know the gun got fired? I want you to understand the difference between evidence and proof. Right, but your argument your argument wasn't complete because you said you never said the gun got fired, but you said you found fingerprints on the or gun. Or let me be clear. Be clear. Evidence, mm -hmm. evidence supports your conclusion. Evidence supports right. a conclusion. Listen, um, okay. I'm teaching you. I am not asking you. I'm agreeing. So, but what don't then stop talking. Evidence supports your conclusion. I would like to present you evidence that supports the proposition that Devin Haney had an IV in his arm. Well, what is your evidence? Well, my evidence is that he weighed in yesterday at 100 pounds, and the next morning at the same time he weighed in. 125 pounds evidence is the evidence that i would like to admit is the weight is the weight that he was at eight o'clock today and eight o'clock today yesterday is that admissible evidence yes it is no it is dude that's it is it's admissible evidence if somebody has an eyewitness testimony is admissible evidence yeah but the, but the, it's not the premise proof. The, the listen premise gave, listen Listen, listen, listen. It is not proof. It is evidence. It is not proof. It is evidence. Evidence supports your argument. There is a standard of proof. What is the standard of proof? That it is beyond a reasonable doubt that my proposition is true. There's a standard of proof. Proof is relative. More. It's relative. Whether or not I've done enough to prove it to you is one thing. Whether or not I've done it enough to prove it to somebody else is something else. So that's why I have to, you have to have a standard of proof. Yes. I understand, I understand that up. notion. Shut up, please. So we can have a straight conversation. And we okay. don't conflate terms because you're conflating terms. Evidence and proof are not the same thing. They're not interchangeable words. Colloquially, they are, but in actuality, they're not. Evidence supports your proposition. If I said, here's proof that he didn't do it. Would you like some proof that Devin didn't do it? If Devin Haney weighed in 100 pounds at 8 o'clock in the morning today 
and he weighed in the next day at 100 at, at 96 pounds. That would be proof that he did not rehydrate through the use of an IV. Why? Because he lost two pounds. That would be proof. I mean, that was, excuse me, that would be evidence that would help you prove beyond a reasonable doubt that he didn't do it. See how it works the other way, Boxing Hacker? So can, if, I, can I challenge that notion? Listen to me. Listen to me. Okay. If I, if you made this argument, Fanon, I, I believe beyond a reasonable doubt that Devin Haney did not use an IV to rehydrate after the weigh-in on Monday. And then I say, well, what is your evidence? You say, well, on Monday, he weighed 100 pounds. On Tuesday, at the same time, on the same scale, he weighed 75 pounds. Consequently, Fanon, he lost, he lost 25 pounds. I believe that that evidence proves that he did not use an IV to rehydrate. Why? Because he actually lost weight. If he would have rehydrated, he would have gained weight. Correct? Correct. Can I, can I so the therefore, motion? listen. I want to teach you, son. Yeah, but I think the argument is flawed, though. Sir, it's not a flawed argument at all. All right, I'll let you finish. It's uh, not I, I wanna, flawed I at all. Challenge. There's no flaw to this. I can prove it. It's not an argument. Evidence supports a proposition. You have to prove your proposition beyond a standard given to you. Okay? In the argument that I use where I'm trying to make an argument that Javon, that Devin didn't do it, I introduced evidence. The evidence was that he lost weight. That rebuts the proposition that he gained weight. Because why? How could you say he gained weight by rehydrating if he actually lost weight? You can't. Correct? Correct. If you don't see that that if you don't see that that's correct, then there's something wrong with you. Yeah, I understand the fact. That okay, if you, so yeah. so let's stop this. That's correct. There's nothing to argue about with that. So there is something wrong with the the the, the, the argument, right? So here's here's my point to it. So I'm no. gonna take your, I'm gonna take your we'll same get example. To your point. I'm gonna get take to your point. Once we understand what evidence is and and what the standard of proof is, okay, then we'll get to your point. If I, there's no, there's almost nothing that you can see. Matter of fact, let's go through the other example that I already used with you, which is that I accuse you, boxing hacker, of breathing. I get, I want to, it is illegal to breathe. And boxing hacker, I can prove without having seen you based on evidence that I have right now. And I can prove it beyond a reasonable doubt. See the word? Prove it beyond a reasonable doubt. Which means proof is, is a continuum. Proof beyond any reasonable doubt. Which brings into the, the subjectivity of the term proof. Because what proof is to you may not be proof to me. Which is why you have to have a standard. Do you reasonably doubt it? And you may still doubt it. You may say, yes, it's reasonable to doubt this. Okay? You may, but you have to argue whether it's reasonable to doubt it or not. Once we have the standard. Or you have to say, make it an argument, if the standard is not beyond a reasonable doubt, it's just beyond any doubt. Right? Well, it's not, we're going to even put it, your, you, your proposition for proof is beyond any doubt. Okay? Any doubt. Whether the doubt is reasonable or not, I am arguing that it, the standard is not beyond any doubt. Any doubt. Do you see the difference between any doubt and reasonable doubt? Sure. Okay, so when you tell me, unless I actually see 
the IV in his arm, I don't have any proof that he did it. That would be the standard of beyond any doubt. Any doubt. And under that standard, I can't prove that you didn't breathe. Right? Right? Because there's any doubt. You can just say, fuck it, I didn't see it, I don't believe it. So therefore, you just doubt it. That's any doubt. If I had to prove the proposition that Boxing Hacker just took a breath within the last day, then I will, hold on, man, you don't know if he's taking a breath or not in the last day. How? Why don't why don't I know that? Because you didn't see him. Correct. Well, wouldn't he be dead if he didn't breathe it? Well, we don't know if he would be dead or not. He may be an alien. Or AI. Do you, yeah. Do you have his do you have his birth certificate? Do you have his birth certificate to show me that he's a human being? He may be a fish. He may be a fish. And there and do fish breathe air? Or maybe he's a plant. Or deep he may be a tree. Yeah. Listen to me. He may be a tree. See, boxing hackers, during the times that I talk to you, the one common thing that you do is you use a standard of proof which is beyond any doubt. Any doubt. You think that if you can come up with any scenario where it's not possible, then that means it didn't happen. You want to use that standard. And I'm telling you that's not the standard we're yeah, using. Yeah, no, I'm not. I'm, I'm challenging your, your notion, actually. My, what? No, tell me the notion that you're... That yeah, you're so the notion that you made previously was that because the person lost weight, that therefore it means that he didn't use the IV, right? The next day. Remember you made that you made a comment about that. You said, Well, if somebody uses if somebody weighed at a particular weight and then gains like a massive amount of weight, there's a the suggestion that he, he used the IV. However, you you also said that if somebody lost weight between that those one day, that means that he definitely didn't use ID IV. No, no sir. No, sir. But you just no. said that. No, sir, I did not. You're okay. not listening. What you're doing, son, is you're trying to argue instead of listening. No, I'm I'm just shouting. I'll explain it to you. I'll explain, I, it to you. I'll explain it to you again. Sure, go ahead. There's a standard of proof. And there's evidence. Correct. Evidence is a, an established fact that supports your conclusion. Okay. So if I wanted to prove, wanted to attempt to pr prove beyond the standard that you, that, that Devin Haney did not use an IV to rehydrate, the fact that he weighs less today than he did yesterday is evidence that supports my proposition. Yeah, I, I say it's not evidence. So stop, so. stop. You want to keep cutting me off. Sorry, continue. You need to understand. I'm trying to work with you. Yeah. Understand. Yeah. That is evidence. It's evidence. Okay. May I, you my... look at the same piece of evidence that I look at. And you could make an argument and say, that that is not... That does not, the fact that Devin Haney weighed in less yesterday than he weighed today, the weighed, weighed more yesterday than he did today, does not prove beyond a reasonable doubt that he did not use an IV. You can bring in an additional fact or additional evidence and say he did use an IV, but he caught a flu. He caught a, he caught a flu. And the, he, they put an IV in him because he was losing weight, water weight, so fast that they needed to take him to the hospital and put an IV in him. Sure. So therefore, you could introduce evidence which would counter my evidence. And then what would you do? You would work and get past the reasonable doubt. And how could you do that? Because you could then give me evidence that he was on an IV, like a piece of paper from a doctor that said he was. Okay, yeah. that doesn't mean that the weight gain is not evidence. It is, it is evidence. But there's an explanation that explains that evidence and affects your ability to prove your argument beyond the standard. Okay? Yeah, so uh, my, my point here is that 
Sorry, my point, my hair, my point here is that you realize that I'm teaching you and I'm not asking you. Yeah, but I think you're incorrect. I don't think that's a correct. Uh, there's nothing system. incorrect. That's how our legal system works. So may I land with my sir, what I'm sir, to say? That's how the legal system works. Okay, aware, that's how I'm it works. Aware of everything you're saying, but I don't no, think you're, if correct. you're aware of it. If you're aware of it, why what you you're calling evidence isn't correct. It is perfectly correct. There's an excluded middle of what you're saying. That's what I'm trying to get at. There's a excluded middle. Make your mistake, bro. Go okay, ahead. Okay, thank you. So, stupid. if we start, okay, let's say somebody from one week from one day to the other lost weight. We can't say they they didn't use IV because they could, I could, for instance, I could put IV in my hand right now, put some water in there, go running. So therefore, there's no way there's no way to conclude just because I lost weight that I didn't use the IV. That's why I say it can't be used as evidence. Dude, I literally just explained that to you. I but, literally just said that to you. Right, but if because of not because of that, it's an excluded middle. That means Dude, it's not even a fact. That's what I'm saying. Will you listen? You are rock-headed. I no, literally no. just explained the same thing. I'll use your exact example. I say introduce as evidence my proposition. Devin Haney did not use an IV because, and here's my proof. He lost weight. So that's my evidence to support my conclusion. You then bring in other evidence and say, well, I have proof that I did have one because I can show you the doctor's receipt where I put an IV in my arm. And I can introduce the testimony of the of the nurse that did it. No, but what, so that's not my argument, though. I'm not shut up. Jesus Christ, man. Wait, that's not my argument. I'm not trying to be disrespectful. I'm not telling you that that's your argument. I'm coming. I'm not telling you that that's your argument. Well, we are in a hypothetical weight, weight cannot be you used know, as you know a what evidence between... is? What is evidence? What is the difference between evidence and a standard of proof? You already, you already mentioned it, but what I'm saying weight cannot no, be No, I'm used. asking you if you understand it. I understand it perfectly clear. What, what is saying, it then? What is it then? You said what? What is the difference between evidence and satisfying a burden of proof? Right. Evidence is stuff, stuff that you can use to support your claim. Yeah. And then what is a burden of proof? The, the burden of proof is things that you use to... No. How can I say? No. I know it's hard for me to put it into no. words. You see, that's my point. I, well, listen, and I'll tell you. It is the standard by which you judge the evidence and how much it supports the proposition. So, if I say to you, in order to prove breach of contract, we're going to use an exact example. If I have a contract with you, and you sue me for breach of contract, the standard by which I need to prove it is on a preponderance of the evidence. So you do not have to prove beyond any doubt at all that I did not do the work. Or let's do better. Let's do better. What is a good one? A so, um, what is a good tort? What is a good tort? What's a good tort? Um... Defamation. Defamation. For defamation, you have to prove a couple. Man, I can't believe I'm sitting here having to give this class to you. In civil, in civil law, in order to prove, sue somebody for um, battery. You, you have to prove that they did it beyond with the preponderance of an evidence, which wins means if you give me the evidence and, and it says, okay, this looks like, I think it's 51% chance he did it. What percentage would you give it? After I look at all the evidence, right? The evidence for and the evidence against. The evidence that proves it, prove that, that supports it, and the evidence that, that refutes it. The facts that I'm presented with. The evidence that I'm presented with. I think it's 51% chance that he did it. Okay, 51% chance of it. 
If I'm in a civil case, guess what? If I am the person being accused of battery and I'm in a civil case, guess what? I lose. Why? Because all they have to get is beyond is to is to a preponderance of the evidence. 51 percent. You understand that? I understand that clearly. But well, now I'm going to go to the second one. Now, if the evidence is beyond a reasonable doubt in a criminal case and the, and the jury all believes it is 51 percent. What happens with me then? You win, right? Exactly. Yeah. So the same evidence, two different conclusions, depending on the standard that you have to use. I'm having a fundamental disagreement with you on the standard. Your standard is beyond any doubt. Okay. So let me give you an example of what I'm trying to say, right? Let's say... This is going to be similar. Let's say a kid gets killed. This, this is just going to be just a general uh, general example to support my argument. Let's just say a kid. So how about we don't? What's the argument first? So that my, my argument is that you can't use the gating or reducing a weight to say the person uh, use IV or not. That's my that's my that's my argument. I, I said so. It's not that a lot of things is basically like you can't what you, use it. Yeah, I say it's not, it can't be considered evidence. You can't, no. you, you, oh, I'm sorry, you cannot use, I want to make sure I understand this. Yeah. That you cannot use as evidence of whether or not somebody used an IV, uh, you can't use the fact that they lost weight or gained weight as evidence that they used an IV in right. boxing, right. in boxing specifically. Sure. Yep. Okay, that's, that's what you're saying you can't do. Right. Okay. So, you can't use it as evidence. Yeah, and be, and the reason why is because there there's excluded middles, right? There's so what? Exclu excluded middles. What is Something an excluded middle? Excluded middle is like an exception to the rule, right? And so the reason why I say it is this is okay. Let's say for instance. Okay, uh, I'm gonna already tell you, dude. You're you're wrong. But go well, ahead. Let me learn. Let me learn. You are. Just so you know, if mm -hmm. I get impatient, it's because I've already explained this to you. Yeah, and you let, I understand. So, same. what you're calling evidence, I say it's not evidence, and the reason is is because even though even though it's possible, the possibility I'm not saying the possibility is not there. The fact that it's not, how can I say, it's not like a given rule that's going to happen. Not what you mean, bro. Yeah, I can state what you mean if you'd like me to. You you're not very, you're not a very very good at expressing yourself. I can actually explain what you mean. And I know what you're saying. You're just saying it incorrectly. What you're saying is the following. Because I honestly, man, I've been talking to you a long time, bro. And really, this is shit's kind of crazy. What you're meaning is that it is, that the particular evidence is not conclusive. Yeah. Okay, that's a good one. That's a good there one. you go. So yeah. that's why I'm asking you to listen and learn. Yeah, so and stop talking. Okay, let's take for instance. What you mean like, is that it is not conclusive evidence. Yeah. Let's take for instance. I got that, dude. Can I tell you now? Well, so you don't have to go through the whole about. thing. I don't want to have to listen to the whole thing. You're telling me that it's not conclusive. The simple fact that he lost weight does not mean for certain that he did not use an IV. Because there's other evidence that can counter that can contradict that evidence. Sure. Sort of. Exactly, which is sure. why we go to it's, what I've been trying it's, to It's do. a little bit deeper than listen, that, right? Listen, son. Listen, son. That's why I keep going to the burden of proof. That's why I keep going to the burden of proof. Yeah, no, I understand where you're trying to go at. So here's my here's what I'm trying to say. Let's take, for instance, your, your discussion with King early on today, right? At the this end of the discussion, you, you, you said King was... Anymore, no, I'm just, no, I'm just trying... To base my point, so you're not making. I already acknowledge yeah. your point. No, you're but making another no, but, but you're not going deeper. Sir, I just acknowledge your point. You're going to come up with another one, or you're no, going to argue the exact same, same point. point exact same. Sir, I gave you your point already. No, but I you didn't complete you, it. No, listen, boxing hacker. I listened to your point. I acknowledge your point. I defined your point. You said that there was 
evidence that that is not conclusive evidence that this is the case. I said, you are correct. It is not conclusive evidence because you can have countervailing evidence that could point to something else. They could explain it or could contradict it. I've already given you the point. I've given you that point. Yeah. Sort of. Yes, I listen. Listen, I'm sorry to yell, man. But God dog, man. I already acknowledged, restated, and affirmed your point. That was your point. I asked you, is that your point? You said, yes, that's my point. So and I said, okay, that's you say, your point. You're correct. Listen to me. You're so when you say inconclusive evidence is the same as an assumption? Sir. Yeah. Listen and learn for a second, please. Because you don't, you fundamentally don't understand. I understand. I just, I'm just waiting you for my turn. don't sermon. understand because I asked you to explain what a burden of proof is and you still don't know what it is. You don't I know. Can't, I can't put it into words. You do but... not know. Listen, you do not understand the relationship between evidence and proof. You clearly do not understand the connection between the two. May, may, I, may I land with my, my, uh, what I'm trying to say? You, I um, asked you what you were trying to say. You said you keep it. cutting me off, it. so it's hard for me to no, let my... I didn't. I didn't. I'm not going to let you keep repeating the same thing. You're wasting it's my not. time. I don't, I don't think you understand what I'm saying. It's not evidence at all. You're saying it's incomplete. It is I, I don't think so. I mean, I'll, I mean, like, okay, for instance, like, okay. I remember somebody said, you said, like, King was lying, for instance, right? But there was no proof that he he actually believed what he's saying. Sir, was you alive. keep saying there's no proof instead of saying it doesn't meet the standard of proof. Mm -hmm. Don't say yeah, to but, me, but, there's, but there was no proof. Stop telling me there is but, but, no. It was proof. an assumption proof at that point. Is, excuse me, sir. You mean there is no evidence? You do not mean there is no proof. Proof is a determination that you have based on a standard. Okay, what you there's mean no is that there is no yeah. evidence. There's no evidence for that. Yeah. Use the fucking right word then, please. Okay, but what I'm saying, there is no evidence for, well, for instance, if you say someone's lying, but you don't know if they actually believe what they're saying was to be true, you can't actually say they were lying, you know, because at that point, you're just putting an assumption of something that happened. And I think that's where it really Sir, you know what really... You know what that is called? What's that? Circumstantial evidence. Circumstantial evidence is still evidence. But if it falls, it doesn't. It doesn't. It falls through Sir, the law, right? Circumstantial evidence is still evidence. Yeah, but if you're in court and they say your your evidence, you is can use circumstantial. circumstantial evidence in court depending on the rule. If I had T. Orlando right now, I would ask him: Under what scenario can you is circumstantial evidence admissible? I'm not a litigator, so I cannot tell you off the top of my head in which circumstances circumstantial evidence is admissible. You so are talking about circumstantial evidence, and yes, circumstantial evidence is still evidence. So what's the difference between assumption and circumstantial evidence, then? Circumstantial evidence are, is, is a conclusion drawn upon facts that are apparent to other people. You are taking evidence from the circumstance. But anyway, the fact that it says that it is circumstantial evidence tells you that it is a type of evidence. But yeah, but no, oh, for real, man. It's boxing hacker, please, bro. Please, man. You are not good at just just you don't understand it. Okay. Uh, no, I understand completely, but you I don't understand completely. What is okay, if you so understand my, so my, my thing is you can't even call it circumstantial because you you, you don't even know what circumstantial evidence is. You just gave the definition for it. So I could go I across did. there. Uh, bro, I mean, I'll, I'll look, look, boxing hacker, boxing hacker. Yeah. You are what you call hard headed. And you are opinionated, and you, yeah. you're opinionated, and you refuse to give an inch no matter how much it is very clear that you don't know what you're talking about. I don't think so that's I true. I think to, I, 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 feel like the argument, I, I still feel like it's not. I, am going to, I don't care what you feel. You're wasting my time. You're wasting my time. 
If somebody loses weight, it is evidence that they have not eaten. It's evidence. It can be used. Okay. It can be used to support a proposition. Evidence is a fact used to support a proposition. Yeah, but it's, art, it's not a fact. Listen though. to me, sir. That's what my it point is. The problem. fact. It it's is not, a fact. A it fact is fact. shut up, dude. You, you shut up, please. My Facts God, have no man. middles. You can't just say it's a fact. You're such an embarrassment to people. It's true. Man, are you are, are you calling call people for it? No, wrong fact, with you, man. What the fuck fact, is wrong with you? What's dude, your diagnosis, dude? I have no diagnosis. Like I, you, all you have to have a diagnosis. Listen, my if, diagnosis. A, let me say what my like, diagnosis is. is. My diagnosis is I can't stand dumb niggas. You are throwing around words, bro. You're just throwing them around, switching terms left and right. Now it's not a fact. Yes, it is a fact. fact. We facts have no it with the fact. You can look at facts have no exclusive middle. Like yes, they you can't do. have exclusive middle inside a fact. It's not a fact. About? A fact has no exclusive middle. It has Dude, no fact. Do fact. not have exceptions yeah. to the rule. Like that's what makes it a fact. You do know yes, that, right? That's why. Yes, I, that's why. Sir, I, be quiet, dude. A uh, a fact doesn't have an exit. You just said something. You just said <clears throat> a fact mm -hmm. doesn't have. Listen to me. What you just said. You said a fact doesn't have an exception to the rule. Correct. Okay, here's a problem. A fact is not a rule. A fact is a fact. A rule is a rule. A fact is not a rule. But fact well, a fact, hold excuse me, sir, in order for a fact to have an exception to a rule, only a rule can have an exception to a rule. But a fact is not a rule. A fact is a fact. Uh, this a is fact, a, excuse me. a fact can't have an exception. Listen to me, dude. You're talking to hear yourself talk. You're, here, you're talking to hear yourself talk. This is a cup. That's a fact. It's not a rule. A rule is that you cannot go over 65 miles an hour on a highway. That's a rule. So an exception to a rule is that you can do okay. that an ambulance can go over 65 miles an hour on a highway. That's the exception to the rule. Exactly. This, so, cup, this cup is not a rule. This cup is just a cup. Your argument was that somebody somebody lost. Me. This is a cup. There's no such thing as an exception to a, to a rule. A fact is a fact. It's just an objective truth. It's not a rule. I think you suffer from dumb and don't know it. Dumb and don't know it. You just are dumb and don't know it. You just say anything, man. You just say anything pops across your head you think is a good argument. Oh, uh, we can't we don't even know if it's a fact because facts don't have exceptions to the rule. See, this is what you call barbershop argument. This is barbershop argument. Facts don't have the exception to the rule. No, I, he's still there. Facts don't have an exception to the rule. And watch this guy defend that. Explain that facts, why facts don't have exceptions to the rule. But you said, okay, I'm just going back to what you just said. You said a woman lost weight. Therefore, that means she didn't eat. I didn't you say that. It, I didn't you said say somebody that. lost. You said. I didn't say that. I said it's evidence that she didn't. Yeah, and you said it's evidence that she I didn't say it was proof that she didn't. I said it was evidence that it didn't. I didn't say it proves that she didn't. I didn't say it meets the standard of proof. I just said that there's evidence that she did it. There's an It's a fact that indicates that she did it, that it happened. Yeah. Well, I'm saying that that's more of speculation at that point. It's not even evidence because she could have exercised. She could have ate a lot and just exercised. You know, she could have ate a little bit and her metabolism was just fast. There is no, what, what you call evidence is, is something you're trying to base off of fact, but there is no fact there. There's what no you, fact. What you did, what you did was There's clearly no speculation. It's, it's it not a fact. You no, know, sir. 
The conclusion may be speculation, but the fact that she, the, that she lo lo losing weight is a fact. Yeah, but her it's on the scale. Because it's on the scale. That's a fact. It's on the scale. I'm not assuming it. She weighed in. Our evidence is that she lost weight. That's a fact. It's not disputed. She lost weight. That's a fact that she lost weight. The reason that she didn't eat is speculation, not the fact that she lost weight. She lost weight was the fact. You, what do you do for a living? Yeah. So, well, so let's get back to you. Just say, you just say, yeah, like you didn't hear any of that shit. You just say, yeah. You just say, yeah, like that didn't mean anything. Can we can we finish this, this, this conversation? Dude, I'm trying to finish it, dog, but you just keep making shit up. Okay. So, see, you're able to lose my train of thought. What I'm saying here is that... You should get what, off your train of thought. So what I'm saying is that, yeah, so the fact that she lost weight, but the, the premise you laid didn't support the conclusion you came to because she didn't eat. Okay, what was Losing my premise? Weight is a fact. Excuse me, excuse I me, agree sir. With that. Let's stop because right there. Her not eating is run not a fact. Or Let's evidence. stop there before you run down the block. I want to make sure that I understood what you said so sure. that I can respond to it. You said that the fact, I'm going to make sure I understand this, that the fact that she lost weight the fact that she lost weight does not support the premise that she did not eat. Correct. Okay. The fact that she lost weight is not evidence to support the proposition that she didn't eat. Correct. Right. I call it pure speculation. Sir, that's not pure speculation. Because with pure speculation would be, I think she didn't eat. Why don't you think she didn't eat? I don't know. I just don't think she ate. Why? Because I don't know. That's, well, that's, that's your initial listen, argument. Listen, listen, listen sir. Sir, that is what you call pure speculation. If I say this woman lost 10 pounds last week, and I know that she weighed 100 pounds on Monday, and the next Monday she weighed 90 pounds. That's evidence that she did not eat. That is, I, now let, let me complete my sentence so you perfect. understand. What I'm saying is that is evidence that supports the proposition that she did not eat. It supports the proposition. Why do you think she didn't eat? Because she lost 10 pounds. Oh, that supports it. Does it prove it beyond any doubt? No. That fact alone does not prove beyond any doubt that she didn't eat. Because there's other reasons, other evidence that could come in. Your supported middle shit that I don't know where it came from, but that is that is what you call that is so that is contradictory evidence. Yeah, and I call it speculation. Listen, listen, listen. So the weight loss is evidence that supports the clue conclusion, but that evidence in and of itself did not get us beyond the standard of proof necessary, which is to you. Beyond any doubt. So if you say beyond any doubt, no, it will not meet that burden of proof. It wouldn't because there's other doubt. She could have used the bathroom a lot. She could have been constipated for the week before the weigh-in. She could have been constipated and she took and she had an enema and she cleared 10, 15 pounds of weight out of her, 15 pounds of weight out of her system. Exactly. It, yeah, so that's so, so listen you, to you, me. You chose one. Listen because to me. You chose one, you listen to me. One versus the other. Listen to me. 
Don't say okay and then act like I don't know what I'm talking about. No, I, I said, I said, listen I'm to me. Other people are here listening. So we're going to move on to the burden of proof, which is what you don't want to talk about. No, I'm still on the same thing. It's still. You're not on the same. Exactly. You're on the same thing. You're not on the second half of it. And you won't move to that for nothing. Because I can't accept what you're saying. Because you don't. You already accepted what I'm saying. You keep saying right. You keep saying right. I repeated what you said. You said yes, that's what you said. We're not even disagreeing. You're just repeating yourself. Yeah. Well, so what I'm trying to get at is because there's so many different options, you speculated on which one to go with, right? I didn't speculate. It's, it's, what it's, I you're... did. I didn't speculate. That's not speculation. It's a fact. It isn't a fact. It cannot be a it fact. It is a fact. It's... You lost weight. We agreed Losing it's a fact. Losing is what happened. You saying that this guy's a fucking idiot. You saying that she didn't I can't keep talking to you, her. brother. I can't keep talking to you. Go away. Okay? You're going to be out of my life in a second. It's okay. Uh, You're a waste of I bow, Wesley. Uh, thank you for the conversation anyway. It's, uh, not a, it's not a conversation. It's you just running your fucking lips and being disheartened. But you're talking more than I am, so how am I the one running my lips? Sir, did you say or did you not say that I was correct? In repeating what your point was. Yeah, yeah, you pretty, no. So you 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 made a statement, but you didn't go, you didn't reach to where I thought you were gonna reach. But what you were saying, I understand well, well, I said you're right. I understand what you were saying, but I still have a counter argument. I read so that's what I was saying. Argument. I'm I'm not arguing with you, I'm repeating what you're saying. But you're calling you, what, what you're calling evidence is that what I'm calling I speculation. Her, I'm gonna do it again. I am validating your what you are saying. My understanding, I'm validating my understanding of what you're saying. So you cannot tell me anymore that I don't understand it. I am telling you what you communicated to me. And I'm asking for your validation that that is what you meant. At the point that you agree, there's nothing else. I can move on. You are telling me that the fa in the example that a woman lost weight. Mm -hmm. She lost, she weighed on Monday, the first Monday, she weighed 100 pounds. On the second Monday, she weighed 90 pounds. Yeah. I am saying that the fact is, the fact is, she lost 10 pounds. Correct. Isn't that the fact? That is the fact. So, that's a fact. Yes. And what you're telling me is, that fact does not prove beyond any doubt that reason why she lost weight was that she didn't eat. Right. Correct? Correct. Because there's other reasons that she could have lost weight. And to, to add to that... Listen to me. Is okay. that correct? Correct so far. So that's We're correct. And there's different examples that I brought up. Different examples. It could be several reasons is what you're saying. You're saying that that does not prove it. The simple fact that she lost weight does not prove that she didn't eat. Because there are other reasons why she could have lost the weight other than her not eating. That's your point. I understand your point. Yeah. And by what so by what I'm saying is that we're we're on the same page, but no, we're evidence, not on the same page. What you're calling evidence I is what I call speculation. Her, I, mean, why I understand your point. I yeah. repeated your point to you. But you're also saying there's still evidence, and that's that's sir, what I'm trying to say. It's not evidence. Excuse me, sir. I understand your point. You said I understand your point. Okay. To complete my so point, is, you have to say, therefore, it's speculation. So let's do this game. Now that I understand your point, you try to understand my point. Because I understand yours. Because well, you no. said I understand yours. Do you mind finishing my point then? 
my, my, the end of my point was there's speculation. Already, I, I all no, you're ready, saying no, you, you I already did it. Okay, so to be clear, so let's just let reiterate. Me do my point. Okay, I'm take your point. Just to reiterate. Here's my point. It's the fact that she lost weight, but I'm saying it's clearly speculation that it's because she didn't eat. Not the so, substantial or anything. Again, it's speculation. Again, That's again, what I'm saying. Again. I understood what you said. Okay, fair. Go ahead. You are referring to the fact that you're saying that it does not support it, that that's not the reason, that I am speculating that that is the sole reason. Yes. And my speculation that that is the sole reason, the soul that that fact is the sole reason can be rebutted by other facts. They're not facts. At all, sir. The fact that he lost the, the fact that she lost weight no, is the a fact, fact that she didn't eat isn't a fact. Okay. We think she didn't eat is it, not a fact, it, sir. It is only a. It is that's my conclusion. The fact is that she lost weight. The okay. evidence that she didn't eat was the fact that she lost weight. Okay, so okay, we're okay. So the you're evidence, saying evidence, and I'm saying me, okay, the evidence that she the evidence to support my conclusion. You're confusing my conclusion with the evidence. I have a conclusion that I'm making. The conclusion is that she lost weight. That's not the evidence. That's my conclusion. That's the proposition I'm supporting is that she lost weight. I am not saying the fact that she lost weight is evidence. I'm, okay. I'm not saying the fact that she didn't eat is evidence. Okay. okay? Well, yeah. Listen to so me. She lost Just weight, listen. therefore she didn't eat. That's listen your argument. Me. Listen. Because I, I know what you said. I repeated it like five times. The evidence is that she lost weight. That's the evidence. The conclusion is that she didn't eat. That's not evidence. That's my conclusion. Okay? okay. The, evidence, the evidence supports the conclusion. You're saying my conclusion is speculation, not the evidence. Sure, yeah. Okay, so yeah. let's repeat that again. The evidence is that she lost weight. The conclusion is that she didn't eat. Okay. I am not saying that she didn't eat is evidence. Correct? Correct. There you go. So we don't have to keep repeating that because you repeated that, and said that multiple times. Okay. So now that we know that the conclusion is what the evidence supports again the conclusion which is that she didn't eat is supported by evidence and you can bring in other evidence that contradicts or gives another possibility to explain the fact that she lost weight right like she used the bathroom that is evidence she did she use the bathroom? Yes, that's she lost weight. That's evidence, but her using the bathroom is evidence too. So now the fact that she used the bathroom re helps to rebut my conclusion. So now we can move to what you have refused to talk about, which is what is the standard of proof. A reasonable doubt? If you say she used the bathroom, that's why she could have lost the weight because it's a fact that she used the bathroom and it's the fact that she lost weight. I want to draw the conclusion that she didn't eat. If somebody introduced the fact that she used the bathroom and that could, re that could result in 10 pounds of weight loss, guess what? I cannot prove my proposition beyond a reasonable doubt. Why? Because he introduced a reasonable doubt. Okay? That's a reasonable doubt right there. That's why the standard of proof is important. Standard of proof. What do you have to do to prove it? Like you're with your wife, and she says she cheated on you. You cheated on her. And you think you've talked to your wife and you're like, what do you mean I cheated on you? She said, you cheated on me. You say, well, prove it. Well, how do I prove it? I got to see you. I have to see you literally having sex with her. 
No, I don't. That's not what I need. What I need is these text messages that where you talk about it. The fact that there's receipts on your credit card billed for hotels and flowers and sex toys. No, I did not see you have sex with her. However, I have all this evidence to support my proposition that you cheated on me. If you go to a divorce attorney, a divorce, a divorce court, and she doesn't have a videotape on it, you're not going to get away. You're not going to get away with saying, oh, well, she didn't see me. I, she didn't see me do it, but she has the plane tickets. She oh. has the text messages. Oh. She has the, she has the, she has the, the flower receipts for the flowers on the credit card. She has an airplane ticket with your name on it and her name on it. You guys went to Bermuda and spent a week and flew back on the same plane. That's all evidence. Now, let's look at the standard boxing hacker. If the standard is, if the judge uses beyond any doubt, you're not going to have to pay a lot of money because there's a doubt. Any doubt? Well, she really just, we just agreed to go there and hang out with each other and had nothing to do with sex. Why? Because you don't have any, you don't have any videotape or my admission that we did it. So that's, you, that's not proof beyond any doubt. But, but it's proof beyond any reasonable doubt. And it's also proof beyond the preponderance of the evidence is what she needs it, which means it only has to be more or less true. Like, yeah, you know, there's a chance that you didn't sleep with that woman, but you took her to Bermuda for two weeks. You got text messages back and forth with her saying that you love each other and you can't wait to see each other again. You got flowers. You sent flowers to her, uh, 12 dozen roses to her on, 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 um, on, Valentine's Day seems like a lot of evidence to me. But what you're trying to claim, Boxing Hacker, is that's not evidence. Yeah, that's um, not evidence. Yeah, the, the weight loss is not evidence. It's speculation. Sir, no, 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 no. The weight loss is my conclusion. Yeah, which is based and on it speculation. Is not, it is not pure speculation. But it's speculation. Because there's a pure speculation is when you have no facts to support it. That's when you're speculating. Speculating is when there's no facts to support it. Okay, so like if, if I, I go say, to the club... No, there's another... You could say that there's another reasonable explanation. It's not the only explanation, but it's not pure speculation. So let's get back to the original point. It is not pure speculation. To think that a boxer that gained 25 pounds overnight used an IV to do so. Goodbye. I'm going to tell you something, man. Stubbornness is not, an, is not a substitute for intelligence. Stubbornness is not a substitute for intelligence, bro. I need for you guys to all understand this, bro. Stubbornness is not is not a, an accurate is not a good substitution for intelligence, unless you're dealing with somebody that is not intelligent. Can I have one more caller before I leave? What's up? Man, I'm so happy to see you here, Bumpy Thompson. Always a pleasure to see you, brother. No, he's not slow. He's just, he's just dishonest. I, I tend to pe think people that are just, they just want to win an argument. They just want to win an argument no matter what. Phoenix the Assassin, how can I help you, brother? Man, this foolish ass nigga right here, man. That boxing hacker. <clears throat> My goodness, bro. I ain't never seen nobody that damn slow ever. Ever. And for him to cut, like, boxing hacker, like, here's the thing. I, I got my degree in computer programming. 
And I know that with programming code, you got to be very specific. Like you do something as simple as leave a semi-colon off the end of a line of code. That's something that's going to mess the whole thing up. You know, you got to be specific. This guy right here, considering that, man, he just be all over the place. Not specific with one damn thing at all. The, but the, but the go ahead and rein it in. And, and I hope he listening so he understand this. Because I, I, I thought what he did when he tried to say that, you know, the, the whole point was just, you know, whether or not the IV was used. And the very specific situation he was talking about, it was about being used to rehydrate because you are dehydrated, not just using the IV in general, but to rehydrate. I mean, like, even even if you wanted to use an example from the past, like uh, Oscar De La Hoya and Manny Pacquiao, I remember a comment that uh, Freddie Roach had made about how they could see the IV marks in Oscar's arm, meaning that he had to rehydrate when he had come down to 147 to fight Manny. But even without that, one thing the boxing hacker did wrong apart from being stupid was he didn't provide another reasonable alternative that could have been used as uh, as a counter to saying that an IV was used. Because you can't eat no 25 pounds of food. That's 25 large pizzas. And then another thing, like, it wasn't even a full 24 hours for Devin to gain that 25 pounds because it got the weigh-in in the evening. And then the next morning was when they went ahead and did the second weigh-in, and he was 165 for that. It was like 12 to 14, maybe 16 hours at most that he put on 25 pounds. And to say it was just water, nah. Because when you flush all them electrolytes out of your system, that's when them people uh, who get water poisoning, like when they go into shock and have seizures and stuff from drinking too much water in a short amount of time, that's when that happens because it flushed all that out of their system, the salt and all that. So you can't say it was drinking water you can't say he was eating food and unless De Devin Haney had a body double step up in the ring for him how the hell else he gonna be 25 pounds more the next morning it don't make no damn sense and reasonable doubt means that it would be highly unreasonable for a person with common sense to go ahead and doubt that and I and sometimes I just say common sense is another way of saying mediocre because if you don't understand that shit you got to be dumb as fucking hell. Yeah, man, boxing hacker, please, man, please. Don't, don't, don't come back up here dumbing people up with your conversations no more. Well, I don't know what, what type of combat experience you're talking, you have, and whether it's video games or what, man, but, man, please, for, for, the, for the sake of everybody on this channel, please, man, go off with Frequent Fly wherever he went and, and you know, stick with him. Don't come back, man, please. And that's all I have, bro. All right, brother. I see you. Hey, I saw you uh, here for boxing. Here for boxing cannot possibly perform worse than that. All right, Phoenix. Thank you, brother. A hey, real quick crown. Hey, Phoenix, this says, hey, can you lead a horse? You can't lead. You can lead a horse to water, but you can't make him drink. You can lead boxing hacker to knowledge, but can't make him think, retain, or understand the knowledge. My God, man. That shit is so... You just want me to look... You just want me to be wrong so bad. Martin... I think I forgot to super chat. Hey, thank you, Keith Nolan. This is because I feel bad for you. They had to take the time to define the word evidence. It's, man, these guys are so dishonest, man. My guy, uh, Phoenix the Assassin, said we, ne we need no adult left behind because this dude is, cr man, God, dog, boss. Yeah, just admit it, bro. I saw you crown. Uh, if, if the slow... If the slow as Madagascar sloths were real people, it would be this dude right here. Really, he said he's on the same page. He ain't even in the same book. The crazy thing is that he's so obvious that he's not listening to a word. It's just so obvious you're not listening. He say, "Okay, yeah, 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 right." But here, here, like you're just gonna bowl through no matter what is said. <laughs> you just want me to be wrong, man. Hey, what's up, Crown? How can I help you? And here for boxing, here's your link. What's, what's up, man? What's going on? How you feeling today? Man, I'm doing well, man. You know, just trying to have this box doing this boxing talk thing, man, for for hours and hours and hours on end. You know, that's good. That's good. Um, young men that's here with me, because <laughs> yeah, I'm a young man myself, we got to learn to listen a little better. Man. I can't be right about every single thing, you got to learn. That's 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 that, 
you know, but that's besides the point. Um, um, uh, I lost my train of thought. Uh, I was I wanted to talk about the fight though. Um, take your time, take your time. I'm hey, not, let me bring up Big Dre. If you listen, for now, he threw me off. Like, what are you? I like it, it's not the comp the comprehension level was just like here. Uh, you can't comprehend if you don't listen. Yeah, like, um, hey, I wanted to talk about Ryan. Um, yeah, I, I think he, I think he, he, he's killed this fight. Uh, that's that's just my opinion. I feel like he killed the fight. I don't think, uh, I don't think it's gonna do good at all. Um, I'm praying for the fight to do better than what it is, but I just, I, I don't see how anybody's taking this fight serious at this point. And yeah, that that that's that's that that was really the point I was going at. All right, well I appreciate you, brother. Thank you, man. All right for now. All right, brother, get back. Peace. Big Dre, what's up? What's on your mind, Big Dre? What's going on, Anthony? Um, peace and blessings to you, sir. And first of all, let me apologize for bringing the subject. <laughs> In your chat today, what, what's um, that? With the weight thing, man, because BFT, oh. BFTB pissed me off last night. Um, I was listening to it. Oh, live. that is what we've been talking about. Yeah, that's where it started. Um, oh, yeah, yeah, hey, man, <laughs> what you doing? <laughs> I'm sorry, man. He pissed me off last night. Um, but he he first he said that um the tank came into the ring at 160 pounds uh against um leo santa cruz i'm like well i mean how did he come into the ring at 160 pounds against leo santa cruz when he came in and that that, that fight was at 130 pounds and then he came into the ring at 146 pounds against mario barrios and that fight was at 140 pounds. That don't make sense. It don't add up the math. Look, man. Well, let's let's clarify a couple things. Number one, there's a di- I don't know what he came into the ring as. So okay. if you have, see, you're gonna come well, in his same day way. Let me let me correct that. His same yeah, day. If you're talking about the the same, if you're talking about the, because that's all we can talk about is a same day weigh-in. So if he's saying he weighed in at 160 at 160 pounds against. Uh, if he weighed that he weighed in at 160 pounds the day after the fight with Leo Santa Cruz, that means he would have rehydrated 30 pounds. Yeah, I told I called bullshit. I was ringside. I guarantee you. I get I was ringside for that fight. Yeah. When I'm telling you I was ringside for, I'm telling you I was right up. I was ringside for that fight. He was so much smaller than Leo Santa Cruz, it wasn't even funny. Ain't no way that man weighed. There's no way that he weighed 160 pounds getting in that ring. I st- I watched him. He walked right by me. There's no way he weighed 160 pounds. And I'm telling you from somebody that saw him, saw him. I'm right there. Walk right by him. He's about this tall. He was very, very little. And when he was in the ring with Leo Santa Cruz, you could tell that Leo Santa Cruz looked like he outweighed. It, it, let me put it this way. From my eye, from an eyewitness testimony. If, De- if Gervonta Davis weighed 160 pounds in that ring. Leo Santa Cruz weighed, weighed, had, must have weighed 170. And there ain't no damn way in this world he was weighing 170 in that ring. I'm talking about in the ring. Ain't no chance. But there is a difference between what you weigh in when you're in the ring versus what you're weighing in at in the same day weigh-in and the day before weigh-in. But if, if, but, but if, I mean, but the idea that he was 30 pounds heavier. Like I said, I called bullshit on it last night. And then he. up the back. And then he, then he then he then he brought up the um, the Roly fight, and he posted a picture of uh, a pair of feet on the scale uh, from Roly's page at one hundred and eighty point four. He said that picture was posted the night of the fight. Um, I can't find the, the the picture on Roly's Instagram or his Twitter, um, but the picture he posted had Roly's uh, Twitter handle. Uh, across the top of the page somebody can find it just i mean just hey anybody can find the link to that can you put it in the chat 
But I don't mind. Look, dude, I don't want to. I don't mean I like BFTB, man. I don't want to go too much on all of that. I, I, stuff. Well, I, mean, off just, last night. I was going to click the link, but I was in the middle of cooking. So, um, you know, I couldn't. Yeah, no I, I didn't want to mess up my, my dinner <laughs> to argue with him. Oh. oh, OK. Yeah, man. But look, dude, I, I look, if you're asking, I first of all, I can promise you from my eyewitness testimony ringside. Ain't no way in the world Javante Davis is weighing 160 pounds in that ring with Leo Santa Cruz. Oh, yeah. Because he's too small. Matt, he, he and, just, I think and, he wait. was just, just trolling everybody last night because he was on a rant. And, and he just or, he, or he just got his – look, I can't speak on what he was doing. All I'm trying to tell you is that I that he wasn't a 160. There's And Roly Romero was not 100, 180 pounds. That's – that's 45 pounds, yeah. It's 40. Tell me, Actually, he put 45 pounds, pounds on his weigh 47 pounds from, from his official weigh-in weight. Weigh just wins the pick. When's the pick? Just somebody show me the picture. Somebody bring it up, and we can find whether or not when the date of it was. And it's not, I mean, maybe BFTB is just mistaken. It's very possible. People, sometimes you can be mistaken. Uh, I, it's hard to believe, though. I've heard that uh, argument on somebody else's channel as well. Uh, using that same picture, like I said, it's just a pair of feet on a scale at 180.4 pounds, and it's on Roly's page. I, I don't okay, know what, but all I right, man. Well, I couldn't. Find I will look at it. We'll pull it up. Somebody can pull it up. I got a little bit more time to be on here, but let me roll to the next dude because I don't want to be pulled into a conversation with BFTB and what he said because I didn't hear what he said, so I don't know what exactly what he said. I can tell you as you asking me the question, I was ringside for Javante Davis and Leo Santa Cruz, and Javante Davis is smaller than Leo Santa Cruz, and he's significantly smaller than Leo Santa Cruz. He was the smaller man in that ring. Leo Santa Cruz may be somebody that's blowing up tremendously high, but if anybody was weighing 160 pounds in that ring, it was Leo Santa Cruz and not Javante, because Leo Santa Cruz is a lot bigger than him. And I was ringside for that, I'm telling you. Gervonta, the, there was there was a significant size difference between Gervonta Davis and Leo Santa Cruz. And the idea that, that he walked in that ring at 160, the guy that walked by me was 160 pounds. That means he's weighing in that he was weighing more. Walking in that ring than walking in that ring than more than likely Leo Santa than um than than Jerron Ennis was weighing at the same day weigh in. Nah. Man, look, man, there's gonna there's a lot of reasons to try to justify what Devin does. And like saying that it's it's just not unusual, these other people are doing it. Man, I know how we know for sure. We know this for sure. Give me one second. I mean, hopefully I might have it. Let me see. Let's see if I still have it. I might have got rid of it. I think I got rid of it. I think I did get rid of it. I got rid of it, but I know for sure, for sure, that Devin Haney weighed in at 165 pounds against Regis Prograde the same day because we have the, the official scale. If somebody can show me the official scale of Javante Davis weighing in the next day at 160 pounds, let me see it. Because I know he weighed in at, 100, at what he weighed in against, against Ryan Garcia when he fought at 136. He weighed 144. He weighed in 144 the morning of the fight, which means in order to get to 160 pounds, he had to put on additional, he had to put on more weight after the same day weigh-in, after the same day weigh-in than he did in the day before weigh-in. That is highly, highly, highly unlikely. And to educate dumbass boxing hacker, that is, there's evidence to, to we can't prove that he didn't beyond any doubt. But you can't prove that he did beyond any doubt. All right, man. Let me move to the next dude. Thank you, Dre. Like I said, I just came to apologize, man. I'm Don't sorry. Don't apologize. For that that ain't all right. That ain't no biggie. We good. All right. We good. All right, bro. Hopefully, this is not crazy. Boxing World, how can I help you? Okay. Continue. And Devin, he just don't feel that Devin, um, you know, Devin has a dad. Like he has, a, he had a dad. So he what? Dude, what are you doing? Are you playing somebody's stuff or something? M3, B, how can I help you, brother? What's going on, man? Funny conversation. Um, I was just, I was just thinking as as to, as as I was listening to this conversation 
I'm remembering that when um it was first brought up by Bob Arum when he was saying that he saw that that Devin was like 25 pounds over his weigh in that when that first happened that people first was like he was lying Bob Arum wasn't telling the truth pretty much and I now, think that was Marisa Suleiman that did that Oh okay yeah yeah my bad my bad um but then cuz there was like you know, there's one YouTuber in particular that I could I can remember. He was saying that I'm not gonna say his name because you know I ain't gonna blast him out like that. Name, but I say my name all the time. I don't have any beef with anybody. Yeah, Yo. but um, but um, no, I'm not. It wasn't you. You know what I'm saying? Okay. But I, I don't. You know, I'm still trying. I still try to be respectful to folk. You know what I'm That's saying? Because I won't. But um, he was saying that Bob Aaron pretty much wasn't telling the truth. You know, and that how could you how could you weigh 25 pounds after you know, the way in pretty much. But then, you know, when this came came to light, he started to defend that he was 25 pounds overweight and that other boxers have done it before. You know, because I, you know, I know, I know I listen real quick. I listen real. I really do listen when people be talking. You know, part of that has to do with keeping your mouth shut, <laughs> you know. And so, when these reports come out, if you listen to people long enough, people contradict themselves. You know, if you're contradicting yourself, because the thing the thing about it is, you know, and I applaud people, you know, you gotta be pretty bold to say stuff and then when stuff come out and to just run it back and say something else like you never said the thing you said before, you know, it, it's it's just it's just interesting to me, but it makes me think that, you know. Or do respect, man. If you if you like, you know, if you're getting paid or you know, just because they're your friends, you know, you, you're backing them up. I mean, it is what it is, but it just I just find that interesting, man. I mean, I would, you know, integrity, I would I would try to be a person of integrity if I was on this YouTube thing, you know, but you know, you gotta I mean, to each his own, I guess it I guess I guess it is, man. But I just find that interesting. It's it's kinda like I just think it's kinda hard to be you know, a friend and a YouTuber of a boxer and to not be biased at the same time. We already we already deal with, you know, being, you know, subconsciously, you know, biased, period. And then to be able to take your bias and try to find a place and how to be balanced at the same time. Everybody can't do that. And it's, it's it becomes obvious as you listen to people, you can hear their biases in regards to their friendships that they have. You know, like you like you were talking about the other day, because I listened to you a lot, you know, when you were saying, I know you know, exactly who you are, brother, I've seen you commenting for years, man. MB3, oh, no, of course. Yes, because okay. there's MP4 Viz, there's MB Core Viz, there's an MP3 Biz. Absolutely. Yeah. Bro, I've seen you comment. You don't talk a lot, but mm -hmm. you do every once in a while. You put a little something in there every once in a while. I see you. Yeah, I know exactly who you are, brother. Yeah, yeah. I just I, I try. I listen more than I than I like I said, you know, because it's. You know, I'm trying to learn how to be a better listener, <laughs> as I believe a lot of us should. You know, um, yes, sir. But then the case of the last couple of people, say that again. Um, let me make a comment on this. this is my observation, okay? Because, mm -hmm. like I said, dude, I'm, I mean, you know, I've been on YouTube a long time. Most of the people that we're talking about at one point in time, I've met them or I've interacted with them. There's there are people that are wanting to win debates, and they mm -hmm. want to win the debate. So their job is to win the debate. See, if somebody wants to debate you and they're trying to win the debate and they challenge you and they say, I want to debate you, then see, I don't have a problem with that because mm -hmm. when you're in a debate, they, I know what it is. It's a competition to try to win. So if a fact, it, you know, you're if you're trying to debate with somebody and there's a fact that is hanging out there that may hurt you, you may not bring it up, right? Mm -hmm. Or if there's type of miscommunication or misunderstanding that may work with you a little bit you may you know I me mean? you may pour a little gas on it because i know that's what they're trying to accomplish they're mm -hmm. trying to get you in a debate so it is up to you it's up to you if you're going to challenge them into a debate to to know the relevant facts to be able to counteract their points and do those type of things because it's a bit of a game right mm -hmm. now that is different than somebody that is delivering to you news Mm -hmm. So if somebody is coming saying, I'm going to deliver you news, 
Then I'm thinking, okay, man, don't lie to me. Mm-hmm. Because you're, out, you're not out here trying to, I know somebody debating is trying to convince me of a point. Mm-hmm. And just the simple fact that you're convincing me of trying to convince me of a point, I know, okay, you're going to lean this way. You're going to lean that way. Right. Mm-hmm. But if somebody is trying to convince you that this is the truth and let me give you the truth, let me give you the unadulterated truth. Let me update you on what's going on. Let me, let me enlighten you as to what the, what's going on in the real world. Then you're like, hold on, man, you're misleading me. Mm-hmm. Because I know that, for example, if you're in, if it's a defense attorney, his job is to win. So he's not going to be he's not going to be trying to make arguments that are going to do anything but get his client off. Right. Mm-hmm. So that that's kind of where I am on that, man. I don't hold it personal or whatever. But, you know, if shit. But I think what time some people miss, though, is. Um, is that that is that has that it has its cost. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that, that's why I was thinking about why you were saying that. Yeah, it's not yeah. winning it all. It's not worth winning at any cost, because I can listen to just because. So my dad was really, my dad was somebody that showed me this or told me this in a different context. But I'm listening right to the debate, mm-hmm. right? and I'm thinking to myself, "Oh, I would say this. I would say this. I would say this. I would say this." I also said because I know some facts. I say that fact's not true. That's not fa- that's not true. That's not true. That's not true. You're misleading with that. You're misleading with that. Now you may think that because this person sitting next to you can't out doesn't is not sharp enough or able enough to come up with those things that all these other people don't hear it. Mm-hmm. So they may be thinking to myself, yeah, you know, I know full well that um, like for example, when you said to me that. Uh, what was the name you used? You said when t- when Bob Arum said that he gained that 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 Devin Haney blew up in weight, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. See, when you said it, I knew it was Mauricio Suleiman. Mm-hmm. Now, say if we were debating what Bob the de- subject matter of the debate was, what Bob Arum's position was, and you said that, I would be thinking, hold on, he's arguing about Bob Arum, but he's bringing up something Bob Arum didn't even say. Mm-hmm. Oh, I don't know if I can trust this guy because he's because I because I know he's giving me misinformation. What's the other misinformation? Mm-hmm. So it's just a really dangerous. It's a dangerous thing to. It's a dangerous thing to do for sport. You know what I mean? Like if it's not true that somebody like say somebody said Gervonta Davis weighed in the day he at Gervonta Davis had three fights at one fifty four. I mean, that person is that I'm talking to may not know that. Mm-hmm. And to me, it sounds like, oh, this debate is taking candy from a baby, right? Oh, I win. Mm-hmm. Say I bet him. He gives me my money because I won the debate, right? Mm-hmm. But then you don't understand you, that everybody just saw you take candy from a baby because mm-hmm. they know that's just not true. And there's a lot of people that will support your channels and support you in life doing that. But there's a lot of people that be like, look, man, I can't fuck with this dude. Because I know that shit's not true. Does that make... I'm sorry. I, I wanted to cut in and say that. I'm sorry. If I yeah, that, that's... To me, that's... It's not It's not worth that. That's that's a character flaw. <laughs> you know, if you ask me, because how do you how do you get yourself from out of that? You know what I'm saying? If you're just... If you're living your life like that, you know, because I, I just... I just think some people... You know, everybody got issues, but that's not one issue that I want to have. You know, saying when you're you're doing that, and then it becomes something that's second nature to you. You know, uh, yeah, I'd rather just keep my mouth shut. A wise I mean, man, I mean, a wise man knows knows when to keep his mouth shut and, and just listen. Like like the the Bible says, it's like you know, even a fool is thought wise when if he stays silent. Exactly. Mm-hmm. And, and if you do this YouTube debate thing is funny because. Man, shoot, one of the reasons I'm not losing to y'all is I'm not picking bad arguments. That's the number one bad way to lose. Yeah, you want to want to lose, have a bad argument. That's the number one way. And yeah, sometimes I, people people play with the people play like, look, man, I'm not pl- I'm not making any old argument. Mm-hmm. I'm yeah, not I, making any old argument. I, I chuckle when when you be saying, but sometimes you say like I can win an argument either way. <laughs> yeah, you can. <laughs> I can if I'm dead wrong. I'm telling you. Mm-hmm. When I let me tell you what I mean by that. Mm-hmm. 
Mm-hmm. When I say I can beat you in an argument and I'm dead wrong, mm-hmm. that's because I know every single solitary logical fallacy. I know I know how to use them and I know how to lie. Mm-hmm. And I know, and I know if I know more facts and I play games with you and I lead you all around the primrose path, and I, whenever you bring up a good point, I distract from it, I distract from it, and I'm dishonest, you're gonna have a very hard time getting back. So if I wanted to do that, I could do that to you. But here's the problem. You fuck around and run into a pro. Yeah, that's that's the the, the interesting thing. That you have you have many levels to your YouTube that I don't think people even re- realize that they're witnessing because you know um it doesn't just looking at it, you know, on the surface, you don't know what you're getting, you know, unless you're really paying attention. I mean, I that this I notice things in regards to your channel, but I know I don't notice everything. But I do see because sometimes you're just being you're just being funny with people, and you know people may not know that you know or when you're you're leading somebody one place. It's like it's like when a boxer like how how Javante Davis be setting traps. You know they think oh you know he's he can't he's not a he's not a boxer because he's all about power when he's also a boxer. So people are just looking at you thinking that looking at him then thinking he's just all about power. But now nah, that's not that's not the case. He got a he got a toolbox with more than what you know is in there. You, a just, lot see, more you, you just see him always getting knockouts. <laughs> yeah, I mean to uh, from my my point of view mm-hmm. is first of all I'm a grown ass man. Mm-hmm. I'm 54 years old. I have a lot of life experience. If you're 32, 33, 34 years old, you're a disadvantage just off life experience. Mm-hmm. But also, I know how to argue. Mm-hmm. I know how to, I know how barbershop barbershop arguments go. I know how, what people are trying to do. I, and but people think like so. But anyway, like take like I'm not gonna lie. I'm a boast. Boo! I whooped your ass, Bill Haney. Like, and it could have been a lot worse. Shout out to Bill Haney. Yeah, shout out, dog. But he had he raises his hand. He did like this. Can I get off? <laughs> I mean, that, it is it is what it is. You gonna you can only go with some so far with what you got because he's in a, he's in a disadvantage with me. Mm-hmm. He's a, the disadvantage is that dude. He's the same age, basically the same age as that I, that I am. We're mm-hmm. not very different from one another in that we both have dealt with slick talkers our entire life. I know it's I know what these basic ass arguments are, but I know what he's doing and I know what he's doing before he does it. If I know what you're going to do before you do it. And I'm a better at arguing than you are. You may be I, I have a I have a very serious suspicion. He's better with money than me. Like mm-hmm. he's better at learn. He's better at earning money than me. Mm-hmm. I promise you that he's got a hustle and, and focuses on money. He's learned to make a lot of money. So he's learned that he's a better boxing trainer than me. But you're not going to beat me when I'm good. You're not going to come up here and beat me at what I do. There's, I did this shit. This is a fucking secondary. This shit is a byproduct. I, I thought when I started a YouTube page, I was doing it to get away from this shit. Mm. You know what I mean? Like that was the thing that really educated, that, that really struck me. It was like these people really, these kids really think that they smart. You don't know what the fuck you doing. Like, mm-hmm. and how easy it is. Like, I'm telling you who the man is, bro. The man is Bob Arum. The man is Bob Arum. Bob Arum is for real, for real with it. For I, real. That, I would say that probably goes back to what you were talking about earlier when you said about experience. Yeah, it is. But my dad, look, man, if people talk about it like, like there's some difference, like people that are not really in, in business, Mm-hmm. You probably never really understand what I'm saying. When people say, man, I'm in the streets, right? What, mm-hmm. are they, what are they usually talking about? They're usually talking about they're doing some business in the streets, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. That they're, you know, they're that they're pimping or they're selling some drugs or they're they're gambling or they're doing something, right? Mm-hmm. They usually talk about that. But what they don't understand is that there's no difference between business in the streets and there is business in the boardroom. There's no difference. That's 50 cent. Yeah, the only difference is how you enforce it. That's it. Mm-hmm. The only difference between IBM, the, but there's the only difference is the is that one is legal, right? One is legal, one is illegal. And if you have a consequence to somebody messing you over, you can't go to court. Mm-hmm. You have to do something there. But other than that, it's the same thing. 
<laughs> negotiations is the same thing. And I, anyway, it is what it is, man. It Indeed. is what it is. But Indeed. I appreciate MP3 bit, biz. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. What does MP3 uh, biz mean, though, if you don't mind? Um, it was something that came up when I was working on, you know, getting my business off the own. Um, off and running and i had to implement that into i think it was some on, online thing that i was working on and so that just it was really it seemed catchy to me you know because my oh, first yeah. name because that, that's my first and last name and then biz at the end of it and then three because you know i'm believing god and just it represents the trinity yes well thank you brother i appreciate you thank you man yes sir yes sir all right all right, all right brother peace for now, you know you that you know now you know there's only one real street nigga who frequents this page. Street niggas. Like that shit's a compliment or something. The fuck are you talking about? Like that shit is like there's only one junior varsity. <laughs> like, I mean, you ain't junior varsity. You ain't junior varsity. How fuck is that a real street nigga being a compliment anyway? I have no clue how that's a compliment. None. You want to be on the street? <laughs> hey man, some people are not interested in the chat are not interest as interested in a channel like this because they are not up for the challenge of learning and improving how to use their intellectual, their intelligence to their advantage. Hey man, look, if you want to come get your ass whooped. In an argument, come come over here. I'm not seeking you out. It's not easy money. If you say something is not true, I'm going to say stop right there. He said, I've been trying to get out them streets half my life. I've never known that until I got to YouTube boxing that the streets are something you look at, that you are aspiring to do. And there's something wrong with you if you didn't start there. I'm telling you, it's just a way of calling somebody an Uncle Tom. You not real. Because they try to convince you. What are you talking about, chill? What are you talking about? I'm telling you the truth. At least that's how I see it. You know? Couple more callers, man, then I'll get out of here, man. These live streams be long, man. But y'all kicking with me all day, though. Y'all kicking me all day, all day. I got cousins that were in the street. And nobody acted like, and nobody looked up to them. Come on, man. Do you not, will you not play some silly stuff today, man? I mean, Lord, watch this shit. Hopefully he doesn't do it. Yes, same guy. No situation. He's a cop. Fanon the Khan. Yeah. Fanon the Khan. Gotcha. Gotcha. Uh, Martin, I want to know what you thought of the video, especially. Oh! Oh, I want my $500. I didn't leave. I, are, you, are you talking about the one with the punches? I'm about to, hey, man, go get your money. Go get your money. Go get your money. Send it, hey, send him an email and go send him, go get your money. Go get your money. That's what I think. Go get your money. Easy. Go get your money. That's what I think about it. Oh, let me read these, these cash apps, man. Come on, I challenge you to a debate. Anybody, give me a good one. Oh, man. Keith Nolan said, keep it running for a couple more callers. Well, serious callers anyway. Yeah, okay, cool. Mr. Boxing Fanatics, hold up, brother. I got I I to slow up. I got to slow down. Slow down. Bill can click the link here. Bill got time here. Click the link. Nah, I don't want to talk to Bill no more. I don't never want to talk to Bill again in my life, bro. I really don't. I'm just going to tell you, Bill, I don't do want to do it again. I will do it, but I don't want to do it again. I don't want to do it again. I can't believe you pubbed up Rollo. 
I can't believe you pubbed up Rollo. That shit was so beneath me. That was disrespectful. That was disrespectful. To compare me to Rollo Green. I think I am better than Rollo Green in every single solitary conceivable way. He may win a fist fight. Maybe. 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 Other than the, the other than the slight possibility, other than the possibility of physical confrontation with fists, because I ain't never seen him before in person. The man is nowhere. I mean, come on, man. Don't turn, don't turn me into a snob. Don't let me see you. It's like you forced me into showing my snob side. That man is not anywhere near me, no way, shape, nor form. He's like my childhood go wrong or something. I left the streets for boxing. Brother, I never got it. Somebody asked me to get in the streets and I dumped her ass. For now, we like watching you play in the mud. Oh, Lord. I can't believe you, Rollo. I mean, come on, man. Master Eden said, roll the tape. Come on, man. Come on, man. Come on, man. Hold on a second, man. I'm getting to it. Y'all make me feel like like I used to feel when I, right when I got out of law school and I had this really, I hang out, you know, DC, them sadiddy ass dudes in CD in, in DC, they'll have you thinking you, they think, oh, with the commentary, no worries. They'll have you thinking you're better than somebody up there in DC. Dude, like my heart, bro, like tank. Like I had that little nigga with me. At 14, 13, bro. I get demonetized every time I play this video. His mama, his mama and him had to drive to Cincinnati to come get that nigga away from me, bro. Like, this is my real little brother. Yeah. Like, like for real, bro. I, like. Did no. you ever see him spar any of them? Yeah. What happened? Who he sparred? Y'all know what happened, man. I, I don't he know. He sparred uh, Devin, right? And uh, You was there? Hell yeah, I was there. And uh, he sparred in about billion shirt. Javante? Yeah. He, he got right off the plane, was fucking around, and went to the gym and, and sparred Devin. And uh, I was supposed to fight. I was about to fight Sean Porter. We was at Floyd Gym, packed. I'm, I just had weighed in, right? And uh, we went to the gym. It's packed. It's hot. They get in there. Tank hit that nigga. Boom! He hit him. Boom! Then he hit him again, and he like went out. I jumped in the ring because at the time Devin is seventeen. I'm like, hell no, nah, this is a kid. Hell no, nah, it's gonna it's gonna fall it's gonna fall on us. If you know what I mean, if if he really get fucked up like that, so. So what happened was uh, uh, Bill jumped in the ring, his dad, Haney, mm -hmm, jumped in the ring. And then it was about to, be, it was about to go down. It was about billions versus them niggas. It was about to go down. But it calmed down. But I, it calmed down. And um, they got back to working. And they got back to working. Tank, Tank got, got a little bit more uh, uh, um, fatigue and... They have got off, but get off a little bit. But it wasn't, it wasn't, it wasn't like really like getting off. It was just like some good ass work. Mm -hmm. But Dev was getting, he was in more shape. He was in better shape. Tank probably had a couple shots before we got to, <laughs> you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. No, nah, niggas was hanging out in Vegas. Yeah. But um, ain't no excuse. I mean, it was good work, but 
But that shit would have been over with though. That shit would have been over with. And 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 um I love everything that Devin's doing. You know, me and me and Bill, we got a nice relationship. So they know I I, I ain't no fake ass well, nigga. B H said that he beat your I think your uncle or your dad for some money. Yeah, because you gotta understand what I'm saying. Once they kept going, Devin got you know, Devin got the best of them. Oh, okay. But in a real fight time with eight ounce gloves on, bye. Bye. That's with 16 ounces on headgear. With eight ounces on, no headgear, bro. Bye bye, bro. Bye. That shit would have been over. Bye. Hey, real quick. Hey, Mr. Warren said, what them ticket sales for nine? Oh, Lord. Hey, man, y'all are terrible, man. Y'all gonna make me look up the ticket sales. Hold on one second, man. I'm sorry it took me so long to get to those. Give me a second, man. Thank you. Hey, thank you, Rashad Warren. I'm sorry that it took me a while to get to these. I'm gonna get them real quick. Um, let me see what these ticket sales look like over on StubHub. Don't worry, man. A ain't gonna buy all. A A. Oh. Ooh. 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 Shit. Ooh. 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 Oh. Cool. Oh no. Oh shit. Oh what? Ooh wee. Ooh wee. Woo wee. That medical. Hey bro, that medical. Ooh wee. Ooh we three thousand seven hundred and fourteen new tickets avail added. Ooh we sixty five tickets sold in the last seven days. Lord have mercy, little mercy. Man, as that New York State said. That they want a medical, they New York City said they need a medical evaluation on Ryan Garcia. Dog, that fight is in jeopardy. And he says he wants to sue him for defamation for asking for a med. Oh, Lord. Somebody came and dumped a lot of tickets. Rodzilla Jones, brother. How can I help you, Rodzilla Jones? Stevie Wonder, what's up? Oh, gee. Oh, gee. You know you're wrong for that, bro. <laughs> You know you wrong. Why you gotta zoom in too, bro? You know you wrong for that, bro. Come on, hey man. dog, I bring my petty every day. Hey, nah, I hopped up here, bro, because man, I'm trying to remember how the whole like A B Bill and Devin situation even ended up like them going back and forth. Like, how did that start, bro? I cannot recall. Because I ain't I ain't gonna lie, like I really can't remember, bro. All I remember is just Motherfucker stone like the the broke word of him, bro. I ain't never heard him like give like him like I ain't heard that interview before, bro. Or well, at least that part that you just played right now with the clip. And it seemed like he was like giving he was big bigging them up, bro. He was showing them them some love. He didn't say nothing too crazy. So it's that's like yesterday, bro. Like I be on everybody panels, bro. I I, I feel like both sides be be on, on bullshit a lot of the time. Both sides do things that make me kind of side eye. In a way, because yeah, it right. really it affects the fight. You got the last one right. That's the only person that could beat me, Javante Davis. That's the only person. That Would you like to hear the beginning? Here's the beginning. Yeah, yeah. Let me hear. Yeah, that's, right. You got you got the last one right. That's the only person that could beat me, Javante Davis. That's the only person. Them not touch me at all. They all been in the ring with me. They all been in the ring with me. They all been in the ring, and I cracked both of them. I cracked both of them. I feel, I feel you, but, but check this right okay. there. But uh, okay, so you so you telling me you cracked both of them, right? But I, I was also told that Devin got the best of you in the last sparring yeah. session. He didn't get no best of me. He didn't get no best of me. He did not get no best of me. He jumped right off the okay. plane, sparring Devin. Come right on, off the plane. No best of me. He didn't get no best of me. Let me okay. Man, you can you can go on the internet. But, and you know I sparred him twice. I spot him twice. Right, right, right. And, 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 and Bill took him out the ring. 
And Bill admitted that. Yeah, Bill and that both said that. Almost knocked him out in Floyd Gym. Did they tell you that? Did they tell you I don't I know about in the gym? Did they tell you? I don't that? know, but I ain't, I ain't hear that. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. I ain't hear that. Okay, so you heard that was them as that's blue blood asking him about it. Mm -hmm. And just just so you know, listen to this right here. Listen to this part right here. Devin's doing, you know, me and me and Bill. This is million dollars worth of game, and listen to what million million dollars worth of game says about what started this. We got a nice relationship, so they know I I, I ain't no fake ass well, nigga. BH said that he beat your, I think your uncle or your dad for some money. Let's back that up. Okay. Yeah. All right. See. See. So basically, let me tell you how it started, Rosilla. Right. The it's how it started was clout chasing Gervonta Davis and trying to make an argument that Devin Haney beat up Gervonta Davis in sparring, and that's why he didn't want the fight because he had beaten him up in sparring. And they brought up there was tapes that were put out there a long time ago by Floyd Mayweather Sr. saying that Floyd, that Devin Haney got the best of Floyd Mayweather Jr. in sparring. I mean, of Gervonta Davis in sparring. And then that Ryan said in a press conference leading up to this fight that he heard that he had seen the tape. And he said, Look, Gervonta right here. Last one, right. That's the only person that could be. I, said, but I, I was also told he didn't get no best of me. Let me. Okay. Go. Man, you can you can go on the internet. But, and you know, I sparred him twice. I sparred him twice. Right, right, right. And, 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 and Bill took him out the ring. And Bill admitted that. And Bill and that both said that. Oh. Now watch this. Did you notice how Rodzilla he said Bill admitted that? Mm -hmm. So that means Bill had to be talking about it before this interview. Yeah. Okay, so if you look at the track record of Bill Haney and Devin Haney and uh conversations about sparring matches and what they did and releasing sparring tapes and all of that. That's what did it. And eventually, Gervonta Davis got sick of it and he said, man, let me tell you what happened. I cracked them both. That's what happened. That's what happened. Gervonta wasn't talking about this or bringing that sparring match up. I, this is just yeah, crazy. Said, uh, he beat you. I think and unfortunately for them, this got released because they asked for it to get released. Now, uh, for the fight, OG, what you think got to happen? Like, 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 in order for this fight to to to, to take place, like, what way you think it, it got to happen? At? It's going to have to happen in whatever division. It, well, let me tell you this way: if this is if this man, if Devin Haney doesn't, if this fight gets it, it, it depends heavily. On whether or not this fight takes place with that with your with Ryan Garcia or not. Because if this fight don't crack off with Javante Davis, then he's definitely gonna have to do whatever Devin or whatever Javante. Actually, let's just be real. He's got to do whatever Javante Davis says do to get that fight. Because Devin Haney's not on the same level as Javante is. Not when you're talking about his options and what he's doing in the boxing world. Just <laughs> That's what I think needs to happen. He needs to do whatever he needs to. Devin needs to do whatever he can do to get the fight if he really wants it. But I don't think Devin wants it, and I don't think Bill really wants it. I don't yeah, think. I, I don't think so. I, I like. I rock with both fighters. You know, I'm, I'm I'm pro Dev too, bro. Like I feel like, I feel like Dev got more of a chance than everybody give him. Bro. I actually got Dev edging if that fight go twelve rounds straight up. But the homie Zena said something a couple weeks ago, and, and it uh, it was kind of on the lines of like. Like he's getting too big, bro. He just gonna outsize himself by the time they actually try and make this fight. Oh, he already he outsized himself. He yeah. left the weight class. I mean, like he gonna like blow up even further. I feel he's not. He's not. Dog. That's what I'm saying. This shit is a big ass. Cloud. In my personal opinion, this is a big ass Javante Davis cloud chase. That's what I think it is. That's you, they keep their name consistently associated with Javante. And the and just like Errol and Terrence and before that and Floyd Mayweather and Junior Manny Gar Manny Pacquiao before that, I think Devin is selling has been trading on Javante Davis's name for years. And anytime Javante Davis's name was brought up, it's when are you going to fight Devin? When are you going to fight Devin? If Tia Fimo Lopez was fighting somebody, Devin Haney fans, or when are you going to fight Devin? When are you going to fight Devin? And Devin Haney made and Bill Haney made a long history of calling everybody in that division a duck. They also said Tiafimo Lopez was ducking, even though, and, and staying stuff about Tiafimo Lopez, I'm sorry, 
he was Lomachenko's mandatory. And when you send all of that dumb shit that they do in the box, that people have been doing in the boxing media and, and on YouTube and all of that stuff. Yeah, the, some of that shit I side eye, even like the Matias shit, bro. Like, especially that Matias shit. That Matias, see, that's what I'm telling you. Right there, that should tell you what's going on. That shit was so over the top and so unnecessary. To so frame. soon. Dude, like, he just framed him for a duck. Dude, come on, man. Ain't nobody in their mama believe that vi that Peter Khan asked the day after the fight with Re It was the day after the fight with Regis Progre that Peter Khan, who doesn't even represent Sabro Matias, asked for $4 million. Come on, man. Almost every accusation that they put out there, if you do any amount of research in it, it falls apart. Yeah, man, I feel like he, if anything, he should he should take that catch weight, bro. He should push for a catch weight, take whatever clauses he got to take, bro, just to make the fight happen. Cause, I mean, it ain't his his career, bro. The trajectory ain't gonna go in in, in the way that he want, bro. If he don't fight this man, bro, he might as well just just bow down. I like I used to argue with the homie Ko all the time, but yeah, I'm starting to feel like he should just kind of accept whatever turns he gets sent. And but he left the weight class. That's just for me, the number one, all of the he says, she said, this is that, all the stuff dies because he left the weight class. Yeah, but Ryan, Ryan was at 140 and they, they made a fight happen with a catch weight. He was at 136 pounds. They fought at 136 pounds. That negotiation started for, for a fight at 135 pounds. And Gervonta, and he asked Gervonta, hey, can we do this? fight that we've already talked about doing at kind of give you an extra pound he oh, said Here's i didn't know that okay yeah because they were already talking about fighting 135 and ryan asked for an extra pound people want to frame it in the way that it's like oh gervonta pulled gervonta didn't pull him down from 140 pounds gervonta davis gervonta davis and ryan garcia had been talking about fighting since since around the time that that ryan garcia beat luke campbell at 135 pounds when Luke, when Mike Tyson, when uh, Ryan Garcia was on Mike Tyson's hot boxing. Yeah, man, it is what it is, bro. We'll see what happens with it. I mean, I, it may be foul and I don't want, well, actually, I, you know, it is what it is on the real because they call me a liar. So it's only they ask now. It ain't my problem. Hey, but do me a favor, OG. You know, man, I've been rocking with you for a minute, dog. Yeah, uh, I got, you, you got to rinse. Nah, nah, wait, wait, wait. When you when you go on the, on the, on the page, bro, just don't zoom in, bro. Come on, dog. Don't, why you zooming all the way in? He trying to show how many tickets were sold in the last seven days. Come on, bro. This? You mean the sixty five <laughs> tickets sold in the last seven days, and more than that, three thousand seven hundred and fourteen new tickets have been added to StubHub, dude. They're literally look at this. This is, there are tickets available every single solitary, everywhere, bro, in, in this, in this stadium. Look at that shit. The color purple. It's a whole lot of solid purple there, dog. All right, man, get back, Rosilla. <laughs> Don't zoom in like that, dog. I'm sorry. I'm the king of petty, bro. I got to be petty. I can't, I can't. You guys called me a liar, so I got to prove it. Key A. Oh, I'm sorry. Phoenix the Assassin back at it said, if you want to play the video with the punches numbered, anyone can claim that $500 off and use it. I'll put it up there for fun. Hold on a second, man. Hold on a second. I'll do overtime for you, man. I'm going to do overtime for you today. I might take a break off my videos today, man. I might actually take a break off my videos today, even though I have them recorded already. So I can take a, ooh, somebody got a face tattoo. Ooh, Lord have mercy. What the fuck is wrong with y'all? That's a gotta be a joke. Oh, okay, that's a joke. Okay, all right, hold on one second. Phoenix, I thought you sent this to me.
I could have sworn. It's not. Oh, it's man. Oh, yeah, man. How come you are in general? You shouldn't be in general. Let's count the punches. All right, let me get the rest of these, man. Thank y'all for that support. I'm so slow. I'm so slow on these cash apps. My guy, Rashid, said, thank you, brother. What's them tickets? I got you. Them tickets looking, hey, dog. Them tickets looking mighty shady. Mighty shady. They looking mighty shady out there. Hey, hey. Boxing hacker be drenched in, in the lacquer of dumb. Man, freaking flyer just, come on. I mean, come on, man. Dude, just crazy. Big Lorenzo, brother, with the $25 holler, brother. Thank you so much, man. For that support, man. Thank you so much. I got to get off of here in five hours, though. But we will play it, though. Um, Man, thank you so much, Maria, earlier today with the $10 holler. Thank you, Maria. I'm so sorry for not having got to that much quicker. Quicker on the liquor. Akil in the building. Thank you, said the evidence the evidence is Boxing Hacker is an idiot. Oh, he's terrible, bro. He's terrible. And my guy, hey, thank you so much, Scott. Uh, pay Scott F. Thank you, brother, for the $5 holler, brother. Thank you for all the educated black and well-off black people supporting the channel and others and Puerto Ricans and everybody else. I got it. I got it. I'm about to play it for you. Now that Goat Fanon take talk here, we respect you, bro. You're great in your own way. You're at your job, bring you to smoke for real. Hey, man, seriously, man, I, 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 they hate me. I don't hate them, they hate me. They're like, dude, they're like the George Bush. These dudes are the, they're, these dudes are like the George Bush. These dudes are the George Bush. George Bush of boxing.
That's 26 unanswered punches. They get in there. <laughs> Tank hit that nigga. He hit him. Boom. <laughs> then he hit him again and he like went out. I jumped in the ring. Dog, that's 26 unanswered punches, man. Man, that is 26 unanswered punches. Anybody want to bet me 500? Hey, I'll take the bet. <laughs> I'll take the bed. <laughs> hey, hey, yeah, that's Phoenix the Assassin's video, bro. <laughs> why are people? Why are people arguing that only two landed? Oh Lord, bro, these boys, man, these boys, these boys. <laughs> Dog, these dudes, man, that's funny, man. And my hey, dog, that's just funny, man. That's funny. Oh, God. All right, man, but I'm out of here, man. We get five hours. Much love to everybody in the chat, everybody in the super chat. And I'm gone, brother. I'm gone. Deuces. Y'all have a wonderful day, and I'm out. Peace. Enjoy the fight tonight, man. Holla.